Hello, and welcome to Well, There's Your Problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who is talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I am Alice Goldor Kelly. I am the person who is speaking now. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Viva Liam. Yay, Liam. Thank you. Hi. Uh, well done. I don't, I don't know. I don't know any Spanish. Sorry. Uh, hi, I'm Liam Anderson, and my pronouns are he and him. And we have a guest. We have El, El Gesto. <laughs> well done. <laughs> oh, si, senor. <laughs> the racially sensitive drop here. Um, <laughs> Buenas tardes y bienvenidos a Bueno, Ahí Está Su Problema, un podcast con diapositivas. Mi nombre es Noah y uso el pronombre él en español y he, him en inglés. Ok, vaya. <laughs> I like the he, him in, in English, but in a sort of accent. You know, I approved of that. Precisely. I will be doing that many times in this podcast accidentally. <laughs> ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? Yes. <laughs> Great question. Who can say? The level of sort of cultural sensitivity that we are going to demonstrate <laughs> over, the sort of, over the next five to six hours. Uh, all I can say is, you have an excuse because I am Puerto Rican, so like it's I'm technically allowed to, you know. Oh yeah, uh, there we say, go. I'm there technically we go. allowed to say it. Fantastic. I'm okay. allowed to say Buenos Dias. <laughs> I think I think they allow most people to say the phrase Buenos Dias. El Yankee imperialista no quiere decir buenos días. Hola, ¿cómo estás? No, Jesus, man. Jesucristo. We... We're off to a great start. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be a great podcast. Yes. I took why some Spanish here? in high school. Did you? I thought you... No, okay. Why am I here? Yeah. Um, well, here? if you... If you look here? at this photo, um, do you look at this photo? Yeah, I see. I, see, I, see, I, can, I can see the photo with all of the lack of freedom happening. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There's no freedom here. Look None whatsoever. Oh, it's, you know, it's just so much of it. <laughs> There's no consumer choice. I mean, There's, um, you know... This is not maybe one of the worst things I've ever seen morally. I mean, I do this for, for work all the time. I'm constantly seeing, like, NTSB photos of, like, kids who have been thrown from 30,000 feet, or, like, people who have, like, died in, like, horrible situations. Uh, Eye for dolphin, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. People who are just, like, reduced to, like, back bacon. Um, but you show me this. You come to my workplace, and you show me one brand of each consumer item. The most wow. well, actually, affrontive, anti-capitalist, uh, anti-liberal thing you could show me. I do want to. I do want to actually, uh, you know, correct that because there's actually multiple brands of the same consumer item, but they're all government owned. Um, we are here to talk about the Cuban embargo um, yes. and why yep. you cannot have decent rum in the United States unless you buy Don Cu. They don't pay me to say that. It's just good. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. This is why you can't like get Goslings. the good like cigars. Goslings. It's why, oh, this is you, why you can't get the good cigars. You can't get the good cigars. You can't Nazis. get the good rum. Uh, and uh, and it also causes famine. Um, so oh, that's yes. nice. Cool. That's we'll we'll get into that. An uplifting, yeah. an uplifting five or six hours of cultural sensitivity. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is gonna be my version of oh, you know when Liam gets like really upset about something. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> it when, when Liam gets like really like like uh, like um. Uh, sort of like moral crusade moment. That's going to be me on this entire episode. Yeah, uh, because please. of how incredibly Lock angry yourself I am out. about all this. Speaking of famine, we have to do oh. the goddamn news. Well, in five minutes of intro, <laughs> it was really dicey there whether I would have the right drops queued up. I mostly <laughs> just focused on the Rambo <laughs> Five uh, Buenos Dias and the, uh, the si, clear senor. and present danger, si senor. Ah. Uh. So the International Court of Justice has said to Israel, hey, cut that out. Yeah, they've said, so do what hey, you want. cut I'm, it out I'm... In, in a kind of limited way. Uh, so right. South Africa brought uh, a series of very easily proven charges of genocide and war crimes. Um, in uh, the, IC, the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, which is the UN's highest court, it's not the same as the ICC, the International Criminal Court, although they're both in The Hague. Um, and what the ICJ has done is they have uh, announced a series of interim measures. Not everything that South Africa asked for 
what the South Africans wanted was the ICJ to order Israel to withdraw their troops and cease military operations, which they were, you know, all of this is unenforceable. Israel's never going to do any of it, but they wanted them yeah. to be told to stop. What they've been told instead is to stop committing genocide, um, which, you know, is an insulting kind of slap on the wrist thing, but that's international law for you. It, you can tell that this has some effect on Israel's sort of like prestige and standing and stuff based on the fact that every Israeli government spokesperson on Twitter is the angriest they've ever been, and they're going to try yes. and destroy the UN Relief and Works Agency in retribution. Um, oh yeah, they just came out with a bunch of bullshit like the day afterwards and everyone pulled funding. Yeah, but not everyone, just a bunch of, well, in the US, UK, I, I mean, I listen. I, Israel already fucking kills enough UNRWA staff and destroys enough of their facilities. Nothing new. Um, yeah, so, so what changes? Yeah, it's so, like you know, everyone's Hamas, so yeah, you know, everyone's well, a target. The, the ICJ is Hamas. The Hague is Hamas. The Netherlands is Hamas. I, the the UN is definitely Hamas. I, the DSA or Hamas. Hamas is also ISIS. You got to remember that's that. True. So that's true. So by the transitive yeah, yeah, yeah. property, the UN is ISIS, which ISIS are doing properly. UN well is themselves. ISIS. Um, um, <laughs> does ISIS so, have internal caucuses? Do you think? Yeah, I'm an I. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> you have to bleep yeah, that think... whole sentence. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, so um, just cut it, actually. But yeah. all of my guys got door door to door canvassing for ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what We're this joining is... ISIS to push it to the left. <laughs> what, what, We're doing entryism <laughs> from within. Yeah. Yeah. What What this is doing is uh, this is setting <laughs> off an investigation. The ICJ is now going to investigate whether or not Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. They will report back on that in two to three years minimum. Yeah. So it's it's going to take them two to three years of. I don't know how you spend that time. Like I know what fisting your own ass. Yeah, because I know what war crimes investigators are, and I know that like those investigations can take a long time when you don't have a sheaf full of fucking TikToks of the people doing the war crimes saying it's like, oh, the we, corpses, we are right. doing the war crimes, uh, right. and we dare anyone to investigate us about it because there's nothing you can do. It's literally like a Captain Planet villain being like, mm. no one Aha. will ever. Yeah, exactly. Aha. Um, no one's going to stop us doing this genocide that we're really happy to be doing. You're um, in a big factory marked genocide factory. You should probably as, as not a have of, that factory. As a lib, obviously, um, you know, mm -hmm. confirmed liberal that I am. I, I, oh, we also get Bellingcat dollars. I don't know if you saw that's, that tweet. Man, oh, yeah, been, that's true. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. It's been fucking weird that, that Bellingcat has stopped talking about any of this, by the way. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> well, it's, it's not weird, right? But it's it's notable. Um, what I was going to say is that this is good that this has happened, even though it's meaningless, not only because it isn't, annoys the Israelis and lends an air of much justified and needed legitimacy, to all kind of resistance and protest against the genocide, right? But also because if you ha want to have some kind of system of international law left, debatable, but if you want to, this was the bare minimum, right? If if Last the ICJ best sort of deal, yeah. yeah, exactly. If the ICJ had just been like, "No, you're fine, go right ahead," then it would have killed the whole like prospect of anything even pretending to be international humanitarian sure. or stone dead, right? Oh, well, that's that's cheery. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, this is the the cheery podcast. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, things that are nice, things that are good, rum, probably. Yeah, which has no, you know, there's there's not going to no be cruelty anything... associated with my consumer goods. That's right, right. And there's not yes. going to be anything depressing in this episode. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in other news, ooh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. This election is so fucking useless and depressing. Yeah. Just make me president. Yeah. I, I, I can't take office for whatever three more years, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. But so, President Biden, right? Uh, guy that we love, friend of the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. We have to be very ableist to him by noticing the fact that now it seems that he don't talk good. Um, he, he was not talking good at a visit to a brewery um, earlier this week. He's, we should he's, he's point been, out that mm. this is. We should point out that this is not us just ragging on him for for slipping up, but this is like a pattern of 
noticeable mental decline and we deserve better as a people yeah. than two than a rapist and Joe Biden. <laughs> two uh, rapists. <laughs> two rapists. Two rapists, really. Can, this yeah. is the most insane thing about this, is that when multiple women accused Joe Biden of sexual assault, one oh, of the Jesus people Christ, yeah. who said that she believed those women, because believing women was in vogue for those two weeks, was Kamala Harris. His <laughs> vice oh. president <laughs> yep. set, is on the record Agreeing that she believes that you he's a are rapist. a part of all that is around you. <laughs> it's true. Someone, someone at the DNC headquarters, right after that, was like, "Okay, we got to shut down all the Me Too stuff." Yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. stopped talking about that switch too. Switch back to off. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So twisting the Me Too dial back and forth and looking yeah. back at the audience. The thing is, right? If if Joe Biden is facilitating a genocide, as he is in, in Gaza, about to help facilitate uh, sort of another one on the US's southern border, as he is. Uh, and well, we'll get there. And if he's, you know, a, a sort of like accused rapist and uh, assaulter of women, which he is, then it makes me want to not be as fair to him when he says something wrong and it's funny. Um, yes. And it's, it, uh, as well, the kind of, the ableism thing here is that it's it's interesting because Biden's part of his whole deal, right, is that he grew up with a stutter. He crushed that speech impediment by sheer force of will, like Teddy Roosevelt, in order to become uh, a politician in the first place, right? Um, and you know, occasionally he still fumbles stuff. That's fine. Like I'm we not do it, right? Sure. Um, but this is not that. We're not all facilitating genocide. Well, it's it, it's it's two things, yeah. right? First of all, it's the fact that this appears to me, to my untutored eye, to be something worse than the guy fumbles some of his lines sometimes. He's getting stranger and worse in a way that to me seems distinct from that. But also, I think if this guy has, out of hubris, made himself the sole bulwark between the US and another term of Donald Trump, and maybe no elections ever again, we all get killed, then... I don't think you can meaningfully be ableist to him, and I don't respect him saying, or his supporters saying, that it is ableist to notice things about him. Um, right. Did Reagan ever get this bad? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he did. But okay. I also I do want to push back on the idea that this is necessarily mental decline, because mm. I live in Los Angeles, and sometimes when you do like a lot of Botox and facelifting, it becomes very difficult to move your mouth muscles in an appropriate <laughs> He he genuinely should and, not have had the last facelift. Like right, no. and the he, thing is that you hmm. don't mess with them if you don't want. And I agree with that. Don't don't, <laughs> don't mess with the women of America unless you want the benefit. Is what he's supposed to have said that time. Which what um, what, what does he what think the means. benefit is? Well, actually, I think we know what he thinks the benefit is, considering what he say. said earlier. But a valuable lesson. Don't mess with the women in America unless you want to get the benefit. Mm. So what he mm. what he meant to say was um that they're investing in infrastructure. This is his big pitch, right? Is to go to the fucking Minnesota and Wisconsin for some fucking reason and be like, I'm spending money on infrastructure. I built you this new bridge in Demsville Blue wow. State. Um and and then go. Jump monkeys, right? Yeah, yeah. Please, please vote for me in in two states that I'm absolutely going to win anyway. But the point, oh, Wisconsin is dicey, actually. So mm, that makes well, sense. The two points, the point he was making, right, was I've invested in the Great Lakes uh, to make them cleaner, and that water from the Great Lakes is used to make the beer here um, at Earth Rider Brewery. Thanks, Great <laughs> Lakes. For Earth Rider beer, what he said was in brew beer here, brew beer is used to break the brew beer here. We're finding ooh Earth Rider. Thanks for the Great Lakes, and I'm sorry, but that's funny. You can't that tell me funny. that that isn't funny. The beer brewed here, it is used to make the brew beer. It is to find ooh Earth Rider. Thanks for the Great Lakes. We, what a great country we have. Um, I won't be voting for this guy, so um, I don't care. Yeah. I live in I California, so stop you. harassing me. You know? Stop harassing me. <laughs> um, and I'm, uh, you know, thank God I've just been to Cuba so that I can, uh, you know, flee. And, uh, exactly. Get <laughs> I'm a He's political making... prisoner. Or just political the arrogance, of... the absolute arrogance to make yourself the guy, the sole guy, right. who, who is like, 
and he says this. This is part of his marketing. Is I'm the only one who has beaten Trump in an election. I'm the only one who can beat him in an election. By the way, bits are falling off of me, and also I have just destroyed the entire uh, like caucus of uh, like youth voters. Don't need them. Uh, that and all the Muslim voters too. Mm -hmm. Seems white. Yeah. On the bright side, either of these two very old men could just kick the bucket at any moment, and that President, would be really fun. President Kamala, we know she knows her yeah. Marxism. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a long con. <laughs> a long game, but yeah. she's, she's her, her and Starmer in it together to create the sort of 16th Step international. away yeah. from the lathe, please. Kamala Harris doing the inside-outside strategy. <laughs> Speaking of reasons to flee the United States, in other news... I just cut you off with the beeps there. I'm so good at this. <laughs> Um, there's weird, there's border stuff happening. And all of it is bad. Yeah, they're making this movie called Civil War, written and directed by Alex Garland. Um, <laughs> uh, the, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. A um, A24's Chud vs. Woke is happening in real life slightly sooner yeah. than it should have been. Um, it's a marketing campaign. Yeah, probably. now that the strikes are over, you can promote your movies again, I get it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so what's actually happening is that, uh, Texas wants to brutalize migrants even more than anyone else by dumping like razor wire obstacles. Upon which, like, absolutely grotesque. To, to give you an you idea of the kind right. of desperation involved, it doesn't stop people. They just get hung up on the razor wire. Um, right. Yeah. The so, are, yeah. Yeah. So the feds have like want them to dismantle some of these razor wire obstacles it's in like a state park or whatever. Um, and the attorney general and governor of Texas are uh, running the constitutional law playbook of the Confederacy to be like, yes. the federal law doesn't apply to us, we can do whatever we want. Um, the, the, the sort of discredited idea that like the, the federal government is a compact, a voluntary compact of the states. We fought a war um, over this. Yeah, You literally did. It's very decisively and, decided. Yeah, and now, now you have a bunch of, uh, of other governors sort of performing support and offering to send their national guards and stuff. And Biden is is doing as Biden loves to do, and not being shit. decisive, and instead, yeah. oh, he's being decisive. Yeah, he's being decisive to make it just worse. In a, in a fuck yeah, way. yeah, yeah. It's it's to do the like compromise border bill thing. Yeah, which is probably one of the most racist things I've seen. It's from a grotesque. Sitting yeah. It's easily like yeah, it's yeah. worse. It's like it's as bad as like anything Trump did. Like no I mean, question. it's yeah, and if if. Trump were to be doing it, liberals would be like, how dare? And now instead, like, because it's Biden doing it, because it's blue dude, you have to be like, oh, well, I, you have to vote for him because the other guy is going to do something that's exactly the same. It's just going to do well, this. Yeah. It's going to be a different color party. It's, it's an easy solution to kids in cages is to put the adults in there with them. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I don't think that this is likely to escalate to um, A24 civil war. However, I I will say two things about this, two caveats, right? One is that you put things into these kinds of configurations and they have a way of escalating unexpectedly sometimes. Um, and the other thing is, and this is for President Biden, because I know he's a fan and listening, um, it doesn't matter whether you want to have Civil War II if the other guy really wants to have Civil War II. And right now, a bunch of them are pretending they want to have civil war too, and it's a pretty short leap with a lot of very radicalized people, and they are playing with fire. Um, oh yeah, it's it's a moment of some danger, I would say. All I'm going to say is that if there is, in fact, civil war, um, Presidente Andrés Manuel López Obrador, mi país California, sueña ser libre de la tiranía estadounidense, por favor, envíanos fusiles I, y aviones I de combate. I don't want the Mexican military to liberate anything because the Mexican <laughs> Navy still has it out for all of us, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, personally so happy to be liberated by the Mexican military and uh, remind them that uh, as a uh, former member of the steering committee of the Democratic Socialists of America, Los Angeles, <laughs> I can be useful <laughs> in implementing <laughs> a Marxist Leninist program yeah. in Southern California. President Xi, please send Chengdu J24 <laughs> Joint Strike Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ooh, we graduated to the J24, have we? Yeah, need those. I don't know what's I don't know what generation mean. shit. Um, yeah, I mean they're cool planes. They've got canard wings. What are you gonna do? Mm. I mean there is there know, is a part of jets. me there is a part of me that just sort of like gets the desire 
to just fucking uh, massively overreact. I think that's in many ways the safest thing to do. Like, I think, were I Biden in this situation, and my brain worked, um, you know, I, I would sort of like, immediately just massively overreact to this and stamp down now. You know, you should, this is the kind of shit that should get you arrested as a governor. Right. Um, yeah, and this and, is the sort of thing where you, for treason, yes. you yeah. go into the secret Abraham Lincoln archives and pull the big lever that says oh, restart reconstruction, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. genuinely. Yeah. I mean, so sort of day one you should be you should be federalizing these states national guards. Um right. but which yeah. you have the power to do. We re do. as recently as like the 50s we did that. It's it, completely completely possible, but um we can't do anything that would make anything better in any way so it has to be worse yeah, we, we have to like continue stepping towards this like i guess perceived inevitability of the big woke versus chud showdown um and my my concern we're with just this, gonna keep caving well my concern with this as with everything else is that you kind of these things aren't predictable and you may find yourself at a kind of flashpoint where things trip over into woke versus chud before anyone thinks but what can you do besides um I really, really hope that Joe Biden like soon, like immediately. Thank God that the entire global economy is not based off of American currency reserves or anything like that, <laughs> which we'll talk about. <laughs> but so it's um, fine. Woke controls all the ports. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Actually, <laughs> um, you know, as Sean as, as with of... last time, all you have to do is like count the miles of railroad track. Um, yeah. ca count the population. It's a count closer run thing this time. Track. But like, it, it, if it actually comes down to it, I feel pretty confident in saying that, despite whatever kind of democratic subversion happens, my money is big on woke in woke yeah, versus I think, Chad. I think, I think also, woke Chairman wins it. G, yeah, Chairman G will be supplying woke. Um, uh, yeah, because it's his creation. So <laughs> we'll be fine. Yeah, that and uh, that and. Um, you know, apparently uh, Putin is uh, funding woke now because they're all oh, calling okay. for ceasefire. I've heard this. So who the fuck From is Nancy funding Pelosi. Chud? Nobody, you know? No one's funding Chud, Chud yeah. Chud is actually a grassroots My pillow guy. <laughs> <laughs> My pillow guy is fucking broke. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm excited to um, get flung into the air by a landmine somewhere in Arizona as part of like the the 35th Brigada Internacional Gavin Newsom. Yeah, so. genuinely. I mean, like, I'd fucking I'd die for Gavin Newsom. Like, I'm too stupid to learn Ukrainian, and I was too scared to go be Peshmerga, but like, I'll, I'll absolutely join Woke's Foreign Legion and get killed in like, a bitch in Arkansas. Yeah, Sorry, the Woke Foreign Legion is a really good bit. It's like, going... Going around and like saying your pronouns and your war crimes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are, well, it's like the like the French Foreign Legion, except not only do you have to choose a new name, you also have to choose neo pronouns. <laughs> 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 And you have to when you're when you're like when you're doing like French Foreign Legion style war crimes, you have to acknowledge the you have to do land, land acknowledgement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. boy! Right. Well, that's the grim future of the woke versus chud war mm. um that was the goddamn news well, speaking of woke um you've heard of this <laughs> you've heard it's of the, this it's, it's uh, the democratic socialists of america uh, oh wow you, you heard of this yeah the, the, heard the sort of, of this. more and more woke easters of of, of yeah. the world um, vanguard so of the woke mm. i uh, the 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 um most successful uh, Marxist-Leninist formation in the United States. Um, I, I kid, of course. Um, so what you're looking at is you're looking at two pictures. Um, you're looking at pictures of a delegation that was undertaken by the Democratic Socialists of America uh, at last year in October. On the left, you can see a photo of us with, uh, some of us, with a bunch of medical supplies that cool. we brought look, to Cuba. You look very happy, you know? Yeah, yeah. I do look... Uh, can uh, Justin, can you circle me um, on the... Yeah. This is you, right? Yeah, in the in the floral. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. Well, there we go. Are. Um. Yeah. Uh. They let twinks into the DSA now, so that's nice. Mm. Um. So those are 500 pounds of medical supplies in a variety of bags, which is great. On the right, you can see me right after we delivered Listed those medical all. supplies. Um. And got um, basically got a tour of the hospital. Um, you seem what we're gonna... less happy. 
Yeah, um, everyone, I, in fact, in that photo seems like alarmed and depressed. Well, yeah. it's a hospital, mm. you know. To the I'm left not happy is to be at a hospital, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. So to the left is uh, before, and the right is after. Um, and I think uh, the photographer, uh, good friend Lorna, who is in the green on the left, um, she captured the exact moment where we were told a fact that's going to come up later. Um, and I will tell you what that is. But what we're going to talk about is the reason that my expression changed from one to the second photo. Hmm. Um, next slide, please. All right. So the first thing we have to ask, uh, Justin, do you want to do that? First, we must ask, what is Cuba? Yes, correct. Yes. Hmm. Um, is it this thing? It's not yes. that thing. It is that thing. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, my dad is going to eat this shit up. Uh, uh, instituting that's... socialism in this thing. Yes, please. Uh, that's, Justin, that's, your dad that's, is that's... so cool. <laughs> I'm Liam, bud. Oh, sorry. I meant, uh, Jesus Christ. Um, I have half of a mojito, and suddenly I'm mixing up the names of those. Uh, oh, Liam, your dad is so cool. Justin, your dad's also probably cool. I don't no, know. No, no. Okay. <laughs> <never mind>. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, uh, no verdicts on my dad's coolness, apparently. Yeah. I'm just here, yeah. you know? I, Didn't you do, did your dad is... do some mountaineering shit or something? My guy, yeah, my dad My dad does, like, fucking ultra marathons and skiing and shit. It's wild. I didn't get, like, fucking any of those, like, heritable traits, it seems. I'm sitting here, uh, I'm sitting here working, eating Haribo, the, like, vegan kind, or vegetarian. Whoa. Back to dad talk. Anyway. Uh -huh. For those of you, for those of you on audio who didn't get the visual joke, this is Kaba, not Cuba. <laughs> That's well, right. Well yeah. done. Um, okay. So we're gonna go to the next slide then, and we will talk about what is Cuba. Um, well, so it's a Cuba, very big it... island in the Caribbean Sea, but that's not important yeah. right now. That's right. So write that shit down. Um, <laughs> I think that actually is important right oh, now. Fuck. That's what we're on a podcast for. Shit. Way to go, yeah. Alice. Mm. Yeah, um, it is the largest island in the Caribbean uh, by a big margin. Uh, it is part of the sort of Antillean island chains. Uh, there's two plate systems that collided to form it. Look at it. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, nice shot. Uh, it, very pleasing. Yeah, it's, it's very like, it's, it's like if you made Chile's borders aesthetic um, in a lot of ways uh, and then rotated 90 degrees. Um, so the it's part of you know the the general Caribbean region along with uh, you know Jamaica Hispaniola which contains Haiti and Santo Domingo um, the occupied colony of Puerto Rico um, hmm. and it thus is active geologically there are fault systems uh, but it also has a good deal of mineral wealth Cuba has the third largest cobalt reserves in the world um, oh no <laughs> uh, yeah we'll, we'll get there um, and it Come also on. has some oil uh, we'll huh. get there. Um, uh, it is in the path of hurricanes, as many of these islands are, um, and so it gets like you know tropical rains and monsoons and all that, and it is going to be very heavily affected by climate change, which they're aware of. Uh, it has about eleven million people living on it, um, and it's a lovely place. Um, so, what was on, what 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 did what did Cuba start? How out did as? it get this way? Is what yeah. we're getting. How on. did it get this way? Yeah. Um, yes. So. How did it get to? How did it fall to the depths of one brand of consumer item? That's right. Yes. Um, so <laughs> to, to answer this question, we must first go back to the times of zero consumer item. <laughs> oh no, these guys! These everything was bespoke, so it was like all different brands. Oh, bespoke, in Finnish, Robert, yeah. Coke, a little item. bit of lime. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, you can see at least three brands there. You have Tainos Occidentales, you have Tainos Clásicos, and you have Tainos Orientales. Um, mm -hmm. So you have West Tainos like Diet Taino. Uh, now, I mean, literally, now, it's now all General Mills brands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's literally West Tainos, Classic Tainos, and then <laughs> Eastern <laughs> Tainos. Um, so Cuba was largely um, inhabited in uh, pre-Columbian times by Tainos. Um, they had large agrarian civilizations based around root crops uh, like cassava. Um, and fishing, um, they're very prolific fishers. Um, they had like four classes in their society. There were caciques, who are like the chieftains, um, a noble class called nitainos, a uh, priestly class called boiques. Um, uh, they had a sort of like matrilineal succession, um, very high development, uh, ball games. What you see in the lower left is. Yeah, baseball, totally unchanged, yeah. modern rules. <laughs> yes. Correct. Um, that's exactly right. Just um, like a just like a pre-Columbian pitch clock. I mean, kind of, yeah. Archaeological. 
archaeological record uh, d- is not clear on uh, whether they had designated hitters. So. <laughs> yeah, you have this beautiful village and just has a perfect baseball diamond. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, um, we were a little worried about the steroid use, but that's okay. Yeah, I, it's a but, little known fact, but Fenway was actually moved brick by brick from Cuba to Boston. <laughs> the, um, the 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 Taino name for uh, Puerto Rico, Borinquen, actually translates to seventh inning stretch. Um, so <laughs> that's the only baseball I know. Um, so yeah, the lower left are a series of sort of round uh, round houses um, called boios, which is like the the construction of their uh, of their villages. Um, so what happened to these people? Well, uh, <laughs> genocide. Like Italian like Americans. It. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So uh. one of the most horrible things that um, uh, one, one of the most horrible things that can happen to your pre-Columbian civilization happened, uh, which uh, is Columbus. Uh, Columbus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's it's got I assume an art museum. Um, yeah. It's it's, yeah, exactly. it's got it's one of it's ranked the like fifth most walkable city in the University. United States. Things of this nature. Got a got a one very nice Art Deco skyscraper. Um, <laughs> I presume no, this is no a... kind of rapid transit whatsoever. Mm, yeah, uh, largest I... <laughs> city in the United States without Amtrak. I think really seriously. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's no Amtrak train to Columbus. Oh, that's despite bizarre. the fact that you know Columbus to uh, or Cleveland to Columbus to Cincinnati is the most obvious He's route out there. For it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I've never been to I've never been to Columbus as a proud Chicagoan. Um, so <laughs> I can only assume that that's actually what Columbus looks like. But if I use Cincinnati, then uh, fuck you, Ohio. Um, no, that that'll uh, <laughs> be for uh, that'll be for when we do a, a, a Roman Empire episode. Mm. Oh yeah, 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 that's true. Um, <laughs> all right, so it, if you can, it should advance it if you hit the yeah, yeah, Columbus. Um, yeah, there oh. we go. So. Your your pre Columbian yeah <laughs> your pre Columbian civilization becomes post Columbian. Um, Columbus actually did uh, land on uh, in Cuba, and basically immediately the Spanish began murdering the shit out of people. Um, the first Spanish settlement was founded in Baracoa, so which is in like the eastern part of the island, um, in fifteen eleven, and then by like. The next year, the Spanish were engaged in fighting an indigenous rebellion. Yeah, I mean, the stuff by... that, like, Columbus writes about the shit that he did yeah. to these people <laughs> is... Well, also, like, mm. yeah, Bartol- Bartolomé de las Casas, if I remember correctly, like, goes through Cuba and is just like, this is horrible, this is nightmarish. Um, so there's a rebellion led by this cacique Hathway, who is burned alive with uh, two other chiefs when the Spanish um, uh, finished putting down that rebellion. And then Havana is founded in 1514, La Habana. Um, this guy starts you... a long tradition of where even the ruling class in the back home is like, oh, gee, this is kind of fucked up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it is it along with Puerto Rico are basically like the first fronts of Spanish expansion into the Americas. Um, Puerto Rico, actually, in terms of the native population of Puerto Rico, there were just fewer of them. So they were wiped out within 50 years. Thing in Cuba it took longer, but that's basically, you know, we're talking about mass genocide. Um, yeah. And then a second genocide uh, hits the island of Cuba. Um, yeah, this, this, because... one exp- this one genocide we had isn't exploitative enough. It's not commercially yes. viable. No, we've got to get gruesome. We worked all those people to death. Um, yeah. So what is, so um, on the right is Charles V, by the way. Um, so... That's I, I believe. Oh, so that's, that Habsburg jaw, baby. Yeah, I think I that's young say. Charles V, if I remember correctly. But I may have used. Yeah, a when he looked Habsburg. twinky. Yeah. <laughs> he looks. Ugh. He looks like those. Uh, what is the two French brothers who published all those popular science books and oh, then geez. had too much plastic surgery and died of COVID, <laughs> I believe. Wow. Yeah. Also, like this what is life. supposed to be flattering. That's supposed to be a flattering <laughs> portrait. Um. So the Habsburgs. Um. Uh. So uh, the Spanish Empire largely underdevelops the economy of Cuba um, because it is an extractive colonial economy based around uh, based around sugar and um, and uh, sort of agricultural production. But at the time, I mean, you know, like tobacco, coffee and all that, but like yeah, mainly a sugar. Bit of like silver and gold later on, but not here, you know? Yeah. Right. So, and of course the Spanish empire at various times was like, oh, you're not allowed to have slaves imported. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. just like stop, Bro. stop it, guys, oh, guys. We I sent we like... sent one Franciscan out here to be like, you should stop doing this. The old ICJ approach, yes. Basically, yeah. yeah. And you know, this is based around <laughs> we we believe in a kind of like aspirational sense of like Franciscan values. Mm. It's actually um, ableist to critique uh, Charles V and the Habsburg that's, dynasty. That, that's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ooh, so, I'll try the gracias. Los lagos grandes. You know, es por la isla de Cuba. Um, so uh, the Spanish are, as as I'm sure you, the listener, know, are able to extract insane amounts of wealth from the Americas, both from like the silver mines in Potosí, where they worked like millions of people to death, but also from the agricultural production of their territories. And Cuba is underdeveloped in comparison to other Caribbean colonies, like the colony of Santa Bang, about which a little bit later. But, yeah. um, you know, it's still able to extract a lot of sugar. What you're seeing on the left is you're seeing like an early sort of sugar milling or sugar crushing machine where those little things in the middle turn. Yeah. Got little sugar, gears is, and they... sugar is a fucking horrible crop to harvest. Oh yeah, way. very, uh, very, very bad. Um, especially sucks. in Santo Ming, um, you know, they created maybe one of the worst human meat grinders in history to run that colony. Oh yeah, um, I guess we'll talk about that later. Uh, we will. Um, so, <laughs> Wait, you're telling me that of... my consumer goods have some brutality attached to it? Just a little. Not my consumer goods. goods. A little mm. sprinkling no, of brutality. <laughs> This process is mechanized now. <laughs> yeah, and we'll get into I, I, I was assuming the comic <laughs> persona of a like 18th century Spaniard. Oh, I see. I see. I would say it's mechanized now, but in many cases, it's not necessarily better. Um, so, um, so yeah. So basically, like the the sugar cane is fed into those little grinder wheels, um, and you know the it's pulped from there. But we're going to go to the next slide to sort of get um, digress a little bit into how do you make sugar? How does sugar end up from the cane fields of wherever the sugar came from to my mojito that I'm currently mm. uh, Well, you, you can ignore all yeah. of this and simply harvest it via the humble beet. A super <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is an option. It grows in lots of different climates. Um, but I, That's I why actually, sugar is so cheap right now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it was invented by the Prussians, the concept of making beet sugar, but um, so once again, the Germans are to blame for something... Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, horrible that happens, but yeah. So Again, just basic... inventing our sat stuff, you know. Some of it takes, some of it doesn't. You know? I'm gonna be real. Like sugar Man... from sugar cane tastes way better. But many languages in today's podcast. Yeah, yeah. precisely. Yeah. <laughs> um. So this is a, a a graphic from the Sugar Association. So thank you, Sugar Association. Um. Mm -mm, sugar. But uh, the mm -hmm. sugar cane is harvested uh, on the. Right, you can see a sugarcane field up top, and then big, below, big sort of like tree that you have to like hack through the machete. Yeah, and these are both uh, in Cuba. And then below, you can see um, uh, I didn't take these, but uh, below you can see uh, some gentlemen uh, hacking at those with machetes. Um, so you take it, you crush it, you soak it, and you squeeze it um, because you're trying to separate the juice from the actual plant material. And you throw the plant material away and use it for other things. You boil the juice until it thickens and crystallizes. You spin it in a centrifuge to remove the liquid, um, and then you transport it to a refinery, um, and it gets like run through a number of filters to make it like as white as people want, um, and it gets crystallized, dried, and packaged, and then it gets shipped off. Um, let's go to the mm. next slide. Delicious. Oh, yeah. I'm sure no exploitation happens at any point. Right. Don't worry about that. So that the thing is, at the time that Cuba is settled this is a much less like this is a much weirder process so basically like yeah. you have to pour the sugar into these cone-shaped molds um the uh, that phallic object on the left um mm -hmm. up top is um a sort of cone-shaped uh a sugar loaf um and uh that is uh that's what you used to like get sugar from there were like little pincers that you'd like, chip little bits off of uh below that is a uh, um uh, that is uh, un unprocessed sugar um, in a sort of uh, in in a cone. Uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, that's uh, uh, Mexican unprocessed sugar. Um, on in the middle and on the right, you can see the operation of a of a sugar processing facility. So on the bottom, you can see the open kettle where they would boil it, um, and then the warehouse where you would stock the cones. Uh, on the right, you can see like the 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 sort of 
thing that you put the the cone i don't know what to call that uh the snow where you basically put the um the sugar into these molds um so nowadays we have a slightly more industrially um industrially sound method yeah. of doing you, it you don't yeah. just have like a 30 pound cone of sugar Some in your dude. kitchen yeah. and a fucking saw torture yeah. device to like cut bits off of it with yeah Pretty and that much. uh you know fucking uh it kills like 30 people to produce mm -hmm. uh, yeah, now it only kills maybe half mm. yeah, oh yeah less it than half like one yeah I mean, these these <laughs> sugar mills mangle the people that work on them, and you know that the people who own the SCN thus don't care because they're slaves. Um, so you go to the next slide. Um, there is now an industrial process on the right. You can see a <laughs> real <fucking> Tropico. <laughs> Oh, no, God. it's from Anno eighteen hundred because Tropico is a dog shit um, game series. It, uh, it, it's <laughs> it's it's aesthetically pleasing sometimes, but also mm -hmm. functionally very annoying. Yes, I like it. <laughs> yeah, it too. also. It's fine. I mean, I I think the number one was probably like where my sweet spot for it, and then everything after that has been like, eh, okay. Mm. I did like when they added sort of the progress of time. That was fun. Yeah, like the World War One one. But you can see like the big kettle actually. Uh, ironically, uh, this is a completely this is from an eighteen hundred, so it's not a real building. But you can see the big kettle where they're boiling the sugar. Um, and then on the left, you can see the the process. Those are the rollers. Uh, it, like it goes in, it gets shredded. Those are the rollers. Um, the bagasse, which is the um, like the plant material gets separated uh, and, you know, tag yourself. I'm a mixed juice tank. <laughs> I was going um, with clear <laughs> juice. I'm, I'm bulk storage. <laughs> 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 so uh, next slide, please. Oh, one thing that I didn't want to mention, all of that requires power to mm, function. Yeah. So that's keep that in mind. Power um, and just so many slaves. Well, not necessarily. Speaking, uh, mm. well, <laughs> once it's industrialized, uh, yeah, slavery we're, we're gets less have, economical. Yeah, we're about to have a big sort of like industrial dispute happen. Um, yeah, speaking that. of power and slaves, the guy on the right uh, is Toussaint Louverture, um, which, yes. yeah, um, uh, absolute badass of history who led a slave revolt on the island of Saint Domingue, uh, which led to the creation of the modern state of Haiti. Hmm. Um, and I mean, cut uh, out Dessaline here either, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dessaline don't, didn't, don't behead worry about all, that guy. didn't behead all of those white people for no reason, right? I'm gonna. I shout, don't have that much space on the slide. I'm gonna shout the guy <laughs> out, right? He did white genocide. He made it real, like. Okay, but 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 he did also kind of betray the revolution. Listen, That's I right. mean, you you take the good with the bad, right? Sometimes yeah. you do some white no. genocide. Sometimes you betray the revolution. Yeah, betraying the revolution is bad. It's it's it's, yeah. it's, it's a historical it's tragedy. It's impossible to say. Yeah. It's impossible to say if it's bad or good. Um, I think it's uh, great, actually. To be clear, uh, Haitian Revolution, unalloyed good. Um, yeah, of course. The the, 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 yeah. the cause of humanity is advanced by it, you know, and right. it's been yeah, yeah, been betrayed by like fucking everyone in the world French. since. You know? I, I, they, yeah. I yeah, because they they've been making uh they've been making them pay for it ever since. Mm. Um, you know, but uh, the Haiti is really where like the the sugar plantation system reaches its natural conclusion, right? Because there's some significance to the idea of banning the international slave trade on a sugar producing island like this, um, because when you don't, you wind up with a situation like Haiti, where rather than taking even the most basic care of slaves, um, they would simply work people to death and then import more people. Um, and the whole slave population turned over every two years or so. And there were millions and millions of people dying every year. It was crazy. It was absurd what was going on down there. Um, <laughs> and that's a very good lesson to learn. Um, but various countries around Latin America will not learn that lesson. Not learn that, like, right. No, yeah. absolutely yeah. not. 70 years from then. Um, so in, in what will become a sort of recurring historical pattern, the sugar producers of San Domingue, who are almost entirely white, um, will, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, some sort of uh, Creole in there, but um, will flee to Cuba. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not just to Cuba, but the Haitian Revolution is a great way of making New Orleans more diverse. Right, no, a lot of a lot of New Orleans Creoles were uh, Jean de Couleur Libre in Haiti, um, who who fled the Haitian Revolution because they were, uh, you know, fa found that they were on the wrong side of the white genocide. Um, 
Pretty much. And, and so supposedly, like, uh, supposedly Steven Gerrard absconded with a bunch of stolen wealth from Toussaint Louverture himself and then brought it up to Philly and founded Gerard College, notable whites only <laughs> school up here. Um, hey, so what awful. are we getting? What are we getting Franklin 13, Roz? Uh, it's yeah, Roz, 12, when are we getting that's Franklin the 13? subject of. Um, yeah, where are we getting Franklin 12, yeah. Roz? Oh, God. <laughs> but are we getting Franklin N, where N is the one that is next? Um, uh, so they take a lot of the like capital, like industrial capital, um, both financially and also some in some cases the actual machines, to Cuba. And so suddenly Cuba becomes extremely productive um, in terms of sugar. And mm. also and Haiti of... becomes extremely unproductive and has remained like economically uh, handicapped ever stated. since. Yeah. Yes, yeah, um, you're just sort of undercapitalized, so you can't buy the machinery required to mechanize sugar production. But also, you're not going to return to a horrible slave plantation system because you know you did just fight a war to end that. Well, thank God, the problem of being under mechanized to be able to produce things is never going to come up <laughs> again. again. This just, just oh, fully, God. fully like hundreds of years long punishment for daring to insist that the rights of the Enlightenment apply to black people. Is all of yeah, that. pretty much, pretty much. Um, Essentially, and, uh, as far as international law considers it, they're still being punished for property crimes. Yeah. Well, thank God yeah. that's not going to again recur in the rest of yeah. this. Um, yeah. In the rest of this, um, the property again, being themselves, right. and the enforcers of that are the United States of America, who multiple times occupied Haiti in order to either install somebody that we liked or depose somebody we didn't. Hmm. So. Um, uh, again, not something that will uh, crop up in the rest of the presentation. Don't look at the, the slides that come after this. Um, <laughs> so um, so Cuba starts booming um, uh, as uh, Haiti is plundered. Um, and the Spanish also contribute to this by allowing Cuba to... The, there was a sort of mercantilist system in which uh, you as a colony are allowed to trade with your colonial overlord only, right? And smugglers go in between, so there's like a black market, but whatever, who cares? So then... Uh, Cuba is able to trade fleer freely starting in 1818, uh, which very much benefits the Cuban planter class. So they've been they they advocate for it. They get it. Yeah, they're um, making money hand over fist. There's there's agitation, independentist agitation uh, movements led by uh, sort of Creole elites in the west side of the island, um, and of course, sort of like the the general uh, enslaved black proletariat keeps rising up. Um, <clears throat> but Spain uh, tamps down nationalism for about 50 years. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to very I'm going to have to gloss over a lot of stuff because otherwise we'd be here for like four hours. Um, because <laughs> like us at all. Cuba has it's three enough. independence wars. <laughs> um, Listen, sometimes have, it takes a while for these things to take. You know, they have the ten sure. years war, uh, which is kicked off by the guy in the top right who was a slave owner, freeing all of his slaves um, and proclaiming Cuban independence. So he was the first president of Cuba in arms. That guy is Carlos Manuel de Céspedes. Um, and then there's a like. The the first revolutionary war creates a couple of uh, revolutionary uh, heroes as a result of it and creates the Cuban independentist movement. Um, we'll go over them at the end. Um, and there's a second independence war, which results in the abolition of slavery in 1886. Oof. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's yep. a sliding second scale. longest mm -hmm. time to abolish slavery, beaten only Brazil. by Brazil. No Brazil, no yeah, Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, us, us Malvinas, so Brasileiros. Talk, uh, well talk about a, a fucked up country. A lot more people there deserve to be in the lulags. I can tell you that much. Also, if, if, if you are Brazilian and you want to come on the podcast for the episode <laughs> Brazil, please. Please, <laughs> I, I will also, mispronounce way, every single thing in Portuguese. Uh, uh, abolished by the monarchy. <laughs> the yeah, Pedro the Second, I think. <laughs> it was his daughter. His daughter, um, Isabella, um, uh, did the 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 gold, the lay aurea, if I remember correctly. Um, it was under his administration, but she was regent at the time. Um, but and then the Pope gave them a golden rose, which is like an Oscar, but for Catholicism. Yeah, I love so. the golden rose thing. Uh, <laughs> so. And then there's the third independence war, which is what segues into the Spanish-American War. But over the course of this time, you get actually, uh, you know, this very strong Cuban independentist movement uh, with strong ties in the rest of Latin America and especially in the United States. And the guy in the middle, the bottom middle is Jose Martí, who is like 
the George Washington of Cuba in a lot of ways. He's a poet, a lawyer, a revolutionary. He's the Incredible father of the country. Mustache. And today, yeah, the, mustache. the day that we record this, January 28th, is his birthday. Oh. oh. Which is why it was funny that it worked out that we recorded it today. Um, so uh, he was tortured by the Spanish for advocating for Cuban independence. Uh, he was the leader of the Partido Revolucionario Cubano, which also helped agitate for independence in Puerto Rico. So thank you for that. Uh, we're still not free. Do, do, do? Get, getting a really, really visions of a really messy Victoria to game. Uh, in I played yeah. that Victoria three game um, yeah. and um, it was good. Um, but so he, he is like traveling around the United States uh, trying to raise money to do the revolution. He is, um, he is, uh, he actually dies in battle um, in 1895. Um, the second guy next to him on the right is Antonio Maceo, um, who is the second in command of the Cuban Revolutionary Forces called Mambises. Uh, a Mambi is a, a guerrilla um, that is fighting the Spanish in the, in the highlands. Um, and so he helps popularize the machete as the weapon of the Cuban Revolution. He is also a Freemason and like an actual, like real believer in the Enlightenment. In the Enlightenment. Shit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. incredible political strategist and military planner he also dies in 18 <laughs> he dies in beautiful, 1896 beautiful segue <laughs> to be like didn't help much though did it yeah i mean he's <laughs> uh, he's he's killed by the spanish uh in battle um he also has a town named after him in kentucky uh which i found out while researching this episode it's called maceo mm. kentucky um these are and then finally there's maximo gomez who is kind of like the sherman of the uh of this whole saga he is the generalissimo of the army he is the highest in command um he basically started this sabotage campaign he blows up passenger trains he torches sugar plantations uh including american-owned ones cool. um he finances an unsuccessful revolt in puerto rico this guy survives um due to the power of his mustache and beard combo <laughs> Uh, he dies in 1905 on his estate, but basically like, you know, there's, I wanted to go over these folks because they're very important to sort of the history of Cuba and this long nationalistic struggle to build a independent Cuba that is free from Spanish control. Hmm. Um, and if we go to the next slide, so even after slavery ends and this is all going on, the, the, um, the economy is still like largely based around agricultural export and sugar extraction. Yeah, I, I, and, I, I, I half yeah. read the slides and I got to this phrase, even after slavery ends, the economy is based, which... Mm. <laughs> oh. It's actually very cringe. Um, wow. Wow. <laughs> um, like, if, if Historians you... Historians debate about this. Mm. <laughs> if you look at sort of like the American South and the antebellum South uh, following Reconstruction and how a lot of the you know, a lot of black Americans were sort of um, sharecroppers following the uh, demise of slavery. Um, that is kind of what happens here. Um, Chinese contract workers are brought in to Cuba and also are treated familiar, very terribly. Just to be like, hey, yeah. you know, yep. waves and waves of we need cheap labor. We can exploit. Where can we find them and treat a little them very than similar for it? Yeah. Can we? Can we figure out a way to pay these guys negative wages? Yeah, um, <laughs> pretty right. much. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, you can see the. I, I think those are the. Um, th this is a sugar mill. You can see the former slave huts on the left, um, and then like the rest of the industrial facilities. Actually, Cuba is one of the first countries to get the railroad um, in 1837 because it is used to transport goods for export. Um, one of but, the classic but, uses of a railroad. You know? Thankfully, yes. um, uh, if we go to the next slide, um, oh, nineteenth uh, uh, century nine eleven oh. happens. I, I, I forgot about this. I, I, I forgot about this. Oh, yeah. I you understand. Aren't supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah. the main the pictures, I'll provide the war. Um, the <laughs> the, the Spanish-American War. One of the most confected uh, uh, wars in American military history, which is saying something. Um, it, uh, and the, yeah, the USS Maine explodes. Um, oh, now I remember. Yeah, now <laughs> well done. The, the, it's the main attraction. <laughs> God's sake! The powder <laughs> magazine of the USS Maine blows up in her in the port of Havana, um, probably on account of how. It's the uh, 19th century. Everyone is drunk off their ass. The, you know, everyone smokes. The powder magazine is full of loose gunpowder. Um, it's surprising it didn't explode earlier. Yeah, exactly. And this is the kind of thing that, like, 
your your Victoria three playthrough has a lot of diplomatic crises like this, which would otherwise right. be resolved sort of not very interestingly. Like maybe the Spanish have to pay a fine or something. Um, but like, there's been revolutionaries who are like, "Hey, U.S., why don't you annex us?" And also a bunch of slave owners prior to the mm -hmm. to the um, to the Civil War who were like, "What if we annex Cuba so we have an extra slave state?" So yeah, people have been the, trying the, to get yeah, Cuba. Yeah, there's this, this idea right? of the, yeah, the Golden Circle, as you say, the, the Golden idea, Circle. Like, yeah, you have this new sort of like arc of slavery that goes all the way around the Caribbean and sort of like the the northern part of South America. Um, but and yeah, down with the Confederacy Union forever. That's right. Yes. Although, although a weirdly Grant sort of thought about like different sort of non-slave ways of implementing that as well. Yeah, well, he was like, an alcoholic, so doing, doing sort of that? like a greater American co-prosperity sphere. Anyway, my point will is, will they, won't they, about Cuba for a long time? Yeah, and William yeah. Randolph Hearst wants to sell newspapers, right? Because he wants to beat Pulitzer, and so. Uh, you have private equity firm buys his uh, newspapers, and this newsroom's laid off. And <laughs> yeah, more, yeah. Yeah. Our, our episode of the death of print media. Yeah, and, and so, precisely. And so, yeah. and so, the USS Maine uh, and its and its explosion uh, are used to justify and to harry politicians who are already being lobbied into doing it, into making war against Spain in order to grab particularly Cuba, but also just kind of whatever else is going. Um, you know, Spain just whatever has, you got. Yeah, Spain you gotta, has a lot of shit, and so you know, um, and, and there are a bunch just of had a succession crisis. The, I mean, you know, and there's Spaniards. Yeah, yeah I so mean, it's like who cares? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, what the U.S. gets out of it in the end is, uh, I mean, we'll talk about Cuba, but <coughs> incidentally, also Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines. Um, oh, I'm very aware of that one. Um, yeah. Ask me, ask me, my my grandmother does not have running water and electricity half the half the week. Mm. Um, uh, the United States occupation of Puerto Rico uh, mm -hmm. as a forward naval base um, and a coaling base. At the same time, they also like so. In just as a funny historical note, the Spanish are like, oh fuck, the moment that the um, that the revolution, the Spanish American War happens, and they like contact Ramon Blanco, who's like the, the guy in charge of the, the Spanish forces in Cuba, um, messages um, uh, Maximo Gomez and is like, hey... If WhatsApp what if we... is in Cuba... <laughs> right. it, it, um, it, it's, like, it's like, what if we kicked out the despicable Yankee together? And wouldn't that be nice? And Maximo Gomez is just like, fuck you, you cow. Um, and so obviously the, the Cuban revolution continues. Um, and the Spanish are kicked out of Cuba and Puerto Rico. Yeah. And the Cuban independence. Yeah. Uh, making the career. By, you can <laughs> tell by by the way in which I said that word, the confidence in, in which I have in Cuban independence in, at this point. In, Independish. Yeah. Yeah. I'm <laughs> getting that meme that's like, oh, I wouldn't say freed, more like under new management. But, but yeah, exactly. Like again, again with the Victoria Three thing of the concept of a protectorate, right? It's not formally yeah. so in Cuba, but like this Precisely. this is this is the case where the US is like, okay, this is we're gonna exercise control of this as being within our sphere of influence. Well, and also like um, you know, uh well, well, we'll go to the next slide, um, and the next slide. Yeah, and, and, and also just directly <laughs> occupy. Yeah, so yeah. the, uh, you know, it's a peacekeeping this... peacekeeping force. Yeah. Precisely. Uh, you know, this basically, you know... That. Right. Yeah, um, <coughs> the, the occupation, the military, or the Spanish-American War results in the career of Teddy Roosevelt. Um, the, it also results in American military occupation. Um, the Teller Amendment uh, explicitly banned the United States from directly annexing Cuba, but they directly annexed everything else that they got in the war, um, including the Philippines and um, Guam and, and uh, Puerto Rico. Guam. Yeah, and Puerto Rico. Um, and so the they were like, okay, we're going to occupy you until you come up with a new constitution. Um, and they did come up with a new constitution. It was amended with the Platt Amendment. Um, you can see that amendment right there in the middle. Um, uh, the, um, the 
Amendment basically makes Cuba a satellite of the United States. They can't enter with treaties or they can't enter treaties with foreign powers that would, quote, imperil the independence of Cuba at the discretion of the United States to decide. They can't sell off oh, their territory boy. to anyone other than the United States. Um, Cuba hmm. can't take on foreign debt without interest being covered by revenue. U.S. can intervene in Cuba at any time uh, when they think it's necessary to protect the Democratic Republic or whatever. Um, the If we could go back to the... Um, I don't know if it's too far, but if we could go back to the map of Cuba real quick. If it's too far, don't worry. Yeah. Um, yeah, there we go. If you look at that little that little island, you know how there's like, like turquoise patch and there's that island right under it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's called there's... Isla de Juventud now, the island of the youth. But um, at the time, it wasn't called that, and I forget what it was called. But um, they were like, yeah, you don't, your claim to this is not recognized, so this is just up for debate now. Um, and also they gave, um, if we go back to the, the, um, military, um, one, there we go. Um, they also like give the U S land for coaling stations. Yeah. Military um, base. Yeah. Well, naval base. Mm -hmm. U United States Naval Base Guantanamo Bay. Hey, that yeah, familiar. Alice, you want to tell us about Guantanamo Bay? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's where Jack Nicholson eats his breakfast, four hundred meters from three hundred Cubans, um, and it's it's where the United States conducted some of the most atrocious tortures in twenty first century history to date, mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's it's still there, just kind of sticking around as a weird sort of extrajudicial facility that the Navy kind of uses still for that. Um, Precisely. Um, so on the left, you have the. It does some naval mili stuff too, but it's not really important, yeah. to be honest. Like, yeah. mi militarily, like, this is shit that's important when you need to coal ships. Now that you don't need to do that, it doesn't yeah, really. It's kind of like, well, we just have it because it's nice to have, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. And, you, you know, don't give like, up on that lease, you know? I mean, that's that's also like why we have one of the reasons that we initially got Puerto Rico and then it, it is, turned out hmm. it is a lease uh, by the way like the US government pays we Cuba pay rent and the yeah, Cuba cash yeah, yeah, right. right. yeah. does it yeah, he has a well. He had before he died. He had a whole drawer in his desk that was just all the checks that the U.S. sends that he doesn't cash. <laughs> um, the the Puerto Rico also naval base. Um, uh, fun fact was where the British fleet was going to be headquartered if uh, you all fell to the Nazis. So oh, you're welcome fun. for not letting that happen. But See, also this is the sorry thing. that you missed like, out on Puerto Rico. Fidel Castro, right? Uh, we'll talk about him in a minute, but I will say I heard of this guy. that uh, in terms of strength of will, if you just mailed me a check every, I don't know, six months or whatever for rent, uh, eventually I would cash it out of boredom. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have them right. piling up on my desk. Right, you know? right. You'd, yeah. I want to inbox my zero desk is a this disaster, shit. But I, still, right, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to know if there was a circumstance in which Fidel would cash the check. Like, what uh, does the U.S. have to do? I mean, initially, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get really, there initially before really they get really, really funds, like... you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. During one of the, the idiotic budget standoffs, just cash them all at once and hope you hold and draw the thing <laughs> oh, yeah. the, the, tre the treasury looks at its balance and it's like, what the fuck? Oh my god, they cashed the check! <laughs> 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 they cashed the last night! Oh my god, I got a little money in the accounts! So, <laughs> so what you're saying is that Cuba is charging an economic super weapon against the U.S. that it can cast <laughs> oh, yeah. at a precipitous moment. Next okay, so we'll time get we start approaching the debt limit, you know? We'll get into this, but I think that actually is <laughs> illegal due to the embargo, but we'll get to that. Um, so, uh, the guy on the left is John R. Brook, who is the first military governor, um, and then when the U.S. withdraws, the Cuba elects a president um, named Tomás Estrada Palma, um, who is living in the U.S. at the time and maybe did some uh, election manipulation. Cool. Um, in oh, documents, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, in documents, his uh, reign or his uh, time in office is often referred to as a regime. So, <laughs> regimes, you know, regimes always a good to, sign. Mm -hmm. I love to call things regimes. Yeah. Um, so, when his regime collapses, uh, another we thing Cuba. regimes love to do. That's right. We occupy Cuba again. <laughs> um, just like, well, it's like just just to to us at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to be like, well. if you're aware of the concept of the Monroe Doctrine, it means that the United States basically had like free license to just occupy yeah. every single it's, fucking it's, it's country kind of they like wanted. Cuba abhors a vacuum, right? And if there's no if there's no government, then we have to do it. Otherwise, the Spanish will show up again? Question mark. Los españoles. Los españoles. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> next slide. God damn it. 
Yes. Uh, it's the first use of that one. Um, so uh, on this slide, you will see um, just the development of Havana during that period of time from the early 1900s to the, the 30s um, it's on the left. Beautiful. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. yeah. No, it's, it's Havana is gorgeous. Um, you know, on the top right is the Prado. Uh, I'm um, raising my hand to indicate that I have a question. When did it stop being La Habana and just Havana? It's still La Habana. Oh, okay. Well, uh, have, we then. just, yeah. so Spanish has a weak B V distinction. Mm -hmm. Um, if you notice when I speak in Spanish, it is, um, I, there is some sort of distinguishment, di distinguishing feature between my B's and my B's, but because I speak English all the time, even though Spanish was my first language, um, the so there's a weak PV distinction. So when it goes to English, it just becomes Havana because the nobody knows what to do with the uh, you know the the first the portion second. of it. Yeah, the mm -hmm. so it's just Havana. Um, but the like, show Tom Payne is going to love this segment. Actually, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, Tom, the, um, the the Havana, much like the Ukraine, pretty much. But you well, wouldn't say that. like <laughs> no. I mean, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> you wouldn't say like the Havana. So in English, which is what that translates to, so they just dropped it and it's Havana. Um, but in Spanish, it is very much La Habana. Uh, people from Havana are called habaneros, which is where the name of the uh, pepper comes from. So. On the top right, you have the Prado. Bottom uh, right, you have the um, you have like the the docks, um, the Way of San Francisco. Um, the United States keeps meddling with Cuba the entire time. The Liberal Party calls in American troops to brutally suppress the Partido Independiente de Color, which is a bunch of um, you, you know uh, black Cubans agitating for uh, rights. Uh, because at this time, there's like way like segregation i i don't know how to i don't know how to say this other than it's Mo exactly as bad as the united states More segregation, yeah. Yeah. Muy segregado. um it, exactly as bad as the united states if not worse um so uh and we'll get to that a little bit but like you know the various they they call in american troops to suppress like cultural protests. victory baby yeah yeah exactly um but the whole time cuba is very dependent on the u.s market because it's right there the flight from miami to Havana took like 45 minutes. Yeah. By it's seaplane and shit, you know? No, we flew on a we flew on a, a regular a regular plane. No, oh, you I, didn't. I, Shut up, Noah. I, 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 like that. Yes, 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 yes. No, yes, no, no, I understand. no. Like no, right, no, now, no. Then, right now. Then you took the train to Havana. Oh uh, well you yeah. could, and we'll get to yeah. that. But also like um well we'll get to the we'll get to the thing about the plane, but there was something funny about the plane. So um so there's like a you may have heard of the Great Depression. No, nope. sure. Yeah, yeah. So it's, the... it's when people had to like line up, and also Okies were invented. Yeah, and or more and so that a country was music good. episode. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, so there was a right after the depression happened in twenty nine. Um, they passed something called the Name Alert Smoot Hawley Tariff Act. Um, Fun. Oh which... yes. Correct. Smoot. Um, uh, <laughs> which... measurement. Yeah, the smoot. Yes. Um, it's a which, different smoot. Different smoot. <laughs> uh, it's around here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those like Tumblr words for like a part of a cat. It's like his smoot. Um, mm, his scrungly smoot. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it! Don't, don't ever fucking do that again. None of this podcast. <laughs> don't stop me. Uh, I wish I could. I hate that so mm. much. Yeah. But um, so part of it includes tariffs on sugar on uh, sugar importation. So. Cuba exports a lot of its sugar to the United States. Mm. This is very bad for Cuba. Economic crisis happens. Yeah, Cuba, um, the U.S. is just like, listen, we need money. It now costs you money to ship sugar to us. Um, yeah. Um, there, so if you go to the next thing. Uh, International Affairs is so cool, dude. Sure is. Um, so here's some guys. Um, oh, that's an unwise moustache. You can't have that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. In the time. It was a couple of years off. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is yeah. 1933. That that dude is clearly a wet. Th that's that's in the era of the sort of um, office space. Michael Bolton. Why should I change it? He's the one who sucks. Years of having right. a hair mustache. Right. Yeah. Well, that yeah. that guy is a that guy is a social democrat. So social fascism is real. I was about to say, yeah, uh, he's uh, had, uh, Hitler brackets tropical. <laughs> tropical. Like Hitler. Hitler. I think I've heard that theory. Yeah. I think you mean Senor Hitler, um, leader of Argentina. <laughs> Uh, nah, uh, um, 
So if you are 19- Argentinian, come on for the Argentina episode. We just do a bonus episode that's a different Latin American country every month. You do a bonus yeah. episode with like Sabine Mengele von Eichmann, where she's yeah. like, President <laughs> Biden, my, my, my país, beautiful Argentina. Argentina. <laughs> mi, mi país. por libertad. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, so a man served Jurgens with an unexplainable uh, background. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Precisely. So in 1933, there is a sort of like revolt slash coup. <laughs> Mi colonia longs for dignidad. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a revolt slash coup called the Sergeant's Revolt um, that basically is like, you know, what Mug thinks about uh, when they think about the Mug army, where it's like you have the sergeants. Uh, Sorry, this is a very niche joke that is made Mug specifically the for the root beer. No, the Marxist unity <laughs> yeah, okay, group, the, the caucus. No, no the, okay. So the root beer. People. This is a niche. This no, is a no, niche no, joke. Root beer people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. This is a niche joke I'm making for the one member of the DSA NPC that listens to this podcast. I, I, from I, I, I consider the whole <laughs> DSA to be NPC. <laughs> oh, wow. great! Ooh, uh, got him. Got <laughs> us. So, um. Uh, so basically, like it's a combination of like the student youth groups and the army. Um, that interesting, uh, interesting combination of vibes there. You you seldom see that. That would not know? be a well, fun coalition. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a good idea in a couple of ways, but we'll, we'll get there. So the the Pentarchy of 1933 um, comes about, um, which uh, I'm not going to go into it very much because like it lasted a year and did some social. Oh, but I see, I see a name I recognize. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to read the name out? Fulgencio Batista. Thank you. Um, yep, um, but that's why I put a pronunciation guide in front next to all of these I, I names. I did not look at it. Uh, I know you didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, that's that's right. So he was involved uh, as a representative of the armed forces. Um, a bunch of social democratic reforms happen, um, and then the U.S. is like, "Whoa, buddy! No more of that. <laughs> oh, can't, can't do that." Social yeah, democracy no no is how. for us. Yeah, we we, we like the you. sergeants <laughs> part of this, but we're not loving the left wing students group part of this. Yeah, it's like the, the social democracy is for us. Yeah, precisely. Um, so the basically they get Batista to the um to coup them. Uh, next next slide. So he runs a military junta until 1940, oh, that's uh, and then one they of have the classic like junta uniforms with the jack boots, yeah, and gloves, Just manlet ass, like mm. five foot tall, like tiny ass dude that belt uh, working its ass off to keep the, <laughs> keep the gut in check yes. big hat yeah <laughs> one Very of the big biggest head. hats yeah um one of the biggest hats you can imagine um so he's got a military junta going until uh, 1940 they have Meyer Lansky? i know we're going to talk about that but is that that Meyer is Lansky? Meyer Lansky. Okay. yep cool. um so the communists at the, at the time of the 1940 elections uh, there's a new constitution and the constitution's actually pretty good um and the constitution like has gives like workers rights and shit it's nice uh so the communists endorse batista um because their sort of thought is that batista is gonna let them run the labor unions um and he runs on something called the democratic socialist coalition L- logo oh, included boy. i see oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is why i put um our logo there um but um so he wins and he becomes president and he serves four years and then he is no longer president Okay, well, um, cool. cool. Normal succession of power time. Yeah, you can see by the bottom right photo that this. Is, yeah, this know. is the this is the democratic succession of power in action. You know. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. Um. Uh. So. Uh. Then in 1952, he does a coup. Um. Which oh, basically. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Is <clears throat> auto golpe. You know. Yeah. Well, it's not an auto golpe because he's not in power then. It's oh, just okay. He, he, wait. He waits until yeah. he's out of power and then just regular ass golpes the la- the next Pretty much. Guy? Yeah. Fuck's yeah. Sake. He could have done an auto golpe or auto golpe and he didn't. Um. But uh, which is he's a very weird dude on a number of levels. But um, I feel like Latin America is a place for dictators to get properly weird with it. You know, I always appreciate. that. Oh I, yeah. I, I I think a lot about Herman, about Herman Bush. Uh, the the like disco Elysium ass president of I think <laughs> Ecuador, um, who like d- like beat up and off uh, like a ninety year old dude in his office for writing an article making fun of him. Not gonna you said beat up right, not beat off because yeah, I was very <laughs> Bolivia. Excuse uh, me, thirty sixth president of Bolivia. Um, well, I don't want to say critical support 
But... He was, he was, listen, he was a weird fucking dude. Hermann Busch, look him up. Uh, Hermann spelled like German. Um, well, sure, of course. I, I, I got that from the fact that it was uh, Bolivia prior to Evo Morales. He, he like, a, again, Disco Elysian. He, he, he sort of like tried to institute this ideology that he had called military socialism, sabotaged his own implementation of it, got so mad he killed himself. <laughs> Wait, are you telling me that the country that Klaus Barbie fled to had a German dictator, dude? Um, yeah, I, also that would be me implementing an ideology, to be honest. I would fuck it up. <laughs> just just, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, I did Marxism-Leninism wrong. Um, so, um, so anyway, so that the golpe happens. Um, or not, sorry, the regular golpe, the Estado happens. And um, he suspends the constitution. The US is like, good, this is fine. Um, and he does a bunch of torture uh, and corruption. And in the top right, you can see um, he is having dinner with Meyer Lansky and his wife. Um, and uh, Meyer Lansky's th wife, tall forehead, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm. It was a style at the time. I don't. I don't oh, know when will it come back? You know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering because I, I, I minoxidil uh, is not working that well for me. But yeah, um, tell me about it. <laughs> so. He does a bunch of torture, um, and at the same time, organized crime is allowed to completely flourish in Havana. This Italian Havana Americans back again, you know. Santo yes. Traficante Junior. Um, mm. uh, I said that like it was Spanish, but it is Italian, so I should be saying Santo Traficante. Um, so Havana is like Vegas before Vegas really exists. Um, like yeah. there is prostitution, there is gambling, there is all the drugs you can imagine. Um, the Mafia has their infamous Havana conference um, there uh, at the Hotel Nacional, which you'll see some pictures of later. Um, and like the thing about this is this is all fine, but like, you know, all of this is only bringing like this is all ten... fine. DSO taking a strong pro mob <laughs> position. <there. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, to be clear, it's not fine. It's fine from their perspective. Um, also, none of my uh, legally, none of my uh, none of my positions <laughs> represent the positions of uh, DSA at large. Um, so, except for some, which I'll note when, <laughs> when I say <laughs> that they do. Um, so, like, y you know, he does the crackdown on dissidents and he tries to make this like a whole tourist thing, but it brings in like one tenth of the income that Cuba gets from sugar production. Um, they are Cash still crops getting, can't beat them. <laughs> literally, yes. Yeah. Um, they're still getting most of their, uh, you know, most of their money from the production of sugar and tobacco and rum and the sugar derivatives, basically, um, in the case of rum. Um, so if you are rich, you are fine. If you are, you're doing great. You're doing better than you yeah, ever were. You can buy if you a very poor, cool watch from Cuervo de Sobrinos, you know? Yeah. Uh, actually, if you're rich and white, um, mm. you're doing great. And if you are poor, uh, you are getting fucked. Um, he has a secret police called the Bureau para la Represión de las Actividades Comunistas, which is the Bureau for the Repression of Communist Activities. Um, and yes. I think it's like... 20,000 people are like tortured and executed. Uh, in the bottom right, you see a firing squad executing a, a Cuban revolutionary. Um, not a good guy, real weird dude, little manlet, um, and you know, god awful cunt. So, yeah, but gu guy doing as he was told is the impression yeah. I get most. Yeah, like sort of basically bran branch manager, right? Yes, it Cuba feels, is sorry, feels like uh, you know, I'm getting the same vibes as like uh. You know, Dubai or like uh, the bigger cities in Saudi Arabia. You know, a lot mm. of this skyscrapers and uh, and then the uh, and all the economic prosperity and the you know exciting happy lives people are leading there that they show on Instagram. All this is superficial to how the e economy actually functions. He's got, he's got like Vision 1950. You know, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of skyscrapers, yeah, they, they, they build yeah. La Lina. <laughs> 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 the, uh, uh, if you go to the next slide, you can see um, here are some skyscrapers that um, are going up terrible. In, in, Look uh, at this thing. This looks great. I love it. Really, sh real. really sharp some... divide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, no, I, I love. I love a good uh, big white uh, modernist building adjacent to the seashore. It's great. I know. It, it's well, it's always City, a winner. <laughs> I think that's not the Hotel uh, Habana Libre, but um, one of those hotels was designed by the same guy who did um, uh, the Beverly Hilton um, in Los Angeles. Um, like, mm. again, really tied into the United States is the, the, like what you need to imagine is that this is essentially an appendage of the United States. Um, and so like American architects are going down here. Hemingway is going down here and hanging out like all these Americans are uh, visiting Havana. Um, and so just so you, 
uh, what you're looking at in the top left is the Vedalo, um, uh, which uh, you know is the name of that neighborhood. That's also where we stayed on the delegation, but a little bit north. Um, the Hotel Nacional is down there. Um, the, that's you can see it with those two little. Um, uh, this guy. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's so cool. Um, and that you know, it's an incredibly fancy hotel. You get the views of the seashore. Um, that street going uh, just on the right. Um, the, like all the way, this little highway thing um, is called the Malecon, um, which is the street that it's like the if you are a Chicagoan, it's Lakeshore Drive. Um, this is very much a uh, James Bond next location. Mm. But, yeah, Alice, is it ever a James Bond next location, or did the uh, James Bond? <laughs> si, senor. Yeah, it's in it's in it's in um uh, uh so Cuba is in Die Another Day. Day, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Wait, didn't they also do um? Whichever James Bond movie Ana de Armas was in, who is Cuban? Oh, like, yes. Cuba. No Time to Die. I think. Yeah, because No Time is, to Die yeah, is in Cuba. Yeah, you're right. So he's been to was, Cuba twice. Um, yeah, it was filmed during the thaw, so that makes sense. Yeah, there's, um, there, there's uh, only. What, uh, I don't have any drops from this other than a Cuban guy saying. There is a strange clinic. From Die Another Day, <laughs> which, okay. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's in Godfather Part 2, right? Or is it part yeah, three? I, I forget. Ooh, ah. I haven't seen a single Godfather movie, mm. so I, oh, I'm sorry. Goodness. I'm I'm just trying not to get 1950s woman dysphoria from the photo on the right here. I was since, going to say since both of these both of these women sort of being being attended to are objectively insanely evil. Um, oh yeah. However, the the aesthetic though that uh, cunty little hat. I, I know, so I know, and I'm trying She's to like, find a way of threading it's not a that little needle hat. because. See, si, like... Reina, work. Mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those are rich white people um, uh, on the right uh, getting pedicures, um, which you can do if you are uh, you're a rich white Cuban. Um, and the middle left, or like at the bottom, uh, that is a still from the film Soy Cuba, which you should absolutely watch. I am Cuba. Um, showing a rooftop party to be quite based, actually. I'm seeing that Liam is raising his hand. Yeah, you hit the, the little like, oh, hand. Oh, hit up the hand. Button. Sorry, I didn't even know you could do this. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. Okay, so next slide. Ah. Hmm. Who just took poison yeah, damage? Some, uh... uh. So yeah, I did just take poison damage. Correct. Um. Uh. Look at that big. Neon sign Casino. there, Macuba, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, and uh, oh, Westinghouse Electric, um, right there uh, oh. as well. Um, Is this one of the original baseball stadiums? I, it's a casino. Oh, I think, but because it says casino. <laughs> but um, it, so one thing I do want to draw attention to is the race of all of these people versus the race of the per people in the last slide. Mm -hmm. For people um, who, are listening, who are listening at home, all of these people are Afro-Cubans, all of them are yes. black, all of the uh, rich people that we saw earlier were white. Uh, again, yep. muy segregado. Um, also, yeah. the, some of these houses have not advanced at all beyond the slave quarters of plantations. These are shanty towns, uh, slums, of which there were many. Um, yep. Hoovervilles. And... Mm. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Who would be yes? Batistavilles, Batistavillas. Um, the so like the whole thing is that there is this enormous divide, um, a divide occasioned by the United States, as we'll talk about in a second, in a lot of ways. Um, so next slide. Um, so you're going to see some aerial photography here. Um, cool. the, I took the one on the right, um, and I forget which comrade of mine took the from one on the left. Seaplane. But yeah, from the seaplane, yeah. <laughs> from the Brazilian-made seaplane. Um, so the 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 left uh, photo is a shot of Havana um, from the air, um, and the right photo is a shot of the sort of like campo as you are going into the international airport, which I wish I'd taken more photos of because it's like Soviet era and very weird. Uh, you'd love it, Atlas. Um, mm. But I would love to go to so, Cuba at some point. Is the thing? Yeah, precisely. You should. I mean, it's. We'll get to why it's tough, but you actually can go very easily. Yes, so I can. Fuck uh, you. <laughs> apart, apart from the fact of me having to travel internationally from Britain. Yes. 
Well, yeah, that's true. But it's actually the part where you get into Cuba will be fine. It's just going to we'll get into that. So mm. in the 50s, the like with the mode of production is still like large Go, going from the UK to a country which is a lot less transphobic. Well, a yeah. country that has trans rights in the Constitution yes. um, See, so and yeah. uh, where gender affirming surgery is free. Um, as are like hormones and all of that. And there is literally a department of the government specifically built around like, hey, you all need to be less homophobic. Hmm. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that later, but like that was an interesting part of the trip. So in the 50s, the land is still organized in these largest states called latifundios. Um, something like 70% of the arable land in, um, in Cuba is owned by foreign interests. Um, American capital owns manufacturing and utility um the utility sectors so on a per capita basis the value of Q american enterprises in cuba was like three times higher than anywhere else in latin america uh, americans own 90 percent of the telecom and electric sector 50 percent of the railways 40 percent of raw sugar production and now that did decline from when americans used to own like 80 percent of raw sugar production but it's still significant cuban branches of u.s banks account for a quarter of all deposits uh, and this is the rand corporation's numbers in 1964 so you know, uh, quoting the Commerce Department in 56. So, you know, those are like rosy numbers at best. Mm. Um, there's a book value of $157 million of direct investment in oil, $111 million in manufacturing, $313 million in public services, which includes like, you know, like utilities, uh, $341 million in mining and agricultural sectors. 59% of Cuba's exports go to the United States. 78% of its imports come from the United States. So, so, the point so, that I'm so, to... so the extractive relationship has not stopped, essentially. Is what Precisely. Yeah. You yeah. have switched out one, you know, pig feeding at the trough with another, um, you know, and so a, a, a while I was sort of like doing some investigation of the numbers, I came across a quote and I wish I had attributed it because I can't find where I attributed it. But um, that when the U.S. is at war, the mines work. And when the U.S. is at peace, there is stagnation mm. um, because Cuba Ugh. is a sort of reserve, um, both of labor and of uh, and of natural resources. You when when you are in, in much the same way, if you think about like Puerto Rico, the reason Puerto Ricans are granted citizenship is 19 in 1917 is to be drafted in World War One. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is an extractive relationship that the U.S. is mediating. Um, and uh, if we go to the next slide. I was just going to say before we move on, oh, sorry, I was yeah. looking through. I uh, was looking through Havana on uh, Google Street View and came across a giant building that just said Banco de Nova Scotia on it. <laughs> nice. like, okay, so you know this. I guess the other half of this relationship was Canada, America Light. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> That's sorry. still the case, actually. In a weird, I mean, we'll get to it, but like Canada actually helps Cuba like access foreign capital or has helped Cuba access foreign capital by like co-investing on cobalt mine extraction and that sort of thing like canadian companies have mm. interests in cuba it's because um, of um because of how uh fidel fathered the current prime minister <laughs> yep yeah uh yeah uh fidel's like farewell to nova scotia my home <laughs> goes to see <laughs> it's <laughs> all it's <laughs> all kind of dreamy so uh all right so next slide uh raz you want to take this one yeah sure um so the Cuban railway system, we'll talk about uh, very briefly here. Uh, so, okay, Cuba has railroads very early on. Um, shown here is uh, the Havana Special, um, which I'll get to that in one second. Um, Cuban railroads develop very early. They develop in a different way than a lot of other railroads in the um, in the Caribbean, in Central America, in South America. Um, they don't run into the big problems of break of gauge, which is when there's two different tra track gauges. So you come to the station, everyone's going to switch to another train. Um, and uh, undercapitalization, which is when, you know, maybe you're building the railroad to a specific mine, that specific mine peters out. Uh, you have no money to improve service after that. So, you know, the railroad just goes bust. I mean, a lot of places in... Um, uh, South America, especially and Central America, they they the railroads were built so thoroughly around extraction and extraction only that when you know when 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 a mine petered out or some other industrial operation, the country just had no railroads. 
Cuba sort of avoids this early on because um, they're able to really tightly integrate the whole system with the United States railroad system. Um, you know, Cuba is very close to the United States, so you can just load railroad cars onto barges, onto ferries, bring them over to Cuba, and then, you know, you can ship them anywhere in the country. And anywhere in Cuba could ship railroad cars to anywhere in the United States or Canada or even Mexico, right? Mm. Uh, since you had this system of car floats and railroad ferries, you didn't have the normal port problems where like, okay, I bring the train up to the dock, the stevedores unload the boxcars and put the goods into the ship, but, you know, maybe some of that walks away. Um <laughs> So as a result of this very efficient railroad system, this sort of very efficient, you know, uh, it, it worked a lot better than anywhere else. Uh, Cuba winds up with the most railroad miles per capita of any country in the world by 1958. Um, you know, and some people actively encourage this, um, notably Henry Flagler, um, who ran the <laughs> Florida East Coast Railroad. Flagler. Yes. And he was uh, so. You know, he he inaugurates this train called the Havana Special. It runs from New York City to Havana by way of the ferry. But most notably, he also wanted to intercept brand new Panama Canal uh, traffic, right? And his idea is, all right, I got a railroad that goes down to Miami. That's not close enough for me. What we're going to do is build a railroad 108 miles over open sea what to Key the West. What goddamn fuck? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what is sick. a hurricane? And, they aren't real. Oh, <laughs> well, you know. Shut uh, up. <laughs> I want to write an episode. Climate change was never going to happen. So, you know, there, it was gonna, <laughs> yeah. it's a perfect investment. Um, I want to write an episode about this sometime fairly soon. The overseas railway, mm. um, it does get wiped out in a hurricane in uh, oh, well, 1933, I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, so you would this? board, <laughs> you would board the Havana Special in New York City, I believe, in the evening. It would go all the way down to Key West. You would get off ferry like six o'clock that afternoon. Um, you know, uh, the following day, and then the ferry went 100 miles to Havana. Um, you know, so very, very convenient. It was all one ticket. It was all an integrated operation. Um, God, I yeah, that uh, me. <laughs> the result of this, the result of this is uh, Cuba has this extremely highly developed railroad network, which is in contrast to pretty much the rest of the Caribbean at the time. Puerto Rico was shutting down its railroads right now. Um, there were some in the Dominican Republic. Uh, Haiti was still being punished, so they didn't have any railroads. Um, you know, the, 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 a couple of these couple of these islands had pretty extensive railroad systems for a while. Cuba's the only one that really maintains them. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to my mom, and she was talking about how there used to be, like, a train that you would take, like, from various, like, across the coast of Puerto Rico, like, through various beaches, and she remembered, like, the ads for it, and it just doesn't exist anymore, and I'm like, oh, great, another way that the United States has fucked us. Nice. Yes. I have a little piece of trivia, the way the around way. the island. There's, there's a sort of company-branded train for a company that was forced out of Cuba and sent to, into sugar, the Hershey Railway. Um, yes. Oh, awesome. oh, Hershey, Central like, Pennsylvania's we will... finest. We'll talk about that a little bit later Hershey when we talk Highway, about the, the armor Hershey trail. <laughs> yeah. Give us back your peppermint patties, you Nazi fuck. Um, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> Cuba, Cuba still has the fourth largest railroad network in North America. Wow. And uh, it's not even any contest between like the fifth most, which I don't even know what it is because all the rest are so close to zero miles. It barely matters. Um, <laughs> Great. <laughs> awesome. Right. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, uh, and, you know, just another example of like how Cuba was like developed to some degree, but it's developed in a, in a very strange way. OK, next slide. Yeah. Yo, you seen this guy? You hey, seen I, our I, boy? I, 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 I recognize oh, uh, I recognize this man. Yes. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we start getting into the slightly controversial uh, portion of this podcast. Yeah, the part where we say that the Cuban revolution was good. <laughs> Yeah, the part where that is my opinion. It's um, also my opinion, uh, so I'm not going to argue with you. You know, that's right. Um, Historically yeah, uh, progressive. Genuinely, I think. Uh, also, you know, my uh, opinion, although I have a few caveats. 
Yeah, I think that's that's where I am with Roz. Uh, some missteps were made, which we'll talk about. I'm but, still uh, Liam, bud. I'm oh, sorry. Jesus fucking Christ. I I am, like, losing my mind today with Liam. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Liam. Uh, okay. I adore you. Um, uh, yeah, I... So, yeah, I agree with Liam. Some missteps were made. Um, so... As my dad um, says, you're gonna break a few eggs. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Precisely, yeah. Um, God, your dad is so cool. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you, can't, uh, you can't run a historically progressive moment without a few lulags. And who goes in those lulags? Listen, sometimes you make some uh, bad stuff. Yeah, well, and the, uh, who goes in those? Well, we'll get there. But, um, so, um, on July 26, 1953... <laughs> <laughs> uh a lawyer um and, and baseball lawyers, enthusiast <laughs> lawyer baseball enthusiast um Shago. still d- did not have a beard at the time if i remember correctly mm. um and if this photo is any evidence uh named fidel castro um so it's during during my language switching very fast there uh and his often neglected brother raul S- um, seen him- oh, oh shit that's raul <laughs> Yeah, that's Raul. Ah. Did you not know that was Raul? No, I didn't know who the fuck that was. <laughs> Seen there being a twink. Um, well, let's not go too far here. Yeah, <laughs> okay, he's an otter. Um, so, uh, Fidel and Raul staged an attack on the Moncada barracks in Santiago de Cuba um, after their, like, change.org petition to unseat Batista doesn't get enough signatures or, or shares on social media. <laughs> it's... I think sometimes you can engage in like electoral politics and local politics and find it very frustrating. And one alternative to to regrouping and doing more like council meetings is um, immediately moving to guerrilla warfare. It's so, a natural yeah. and uh, it's a natural escalation. I mean, as Liam yeah. was saying, this is one of the caveats, which is that a lot of people die, <laughs> um, and. Uh, they did do a petition. It did not get enough signatures. Um, and uh, so a bunch of them got killed and everybody else got captured. Uh, Fidel got 15 years in prison um, along with Raul. And um, they basically, him and Raul got released in 1955 um, and created the, if you look at the top left, the Movimiento, Movimiento 26 de Julio, which is the 26th of July movement. Again, I would not uh, name my movement after the time I got my ass beat. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like the New York, it's like the NYPD counterterrorism unit having 9-11 on their patches, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, it's a cool flag, though. True. Like, it's pretty sick. Uh, the, um, the, we won't get fooled again, uh, flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah, just precisely. do our best, you know? Yeah. So, uh, okay, so it the, the movement... <laughs> The movement kind of fuses with various other um, uh, revolutionary movements. Uh, Rafael Garcia Barcenas, uh, he, his movement, uh, the Movimiento Nacional Revolucionario, the National Revolutionary Movement. Uh, Frank Pais, about whom a little bit more later, uh, had the movement called the Acción Nacional Revolucionaria, um, the National Revolutionary Action. Um, so it's a big tent org. Um, that, uh, you know, has a variety of internal caucuses. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm sorry, Liam. Um, uh, a variety of internal caucuses, you know, um, like, Pani Rosas, <laughs> Mayoría Socialista, Cabaría Comunista, um, Grupo Unidad Marxista. Um, yeah, so- but all those brake light clinics there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all those, uh, came, uh, you know, uh, 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 socialists in office. Um, he, mm. So they're fighting to overthrow Batista um, through both, like, m- you know, like demonstrations and pol- military action. Uh, so they kind of uh, get kicked out of Cuba. <laughs> if you go to the next slide. Oh, what are you going to do? Oh, this feels compromisingly <laughs> erotic. <laughs> so, uh-huh. okay. So it's funny you say that because while we were in the hospital, which we're going to talk about later, while we're in the hospital, like the place you go in to the hospital, uh, Hospital uh, Calixto Garcia, which is the, the main one in uh, Havana, uh, the university hospital. Uh, as you go in, there's this big, like, quote from Che on the, like, on the right-hand side of where you come in on a vehicle. Mm. And the thing about it was, I don't remember what that quote was, because the picture was shirtless Che, like, doing farm work. <laughs> well done man who loved taking his shirts off you know that yeah. is correct yeah um so Those clavicles uh, jesus christ 
Yeah, so um, you can see here uh, Fidel on the left, a dangerously sexy twink on the right. Um, in that photo, he is my age, and, and the he thing looks is, better right, than like, me. Both of these men will have sex with you. Like, that's that's a promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, they're dead. They're both dead, so uh, 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 ideally not. But um, I might not stop them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so the dangerously sexy twink on the right is everybody's favorite t-shirt photo, um, Che Guevara. Um, I, or che Guevara is um, uh, partially Irish, as I found out, but of Argentinian extraction. Um, so he's in Mexico because he got kicked out of Guatemala <laughs> um, after... Uh, no, 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 Shea yeah. is actually short for Seamus. <laughs> <laughs> Seamus yeah. Guevara, hopefully, yeah. Not a lot yeah. of people know that. <laughs> Did you ever hear about Seamus Guevara standing in solidarity with him, with the people of Ulster? Um, so, I mean, I don't know how you get, like, as a Puerto Rican, I'm really, like, throwing stones in my glass house, but I don't know how you get Che from Ernesto. <laughs> um, it's it's but, an Argentinian but... thing, because it just means, like, hey, and it's like, it's like Argentinian tick, I guess, you know? Okay. So, so it's like every, everybody is like calling him like guy who talks Argentinian style. I mean, couldn't be me, but... Um, yeah, because you don't talk Argentinian so, style. I would never talk Argentinian style because I don't have a German accent. So... Tough to pair, tough to pair. Thank you, Liam, I try to be. Um, so picturing when, che, when... che as an Irish guy with a really thick German accent. <laughs> Hasta la victoria siempre. <laughs> the people of Ulster stand in solidarity for the Cuban revolution. <laughs> so the CIA organized a coup against the democratically elected Guatemalan president Jacobo Arbenz after he um, committed the cardinal sin of a Latin American leftist uh, president and did land reform yeah. against United yeah. Fruit that'll, Company. That'll, that'll do it. Uh, that'll, that'll do, do it. it. One of the classics of the genre there. Uh, United Fruit now Chiquita Banana. Um, mm, if you uh, yes. ever want to boycott something, you're, um, you're uh, you're 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 big on your banana history. Um, it's caused way more human suffering than you think about. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah. You should <laughs> feel the, bad. Sugar. The fr the phrase "Banana Republic" is is that because it described the kind of repressive dictatorship that the U.S. Uh, enforced in these in these places. Precisely. Um, so the like half or a large portion of the uh, the 26th of July movement, uh, their leadership is in Mexico now, in Mexico City. So they hang Wait, out I there have, for a little I have, bit. I have a drop from Rambo 5 for that. Uh, <laughs> Why? <laughs> because because no, I, I do a James Bond podcast and he goes to fucking... I need to go to Mexico. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> A woman. <laughs> so, uh, like monsters, so, just diseased monsters. I literally, I literally, like, this is the, this is the p stuff that I, like, I listen to this podcast and Kill James Bond while I am playing Paradox Grand Strategy <laughs> video games. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. the, amount yeah. the amount of my get brain, yeah, the amount of my brain, get your uh, foreign policy advice here. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the amount that my doing, brain is doing like a beyond recognition. Set in the TNO timeline. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to say it in German. I don't want to try. Um. So they they put together they. Okay, so you're familiar with the Silver Corp thing that happened in Venezuela? Yeah, of course. Uh, what, yeah. God, what do they call it? Like fucking Operation Gideon or something? Mm. Yeah. So it was. This is the inverse of that, where they get 82 guys and stick them on a yacht. And are like, Fellas, we're gonna take back Cuba. <laughs> party oh. boat time on the Granma. <laughs> yeah, uh, next slide. Yeah. Yeah. The shittiest yeah. boat in the fucking world. <laughs> so that is the Granma. Um, it's in the Museum so that, of the Revolution in Havana right now, isn't it? Which I wish I could have gone to. Um, mm. But yeah, uh, so that's the boat. They stick 82 guys on that boat. I mean, that's crowded. Not, that's, that's too many guys. I was about to say. I agree. I'm that is too many a short guys. trip. And, okay, so, like, 
the, you know, they're basically you get in the fellas together and you're doing the revolution, right? And so they land, and pretty much immediately they get bombed by helicopters and they lose sixty two guys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's a video game shit. You know, you get in the thing, you got to establish like threat very quickly. So uh, you got killed. As Liam says, yeah. is as Liam likes to say, it's weight savings. It's weight yeah. savings. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now, now you're down to twenty of your best guys. Well, best guys yeah. at avoiding helicopter bombs. Uh, that which slide. does not kill me only serves to make me stronger. Exactly. So this is the what does not kill me. Helicopter bombs serves to make me stronger. Overthrow <laughs> the government of Cuba. I so... just have a helicopter bomb me with smaller bombs and progressively <laughs> increase the size until I'm immune. It's a tiny little matchbox-sized bomb donking off the side of my head. I, if you try hard and you believe in yourself, you can, like, duck and weave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you're looking at some beautiful mountains. Uh, you're looking at the Sierra Maestra. Um, and so they land. It's a weird route because they basically go from Mexico to, like, the bottom right, the, the, the I guess, the southeast uh, portion of Cuba, like, in the little hook. Uh, and then land there and then flee into the mountains. Um, they're in, a, like, they're in the, the Cuban Appalachians. Mm. Uh, kind of yeah so like they are in the campo they're like fucked they're, they're down to like 20 guys and they start building a guerrilla campaign uh, collaborating with the rest of the movement so like Frank Baez uh, who is doing urban demonstrations at the time um, and along the way like people are generally like yeah I'm getting fucked over into this government like I'm happy to join you and they start redistributing land to captured farmer or to um, sorry uh, to farmers whose land they have like uh, taken from the uh, from the Americans or whoever they own or whoever owns yeah, them. Have so you a little they... slice of Hershey plantation? You know. Yeah, exactly. God, I, I can't speak today. So they um, they That's start. Good. We should do it all the time. <laughs> you know what? Are you, what are you gonna do? I, exactly. Uh, it is what it is. You're doing fine, so, Thank you. I try. Um, I persevere, like Fidel Castro and the Sierra Maestra. Uh, yeah. Podcast o muerte. Venceremos. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I'm they still start a building. Safety third, siempre. <laughs> um, so they start building their sort of um, their uh, base in the Sierra Maestra and expand. So, uh, next slide. Oh wow, that's a quick expansion. That's, yeah, so we don't need to. Like fucking end yeah. of World War Two here. This is not like this is not like Hearts of Iron uh, podcast, so I'm not going to get into like the actual. Yeah, no. Um, the, the the important thing is that they win by doing a series of like uh, really like cheese encirclements and eliminating <laughs> infantry divisions. They uh, win yeah. by uh, opening the console and deleting their opponents' <laughs> units. They definitely found some exploits to make this work. I will say that. And I mean, to be honest, kind of like the, the the kind of they did kind of go into the console and delete their opponents' units because they had a bunch of people defect from uh Fulgencio Batista's army. Um so and they like capture tanks. Um and so like the tanks tank are way middle... easier to operate back then. If you captured a tank yeah. you could just get on it and fuck around as that is an American <laughs> military <laughs> service tank. I think that's a Sherman. Mm. Is that a Sherman? Uh Liam is that a Sherman? Uh, uh, what, 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 it looks like slides. one to me but don't it does look like one to me although it looks a little narrow. Okay, listen to lions led by donkeys for more. On this, yeah, I was on this about issue. to say, uh, Joe Kasabian knows tanks. Mm. Someone's yeah. going to say, actually, that's not a tank. That's mobile artillery. I don't Shut know. Up. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a technical, but um, yeah. so um, I just want to, so, for those of you keeping score at home, uh, like I am, we're an hour and 50 minutes in and we're on slide 30. So yeah, it's fine. Some it's of these are half. just joke slides. Um, so um so the rebels seize equipment from Batista, including that tank, which gets used in the Batalla de Santa Clara later, which we'll get to. Um, and the U.S. sees the writing of the wall and starts sanctioning Batista because he's murdering more people than Eisenhower is comfortable with. Yeah, a or, weird Eisenhower conscience moment. Something something happened to his brain after he won the Second World War. Uh, you know, the whole military industrial complex and all this. I yeah. Mm, I mean, yeah, you can't give him too much credit because no. of what he does later. But like, <laughs> <laughs> or, or earlier, there's a bunch of other shit, including including our bands. But like, uh, that's true. Yeah, the, 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 occasionally he has strange moments, which is more than Joe Biden ever had. You know. <laughs> well, I. To be fair, Eisenhower never got to say something as cool as "Ooh, Earth Rider." <laughs> 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 uh, so. Next slide, please. 
Um, so oh, the boy. momentum, the momentum builds. Yeah, this is where you get to talk about the train. Um, the momentum builds and until uh, Roz, can you give me uh, on the twenty eighth of December? On the twenty eighth of December, nineteen fifty eight. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, che Guevara makes his way from the port city of Caibarien, um through the town of Camajuaní uh, towards Santa Clara. I'm just showing off at this point. Uh, where he intercepts an armored train. Tren blindado. Um, Hell yes. yes. The yes. Tren blindado. We talked about this briefly on the armored train episode. I have a few more interesting details about it, though. Yes, I'm excited <laughs> for the interesting details. Uh, so actually, so the bottom right, um, is a photo I took of the depot where that train was uh, reinforced and kept um, uh, in Havana. Um, so that's the depot where it was, according to um, to Sara from the from Minitur, um, and that's where like one of the workers basically like working on it fed the revolution information about the specs on the train that enabled them to derail it. Um, uh, so they basically I feel they, like you don't need to know a lot of information about a train to derail it. Well, uh, I mean, you know, like it's sort of. Mm. Yeah, uh, we'll 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 you look. I added a slide in train about this. derailers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to, I, they used these three D printed train derailers they learned about from Twitter. Uh, reading directly from the uh, from the uh, presenter notes on this. Uh, oh on God this damn it! Slide. You put the three D printed a derailers. bunch of rails and derailed the train, which could have been a lot easier if you had simply three D printed a train derailer. Serves, serves me right for not reading ahead. <laughs> um, no, you're good. Um, I, I, you know, it's uh, that's why I own a 3D printer. But uh, that's a joke. Oh, did, <laughs> legally, <laughs> legally uh -huh. that's a joke. Um, so okay, so uh, let's hop to the the train slide, so, and then we'll. So okay. here, here's here's something to uh, point out before we move on to the next slide. Now, one one of the things I mentioned earlier, the Cuban railway network is very integrated with the American railway network. Um, now, what we're looking at here. This is a very strange boxcar. Uh, now, it's strange only if you know a lot about boxcars. Otherwise, it looks normal. This is owned by the Nashville, Chattanooga, and St. Louis Railroad. Connor, kind of wondering why we have a Dixieland uh, boxcar. Yeah. Yes. I it's, am the, uh, it's it. It says here um, to and from Dixieland on the side, right? Ooh. It's got three yellow stripes on the side. It also has a weird feature here. The end of the boxcar is a good identifying marker. This is a Hutchinson end, which is a very old type of boxcar end, usually on wooden cars. This is weird because it's a steel car with a Hutchinson end. Also, it's 36 feet long. It's very strange. <laughs> it's a very strange car. This should be a 40-foot long car that has a different end on it. So anyway, um, these are the cars that made up the trend bundado. I can um, I just say how much I love working with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know so, what Hutchinson end is, but I'm spellbound. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what what you can sort of these are this is what's on display in Santa Clara here. You can see the full extent of the modifications that Batista did to these cars, which were hauling men and material. Right, um, was painting over through the heart of Dixieland <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, the writing logistica, logistica on. on there. Yeah. So if you go to the actual museum, this is what's on display. Although if you look at the pictures, there was an actual armored portion of the train, which appears to be one of the Hershey electric railway cars <laughs> with, <laughs> with some plates <laughs> welded over it. Oh. And if this is as early a car as I think it is, this may be made of wood. Not a very smart guy in a lot of ways. I, I, listen, <laughs> say what you like about Mao and Maoism, but he understood yeah. guerrilla war against uh, d d certain kinds of enemies. And when you talk about imperialism being a paper tiger, right, this being manifested <laughs> in the form of a 19th century wooden train car from a candy company that you bolted <laughs> some steel armored, to. Right. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> oh my god. So like and then, well, and then that... I added 20 boxcars too. 
Um, <laughs> the boxcars being, I mean, people shot straight through the boxcars is the oh. thing. The boxcars um, were full of ammo, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, delicate. They were explosive. <laughs> I think like, I want to say a lot of the uh, a lot of the folks uh, who are in the boxcars just like came out and surrendered instantly. Yeah. And then like, you know, just shook hands with the the, the rebels and they're like, OK, yeah, we're, we're on your side now. This uh, sucks. Uh, if, 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 I'm, <laughs> if I'm hopelessly outgunned in a situation where my enemy is also right, you better believe that's an easy decision for me to surrender instantly. Yeah, yeah this is uh, the Cuban Revolution is an exercise in if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah. <laughs> well, and 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 like this was I mean, this battle, like they basically rolled in with a tank and then blew up an armored train and then were like, uh, OK. And then on like, OK, we're fucked. And then Batista flees the country on January 1st, 1959. Um, and that's it is over for him. Um it is it's never been done. more over than it is now. <laughs> it you is. Got a, uh, you got Jover. the goodbye look. <laughs> Actually, it is Eisenhower over. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so uh, if we go to the next slide, we will well, that, see. That's uh, a really unexpected. That's a TNOS photo right there. We will see. <laughs> a, 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 uh, we will see uh, the founder of the EPA. Um, <laughs> Two beating... wokeists <laughs> shaking hands. <laughs> yeah, uh, you will see two woke uh, 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 politicians exchanging pronouns. Um, and <laughs> so <laughs> what you see here is you see Fidel meeting with um, a certain Richard Milhouse Nixon. The Quaker. ass on Fidel, apart from anything else. Like, I was going to say, yeah. Um, uh, he's you know, sorry. He's he, got a real dump truck going on right there. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say this. I'm Puerto Rican, so like I like it's just it, it runs the family, if you will. Um, so like that's just that's just. Have you ever seen J Lo? I mean, like, come on. Um, so um, so basically, it's what what Fidel tries to do is like he's he's not an idiot. He's like, okay, well, we sell most of our shit to the United States. We get a lot of shit from the United States. They're the top dog. I'm gonna be nice to them. Um, so he does a goodwill tour of the United States in April 1959, where, uh, side note, he gets really into ice cream. Um, this happens, this happens to every communist who visits the yeah, US. Yeah, Fucking yeah. Anastas McCoyan becomes Wait, obsessed who will come with, up later? Yeah. with ice cream. What the fuck? <laughs> ice cream's good, Alice. Yeah. Yes. So Fidel actually gets so obsessed with ice cream that he's like, Cubans need to have ice cream. Big cow, so he, big cow. Yes. Right, yes, so yes. he starts trying to develop like a cow that will... Uh, you know, be like well suited for the highland environment of Cuba, and they end up with Ubre Blanca, who is like a Stachanovite cow, massive who... statue thereof. They also the, build a, she, a, her, her stuffed like body is in a museum. Like uh, oh, comrades, Alice, comrades, we're have, going to develop a cow. <laughs> they have like genetic samples of her to clone her. I, I <laughs> like that's true. I love um, the Cuban Revolution so much. Um, I agree, and so he also built like a really cool modernist ice cream parlor called Copelia um, in in Havana. But that's beside the point. So Fidel is doing a goodwill tour. He's like, I love baseball um, and you know apple pie and shit. Hmm. Um, and he's trying to be like, hey, you know, we may be on different teams, so you can work with me. He has wow. not yet been the, like the logo of Copelia is quite horny. Like that's a personal like Fidel intervention. Uh... <laughs> It, it, uh, it, it's 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 like t it's like a ballet dancer's two legs with remarkably thick thighs. Um, oh yeah, because Copelia is a ballet, I think it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, mm. yeah. It is. It is. Sorry, I just googled it, and yeah, it is extremely horny. Oh, you know what? I saw this sign. I don't know why I had to Google it. Anyway, so uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, one of my favorite tweets, bottom left. Um, uh, <laughs> So he he does the wrong he does a wrong move, which is to advocate for land reform. Um, mm. Yeah. So mm. remember, this I said keeps that. happening. It keeps happening. So in May 1959, he passes the first agricultural reform law, uh, which implements an upper limit of 1,000 acres for land ownership and bans foreigners from owning land, which is good. Um, based um, the uh, the Instituto Nacional de la Reforma Agraria, the in, the National Institute of Agrarian Reform, is formed to sort of draft this law and does a census of land in Cuba. 
And it would theoretically allow the Cuban government to seize almost 40 million acres of land, but they only seize about 30 million over the course of four years because they're like, if we do this too quickly, like, you know, they will murder us. Um, well, that's, uh, that's still three quarters of the goal fairly quickly. <laughs> right, exactly. So uh, at the time, and so like this is a period of increasing tension between the Cubans uh, and the United States. Uh, a second ship explosion has impacted the podcast. The mm. French ship La Coubre uh, blows up in the Havana Harbor. I'm sorry about my pronunciation. I don't care about French. Um, remember La Coubre to hell with Cuba. <laughs> I, yeah. I, it doesn't roll off the tongue as well. Yeah, it kind of. It's nearly there. It's. I bet it would work great <laughs> sure, in French, sure. but I don't care what the French <laughs> have to think. Gotta um, yeah, gotta workshop it, you know. <laughs> so Souvenir La Coubre. <laughs> so um, uh, our languages they, tonight. Mm, well, yeah. there's your polyglot. Yeah, <laughs> precisely. So, um, the so there's an arms embargo already in place from the Batista administration, um, where the America's like, you cannot buy guns from us. So they're like, okay, well, thank God we're still in sort of like a multipolar world. We're gonna go to the other superpower and buy the best guns ever made. Um, lighting my I, lighting my come American... down to Big Mickey's Kalishnikov <laughs> oh, arms yeah. factory and warehouse. <laughs> yes, Liam, we are doing Big Kalashnikov, and we are doing it. Um, uh, actually, while I was in Cuba, I saw like people with AK seventy fours and um, and with like the the sort of when we went by a military installation, I saw like AK seventy fours and I saw MP fives or like uh, and I was like, wow, this is a crazy. There's a weird assortment of shit here. Um, yeah, some of them had so, like fouls as well in the in the Cuban military. Oh yeah, it's like wild. Mm. Mm. It is wild. So the Americans react from by Far to this Cry by Six real. Um. I, I'm so mad at you that you made me play that, but uh, they did have a quote from Alvisu Campos like right off the bat, so I was okay with that. But just the rest of it sucked. But anyway, I'm so they reduced it right now. I want you to know <laughs> that the series has gone downhill since tail. That, yeah, sure, exactly. Sure. They reduce the importation, the Americans reduce the importation of sugar. So then the Cubans go to the Soviets and are like, okay, we have all this sugar. And the Soviets are like, sure, I'll take that. Um, and then the Americans go, we're not going to give you any oil. Um, so in November of 1960, uh, the uh, Cubans make a deal with the aforementioned Anastas Mikoyan ice cream lover for 5 million tons of Cuban sugar to be shipped it's to the Soviet International Union. International Alliance of Treats. Exactly. Yes. And the Soviets Is there get... anything that tastes as sweet as Socialist Brotherhood? Possibly ice Socialist cream. Ice Cream. Yeah. Ice Cream, yeah. yeah. So Biden's the Soviets... into it too. God yeah. damn it. That, well, they really the, do the, take the everything so from well us. For us. <laughs> uh, listen, Mac. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, don't mess with the Cuban... <laughs> Rocky Road. You mess with the Cuban women, you get the benefit, you know? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> right. <laughs> D DSA should do the next national convention in Havana. Um, oh. That's one of my Shit, favorite I, tweets. I, I would re-up my dues at that point. You should be re-upping your dues, <laughs> and you should be re-upping your solidarity dues, uh, and also anyone <laughs> listening to this should re-up that solidarity dues. Um, that is my favorite tweet, uh, is the Get Fiscal one, where it's like, DSA should do the next national convention in Havana. Uh, wonderful, romantic setting. What's that? Maria has invited you into the hills for a glass of wine. Uh, you, you can look it up. It's great. Um, so uh, we were all talking about this while we were in Cuba. So um, the Soviets give the Cubans, in exchange for this sugar, grain, oil, and credit, which they desperately need. Now, now, you, um, now you're in the camp. You're in the and you accidentally have created. Not yet. Oh fuck. Okay. Well, not yet, but close. Uh, yeah. Because I, I, then the thing. Let me know when we're in the camp, because I have two Soviet Almost things about I Cuba like that the I next... want to talk about. I have two slides where you could say we're in the camp, but the second one is funnier. So um, you'll know it when it happens. But um, mm. so uh, the thing is, the Soviets are shipping crude, right? So that has to be refined, and Cuba has refineries. They are owned by Royal Dutch Shell, Texaco, and Standard Oil, um, and they hate. This yeah, like, we're not refining this fucking communist shit. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Russian oh. crude, the desinformatia, um, you know, that's coming from this Russian crude mm -hmm. and the Mueller report and things oh, of that that's nature. Putin's crude, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that they nationalize those refineries. Um, Hell yeah, yeah. And 
The oil also, companies don't like it when you do that. One Jones, weird trick. Um, <laughs> that is the second thing you shouldn't do. <laughs> um, uh, also, they abolish the the Cubans abolish income tax while they're at this. Um, so uh, score, um, and yeah. they take control of the TV and radio stations and build up the army and the CDR, which is the Committee for the Defense of the Revolution, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, next slide, please. Wow, he did all this and lowered taxes. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even. Do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, how uh, I said this guy was cool five minutes ago. Yeah, so you're gonna have to retract that. Um, turns out when you do cool things for your citizens, the United States hates that shit. Mm. Um, so six months after the revolution, I think like uh, basically contemporaneously with the rising tensions, but also like right after Fidel was like, we should pose no threat to you. Eisenhower is having the CIA arm guerrillas to get rid of him. Uh, the yeah, British he's case... jealous of how much he's lowered taxes. <laughs> 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 he's like, wait, you guys don't have a military industrial complex. Fuck you all. Um, uh, the, the, the reviled Angloids uh, cancel a sale of whatever the fuck a Hawker Hunter fighter aircraft is. It, it, uh, it is a beautiful British jet fighter um, that we exported to a lot of places around the world and which did some interesting like counterinsurgency stuff. Uh, and thank you. I have in the notes. Terrible. I have in the notes, Alice, four question marks, help. Um, <laughs> uh, and so the uh, the whole Nats like apparatus is gathered to figure out how to do a regime change. Um, and they, so they sever relations in 61 and then move on to an embargo. So next slide. So what you're looking at is a memo written in 1960 from Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs, Lester Malator Mallory. Malator? To assist Sorry. Malator. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What are you going to do? <laughs> Lester Mallory um, uh, to Assistant Secretary of State for Inter-American Affairs. Name alert. Roy... Rubottom. 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 Yeah. What the fuck even? Okay, sure. Rubottom is like half of the people who compete on RuPaul's Drag Race. Thank you. I, um, I was also, <laughs> I was searching for a RuPaul joke there. Thank you for, uh, for, for getting that for me. I, 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 I love how the, the sort of thrust of this memo is point by point. Here's all the ways in which we're fucked. Where it's like, yeah. they love Castro. Everybody loves Castro. Um and trying to throw him a coup. Throw him a coup. Yeah, tr trying to do a coup would probably not work and would make people like Castro more. Oh my God, we had to be friends. <laughs> yeah, you see what you see where it basically says that like if you um do really overt uh government action by the U.S. against Cuba, it only causes more support. I do, or... and I, I, I see the bit, yeah. the final point here. The only foreseeable means of alienating internal support is through disenchantment and disaffection based on economic dissatisfaction and hardship. And do you notice how points five and six are kind of in contradiction? I do. Uh, okay, please and, keep that in your brain. <laughs> and, and it's like, and it's like, you know, the the biggest scare, which is socialists are going to raise your taxes, is completely. Irrelevant. Oh, they're they're going to lower your taxes. They're going to get rid of the concept. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's because they already, it's because they take it out of your salary before it even gets to you. But that's what Social Security is. So what are you going to do? Mm. Um, I so you can see here. Taxes. Sorry? Nothing? Hey, what's up? Oh, you're, just, you're just doing like tax evasion. <laughs> Liam, you were saying how much you love paying Social Security I do taxes. pay Social Security. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So um, I pay so, taxes. <laughs> Every, everything gets Thanks, more yeah. difficult when you own a business. <laughs> Correct. Um, so a, a small business like the Cuban government. Hmm. Um, so they go on to say that the main thing here is that they need, if you look, flexible authority in sugar legislation, um, and that they need to seek this urgently because they see, um, if you're familiar with the economic concept of Dutch disease, I believe that's the right one. Is that just being Dutch? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, well, it's when you, you, your entire economy is like specialized into this one thing. No, like... it's when you you can't stop doing blackface. Yeah, <laughs> also blackface. when your entire your entire economy is based around shoe polish. It's it's uh, it's, it's, <laughs> why, it's why MBS is trying desperately to make the line a thing so that you can be an app developer in Saudi Arabia instead of like a guy who gets rich off of petrodollars. Oh yeah, you could be like America, where the entire economy is based around apps. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I have a coworker who lived in Dubai, and she was telling me how nice it was, and I'm just like, that is a place I have zero interest in in, in going to. I'm sorry. Yeah, and uh, I'll, listen, so, I'll so, listen to you, but uh, no. so Cuba pre-revolutionary uh, brackets pre-revolutionary had both the Dutch disease um, sugar problem and also as liam just said dutch disease brackets can't stop doing blackface and racism <laughs> problem yes so uh so you see that like they got that flexible authorization on sugar they got the authorization to lower the sugar quota which is what we talked about earlier if you go to the next slide are we are we in the camp yet yeah we're in the camp oh Ooh. fuck i forgot that it shows up on black oh. uh, you Dev, would you mind it. fixing um my horrible mistakes but so um, yeah um thank you i love you 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 have to you have to get your shit from somewhere and somewhere is the union of soviet socialist republics i'm not going to blast the theme song because it's too oh, loud oh come on please the blast theme the theme song, song. album album yeah, yeah, that, that, now now my that, brain's that, melting as well the drop. Yeah, the, the, yeah. <laughs> if i play the the fucking so entrance music for the Soviet it's nikita oh khrushchev God. fan cam <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up, up. Oh, I did see it. I did see it. Che fan cam. Um. Okay. We, yeah, we do it. We do it for the. We do it for the hogs. We do. Um, we do. That's why yeah, we're. Yeah. Uh, oh, what the what fuck damn, was Jesus. That? Oh, fucking. What the fucking. Are we under fucking attack? What the fuck? I'm gonna punch you in the. I'm gonna punch you in the face. That was, that was, that was boat not, a third. That was not. Exploded it up. That was not. What? Come on. You have a mute button. Dude. Oh, I, yeah, the sneeze came up quickly on me. <laughs> What was that? Jesus oh, Christ! That wasn't a sneeze. That was like your kidney coming Exorcism? out of your larynx. You, you, oh you, my God! You, you got to get in the tendency. You got to get in the camp. You got to get in the club with the Soviet Union. Which yes, means you can sneeze the, that loud. The, the Soviet Union wants three things from you. The third one is on the next slide after this, but yeah. it, wants, it wants to build a huge brutalist embassy in the shape of a sword plunged into oh, the it's middle of Havana. so cool. Um, so yes. good. Which is sick. Um, good. Yes, I want this. It, it wants, I saw it in person. It's exactly as cool as you think it is. It, want, like, from it, looking at it wants submarine bases. Um, yes, and, I want that as well. And this means we have a Cuba, submarine base. Cuba exists in the mind of a generation of Soviets who did their national service in the Navy as the place that you had shore leave saw black people for the first time ever and possibly had a like intriguing mind opening sexual experience that you then took back to your depressive shitty country and oh, just masturbated you. about for the rest of your life <laughs> it is the gooch. so easy <laughs> Thumbs of the gooch, yeah. it is so Alice, easy I'm to find real. like soviet like retro <laughs> soviet Cuba themed porn, right? The whole country <laughs> got a complex about Cuban women off of this shit. Like I'm not I'm even be real joking. with you, Alice. Yeah. Um I I we were at the civil defense um uh department um and there was like a sub lieutenant whose name was like Ivan and looked extremely Slavic, and that was my first thought. Prefer, um, right, prefer Dom lieutenants, but uh, yeah, so <laughs> sort of a sort of a sort of an underground Soviet submarine base goon cave, yeah, as opposed to yeah. Dom <laughs> there, yes, there, 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 there are a bunch you. of like Russo Cubans running around who who were born in like the you know sixties, seventies, eighties. Of well, speaking of this. warm, uh, speaking of warm Soviet Cuban relations, uh, I mean, this relations. is like the thing. Like, if if you are in the Soviet military, right, most of the places you will get sent, you can go to Afghanistan and get shot at. You can go to like Siberia I'm and shovel a snow. Snake coffin, or right. you can go to fucking Cuba. Where everybody have a keep, good time. Yeah, we're, we're on vacation, uh, sort of beach episode of being in national service, uh, <laughs> yes. where everyone keeps giving you like so- socialist fraternal kisses. Uh, mm. Yeah, you show up, uh, Maria invites you out to the hills with a bottle of wine. Um, uh, I, I do also want to say, like, speaking of warm uh, uh, Cuban and Soviet relationships, like, initially the Soviets are like, yeah, these people are fucking clowns and like, they're never going to win, they're never going to succeed, and they don't want to support the revolution at all until it wins. And then they're, you know, they realize that they're sort of hating from outside the club in Latin America, um, and that if 
Cuba goes down because of American intervention, it's going to look bad for the Soviets. So they're like, fuck, okay. Um, like, they literally uh, are like, oh, okay, this is a corruption of Marxist-Leninist ideology, which it's like, no. Have you even read Marxist-Leninist ideology, technically, even the way we <laughs> slam a car is door is fascist? <laughs> yeah. Um, also, one thing I wanted to say about the submarines really quickly is that that's why so Soy Cuba is shot the way it is shot, if you watch it. It looks that way because they used Soviet naval infrared film that they had from the submarines being there. Oh, so nice. That's cool. all very cool. You should watch it. It's so good. It's got like so many unbroken, like one take shots that are That's really fucking cool. impossible. I, to do. I, I, I take some like still photography on. I have a little cache of Soviet infrared film, actually. Um, yeah. So you're just like uh, fucking what was his face? Did, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, they have a really great shot of like a student protester has been shot and killed by the Batista regime and so his coffin is being pulled through the crowd and then the camera goes up the side of a building uh in through a cigar factory that's on the top floor of that building as a man in that factory pulls out a um a Cuban flag and then drapes it off the side of the building and lets it go and we follow that flag again at the third floor going out over the crowd that's all in one take like they had to like strap a guy to a crane it was incredible um watch the movie so the they did 10,000 other shots that didn't make it in, I assume. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I hope so. Um, so, uh, Very next... serious film with just some guy saying, we'll fix it in post over this uh, <laughs> poor young man. Oh, and also they have, like, in that, in that rooftop party scene that was in the earlier slide, they have, like, guys who are doing, uh, like, Americans, and obviously the whitest person you can find is going to be, like, the Russian guys who are there. So they have, like... I am big capitalist guy from uh, New York City. Do you want to go <laughs> ride, baby? Uh, I, I love to be hiring prostitutes or whatever. Um, <laughs> so the us? third thing is uh, Azucar, um, uh, which is the, the Khrushchev is happy to like give you shit as long as the, you are exporting sugar and tobacco and uh all sorts of shit to Meet the rest the of the new eat. export boss yes. yes um and uh not to be like maoist about this but God. like same <laughs> as the old export boss <laughs> yeah. uh cultural uh, soviet imperialism um mm -hmm. is uh is uh, sort of evident here in some ways um so that's just that's Celia cruz by the way that's that's our catchphrase it's a super but anyway <laughs> Um, so that's where we're at. Um, the Cuba is like, okay, well, fuck the US. We're going to export to the Soviet Union. Uh, they're going to give us shit. We're going to be really happy and nothing is going to go wrong. We're going to get, get, Ru we're gonna get Russian Dutch disease. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. All right. Don't mess with the. <laughs> Unless you want to get the. <laughs> Does anyone have more barbiturates? Oh, right <laughs> oh, Earth Rider. <laughs> Thank All you right. for the great. Likes. Please don't our, ask our, what happened to Rose Kennedy. Our, so, our other Catholic president. <laughs> so. A tranked up Irishman hits the podcast. <laughs> uh, this fucking and, guy. Mm. And let me be clear. You know, um, the tranked up Irishman is the bane of the Cuban people. Um, <laughs> yeah. So on the left... William um, Randolph Hearst. Uh, yeah. John F. Kennedy. Um, <laughs> we're going to start with John F. Kennedy as the first tranked up uh, Irishman to really like come along and fuck everything up. Um, and so there he is. Um, at, by the way, when I say tranked up, that's a matter of historical record that that man was on more painkillers than like. Oh, I know. Uh, I know. Yeah, he was I running, know, he's been running a clinic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, see our previous is like if you took Kennedy and got rid of the fun vices. Yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, or the charisma, or the hair. What's really funny is that uh, way older. But both both the U.S. and the Soviet Union are very worried about Cuba, um, and part of the reason why the Cuban Missile Crisis develops the way that it does is obviously. I think most people, especially most people on the left, are aware of the fact that the CIA conducted like years, decades of uh, like terrorism and assassination and sabotage. Uh, both within Cuba and without Cuba, aimed at Cuba, um, and JFK sort of like inherited this from Eisenhower and like double and triple. I thought down it was a this. great idea, right? Yeah, but and also, we weren't going but, too far enough. Yeah, right. but also 
the USSR was scared that the Cubans were going to turn Maoists, and so the whole time they're sort of like concerned about like you know Fidel sort of eyeing China and being like, listen, no, we're 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 your guys. We're your guys on this. Should have been worried about else. Peru. But yeah, Gonzalo no thought. I mean, mm, you know, uh, yeah. on the right. By the way, uh, speaking of the Cuban Missile Crisis, <laughs> which is going to be the slide, like dead dogs. Um, uh, <laughs> so on the on the right, um, that is a photo that I want to say my comrade Nina took. Um, that is of the memorial for the Cuban Missile Crisis, or like the the open air museum. Rather, oh, man, did, they, um, did they let him keep one? Those are like the rockets. They just have. Oh my like, god. I mean, they don't have a warhead in them, but like they have that's oh, that's a plane wow. on the I, left. Um, there's a, a couple of ICBMs and they're just sitting out there. Mm -hmm. um, this is on the way to the environmental ministry, by the way. I will, um, I will say that, so. <laughs> that's fun. They let him keep one. <laughs> yeah. Yes, no, I, I, I will say that um, as, as far as these things go, um, Fidel did later say that like had the soviets given him launch authority and he was telling them this at the time too uh he would have just launched on the u.s first and let yeah, he cuba was going be, maoist yeah and, and let cuba be a sort of like uh you know just take the hit for removing the hated americans from the face of the earth which... He was uh, striking at settler colonial America. Yeah, he had read um, Jay Sakai's <laughs> Settlers and was determined yeah. to sort of like uh, put an end to the greater Satan. Um, the J stands for Jose. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, the, the the Cuban Missile Crisis happens. The Bay of Pigs. Well, Alice, happens. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get uh, ref refresh my mojito while you, because uh, I'm, I, you're gonna do this way better than me on okay, the, okay. the I'm, Cuban I'm, Missile Crisis. I, I, I'm, I'm really not. So, so uh, the Americans are trying to station uh, nuclear missiles in in Turkey and Italy. Um, it, in order to like have um, more convincing first strike capability against the Soviets, um, which leads Khrushchev to put nuclear weapons on Cuba. Um, since both of these are sort of like geographically in the backyard for short and medium range ballistic missiles, um, and you know, uh, since even even more than submarines, this is a situation where like you have zero warning before the White House is simply vaporized. Um, Kennedy does not appreciate this. And in particular, the, the US military really do not appreciate this. Okay, Only back. we can do that. You can't yeah. do that. Only we can do exactly. that. I almost throw him a love, the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, almost throws in a lovely coup over it. Yes, genuinely, because they they want to go in and disarm uh, the, the, the sort of the missile sites in Cuba uh, ahead of time. Um, to be fair, what would we have lost if they launched? Miami. I mean... <laughs> All Cubans already. Possibly Washington. Um, possibly... So a, much, a, better, a, so much the better for water. it. It fucking sucks. <laughs> I, uh, I'm reminded of a Mao quote here, uh, where a guy from the Italian Communist Party said... Uh, oh, I remember this. Are, are you aware that in a, in a nuclear war, uh, you know, every Italian would be killed? Every Italian Communist? And Mao says, well, what makes you think Italians are so important to the revolution? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> yeah, so, so th this is ultimately uh, resolved by means of... Uh, All Italian culture is derived from Chinese culture anyway. Spaghetti? That's true. A Come paper? On. A strict yeah. powder, a <laughs> yeah. stricter blockade on Soviet ships that are, are going to be bringing the the weapons and the technicians. Uh, by the way, there are at this point on Cuba, uh, like Soviet guys driving the like TELs, the like launches around, and people are noticing the fact that there are these massive missile launches getting stuck and lost and like snapping the edges off of buildings and like tiny like villages that. where they're driving them around. Like like the big ones with like a million wheels. They're just yeah, so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah genuinely. <laughs> going out to like Cien Fuegos or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, there's yeah, just exactly. like in the woods, there's just an active nuclear weapon. Yeah, trying, <laughs> to, like, there. Um, trying to go through a McDonald's drive through, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the way this ultimately resolves is there is a negotiated settlement where the US pulls its, its missiles out and the Soviets do too. Um, and Castro doesn't get to launch on Kennedy, but he does get to kill him. Um, this, uh, <laughs> listen, listen, <laughs> listen to our episode on the JFK assassination to find out why that's a joke on my part. But I'm not sure anyone else on this podcast will agree with me that it was. <laughs> um, well, also, like to be clear, it is because Fidel, like my dad, um, 
is a staunch advocate for Texas style barbecue, whereas JFK openly praised um, uh, North Carolina style barbecue. Um, and that's why he was assassinated. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you want to link his death to Cuba, the most plausible version of it is the Bay of Pigs, where he, like, the, the CIA armed and trained a bunch of weird fascist Cuban exiles, but I repeat myself. Um, and then <laughs> and then went, you know, slapped them all in the ass and went, okay, guys, go and overthrow Castro. They landed and then uh, immediately fucked it and weren't able to demonstrate the sort of perseverance that Fidel had by fleeing into the mountains, but instead went and cried to the Americans for air support, which they didn't get, uh, and were all massacred or thrown back into the ocean. Which Bay, Bay of Pigs. What do you do with pigs? You barbecue them. Mm-hmm, what do yeah. you put on That's barbecue? Right. Barbecue sauce. It's right? all coming That's together. It's all connected. <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> oh my god. And, and North Carolina barbecue, according to my dad, is primarily pork and v- mustard based. Yeah, and <laughs> North Carolina has a big bay on which wow. you might barbecue the pigs. Oh my God. Okay, my hyoid bone is intact. I am not having dark <laughs> thoughts because I take the medication. <laughs> Through the looking glass here, people. I was Googling the Falklands and real estate in the Falklands, but not because I want to move there really that much. So, mm. um, but so, uh, but so this embargo on Cuba, that like the new stricter embargo that like prevented any Soviet weapons from getting in, that persists beyond the missile crisis in a less sort of um, overtly patrolled form. Uh, next slide, yeah. please. Um, so what you see here um, is you see the Hotel Nacional. Um, the, these are photos that I took yeah. when we went into the lobby just to check it out. Um, I the, like the big, uh, big wooden beams here. These are too. nice. Oh, yeah. oh, dude, it's so sick. And then also like on the, on the top floor, um, uh, there is a Capablanca, a Raul Capablanca themed bar um, Ooh, that has like live nice. music. So you can just go up and you can listen to live music. It would music. be so funny for us to do our first live show outside the US in Cuba. Cuba. Yeah, my dad, yeah, that'd be really funny. My dad you, wants to see us do it. I can tell you that right now. You maybe could. Well, we'll get into maybe you could, but yeah, that's possible. I think, I think you know, National Convention in Havana. But um, <laughs> uh, so that. That's the hotel where Meyer Lansky um, and or that's that's the hotel where Meyer Lansky would stay. That's the hotel that Santo Traficante ran his uh, empire out of. And it's the hotel where the Havana conference was. Yeah, every single so person who has been anywhere near this hotel all assassinated JFK individually. It it's is also how, state You know, owned. they have these these like fraught uh, these these fraught uh, positions of international conflict. The nice hotel always stays. Mm, it's like this exactly. and like the hotel in. Uh, uh, Kabul. Yeah, the international. Uh, There's a, a yeah. bunch of really interesting long reads about that. Well, the thing is, like the Cubans, the Cubans um, are still happy to do tourism shit, um, and so, like, I mean, after the revolution and now, so these hotels are just nationalized, and um, and the casinos are like shut down, but you know they're converted to hotels where possible, and this hotel is nationalized, so we could not stay there. <clears throat> and what we're going to go into is we're going to talk about the mechanic of the embargo. Because after 1962, uh, the U.S. Congress passed the Cuban Asset Control Regulations. Um, so, and basically, what that means is that the Treasury's uh, Office of Foreign Asset Control gets jurisdiction to enforce and amend that um, at the direction of the president and apply whatever new restrictions the president deems necessary, and allows the Office of Foreign Asset Control to start implementing penalties for U.S. nationals who are, um, you know, who are dealing in any real capacity in Cuba. The embargo works like this. If you are a subject to U.S. jurisdiction, so if you're a U.S. national, you can't deal in any property in which Cuba or a Cuban national has an interest. You can't make payments, transfers, withdrawals with any such entities without a Treasury Department license. And it can apply to individuals doing travel-related expenditures. Applying for a license for podcast live show. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, oh, well, I'd love know, to see the State Department dweebs get their hands on this one. Okay, <laughs> so Nora Jones recently did, or recently was going to do like a live show in Cuba, a four-day like series of shows in Cuba, and then like that was canceled because of interference from the Treasury, I think? I don't know, it was weird. Um, but uh, we'll get into how she's able to do that in a second. But... Um, Travel-related expenditures are also included in this sometimes, so it can make it like 
near impossible to go to Cuba. Um, we'll get into how I was able to do that and how DSA was able to do that later. But um, Kennedy did actually make it illegal for you to go to Cuba for a while. Uh, and there was activism among sort of left wing Cuban Americans in the Brigada Antonio Maceo um, and various other orgs about like being allowed to return to Cuba. There was a group of 55 who wanted to return uh, and, you know, did activism around that. So um, the the thing about that is that that means that you as an American cannot exchange money in order to stay at this hotel. Right. Because it is owned by the Cuban government. Uh, even though it's very nice and also much cheaper than the hotel that we stayed at, which is still pretty cheap, even for the hotel what, that it was. What if you exchange the currency for a different currency? Well, uh, you have to do that entirely in cash because the Jesus um, Christ. So, like, okay. that's the thing. Like, Cuba is essentially statutorily prohibited from dealing in any sort of like U.S. credit, right? Like, no, you can't be. Ex We'll get into this a little bit later, but like they cannot buy agricultural goods with credit the way that every single other country, except for like Iran and North Korea, et cetera, can. Hmm, they have to right. buy it in cash, which does not have to be just U.S. dollars, but it includes like pounds and euros and all that. Um, and so uh, a large portion of like the Cuban tourist economy is based around extracting foreign currencies and exchanging them for worthless pesos, which are very cool. And I got a bunch of because they look nice. Um, so we'll get into that in a second, but uh, or later in the in the slide. But um, there's also restrictions on purchasing Cuban goods if the initial raw product was made in Cuba and then processed elsewhere. So if the like Cubans ship sugar to Mexico and it's refined in Mexico and then that sugar is sold as a product, it can't be sold in the United States. Or, for example, if like they sell uh, molasses to be distilled as rum in elsewhere, it can't then be sold to like Puerto Rico or some shit like that, which is a part of the United States nominally. Um, and so that also applies in reverse. So if a product is more than 10% US made, it can't be sent to Cuba. Um, and that's why the plane thing was funny, because on the plane, they announced that it was 100% Brazilian made. <laughs> And bro, so, once like, again, yeah. the, the the proletarian um, airliner, you know? Yeah, yes. thank you. Well, I, I mean, we flew American. Brazil but, um, numero uno, campeão we, we, do we mundo. Flew American, but... yeah. We flew American, sorry. <laughs> or at least I flew American, some people flew uh, United. But like, so the doesn't, flight... Uh, doesn't Cubana de Aviation still roster a bunch of the big Soviet wide bodies? <laughs> yeah, they have a bunch of uh, Ilyushin... Um... They also have a big Soviet wide body. <laughs> uh, actually if you go to the if you go to the hotel or not the hotel the airport um you can see all the uh the cubana uh planes and they're like running like illusions with like the weird four engine arrangement in the back Ooh. um yeah it's it's pretty sick but so like the during covid uh and we were told this by you know government officials so you know grain of salt but like during covid the chinese chairman xi was going to send um uh, COVID aid to Cuba, which had an enormous shortage of oxygen. Um, and Cuba's always having shortages due to the embargo, but like especially during COVID, there was a shortage of oxygen. And um, so the Chinese loaded up like 10 747s full of just COVID supplies. And then the US government was like, you cannot land those planes in Cuba. Should have had embryos, you know? Well, right. But like, you're not oh. allowed to do that. Fuck you. And so those yeah. sat grounded in Beijing. I mean, you know, you could just fly them over there and then, you know, we haven't left one up there yet. Uh, much much, much <laughs> like the international humanitarian law stuff, you fuck around with this and there's uh, weird consequences in places, you know? Well, and people died. Like, that's the thing. People died mm. um, because they didn't have, they weren't able to access. And we'll get into more people dying for various other things. But like the, the embargo is a disaster of political engineering, right? It is a disaster of trying to engineer a particular situation in the uh, governing of an island, of trying to engineer um, a particular process, of trying to have control over Latin America, and also fundamentally a disaster of resource allocation and economic function. So the Cuban government has a lot of difficulty importing basic goods. Um, and while we were in Cuba, there was a tanker offshore for three days. 
that we could see from the hotel. And we were like, what the fuck is up with this tanker? And they're like, yeah, so that's waiting for a transaction to clear. And that's got oil on it. And it's stuck there until that transaction clears. And when it does, we'll be able to, you know, but that transaction has to be made in cash or like for like in resources. Um, and various other countries are subject to these restrictions, and we'll get into why. But like, for example, Iran or North Korea or various other countries, they have a neighbor, right? They have like a various neighbors who are not within the U.S. sphere of influence and who share a land border. Hmm. So they are able to get things from Turkey, uh, where Iran can like use gold and oil to like buy things, or China, which will just fund North Korea. Cuba has nothing. There is nothing around for many, many miles. And it's so expensive to get things shipped in from China, where, you know, that is one of the places that you can get things shipped in from. Um, so next slide. As a bit of a palate cleanser, that's also what leads to, like, the 50s car situation. This is a photo I took of uh, some uh, cars outside our hotel. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, th this one's cool. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, it's six fuck. Got the, got the white walls. You got cars that are two colors. Amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you yeah. can do and that, it's also, just the color is black now. You get the floating roof thing that the car manufacturers insist on giving us. Yeah. Ugh. Precisely. So it, I know. I'm why sad. am I saying precisely so much? Um, Limiting so, factor. I, yeah. Mm. All of the internal parts have basically... I, I believe my mom said, uh, so blame my mom if this is wrong. Um, don't blame her. Never blame her. your mom for anything. I, I love my mom lady. so much. My parents are great. Um, uh, hi, parents who will inevitably listen to this podcast. Hi, dad. Hi, mom. Um, the ins they're called on main dress, um, between almonds. So they've got like a streamlined because they've got that streamlined shape to them. Uh, the entire interior has been replaced with East German or Czech or Korean or Japanese. Chinese parts. So, so they have some of this stuff isn't made of car parts. Some of this is made out of like weird thrown together stuff too, like. Some of the repairs that you see done made on of these, asbestos, I think, is one of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Things I gotta just do, literally, which is you, can, you can keep these things running with like string and like yeah. baggies and shit. Yeah, and also like these were back when cars were like easy Terrible. to repair because they made sense. Yeah, yeah. Yep. but they're <laughs> also designed to last for one year at most. <laughs> so built out of and that's like actually, steel, you yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing I want to highlight that like the the overall story here is of a nation and a people who are just incredibly fucking resourceful mm. and who have made who have been able to do so much with so little and have been able to like carve out a life for themselves in spite of unending horrors inflicted upon them by you know the united states and its cronies i was very moved by what the sort of the dedication and the you know, the the spirit and et cetera that I saw there. And we'll get into that when we get into the hospital. But mm. uh, so I, I know everyone's yeah. looking at the cars here. I'm looking at this apartment building on the, the Piloti. Um, you got the fun colored blocks. Um, yeah. You got the good window air, uh, non window air conditioners. You got the, the mini split system. Uh, yeah, that's actually a very tall building, too. It's uh, it's, just, you know, prefab housing, um, uh, Soviet style all over. Havana. We don't we don't have the technology to do this in the United States. No. Well, and, okay, so you want to talk about differences? Soviet aid, you know? Yeah. We want to talk about differences. All good bridge I, episode, baby. <laughs> I didn't see. I did not see homelessness. In, I live in Los Angeles. Okay, I did not see homelessness in Havana because even though the houses can be shitty because they're not well maintained because you don't have the resources, you don't literally you have a paint shortage. They make an effort to ensure that you are housed. And um, my friend Tal, who also listens to this podcast, hi Tal, um, uh, was in Cuba recently and his guide was like, the dirty secret is that some people have alcoholism and we take them to the state rehab and they run through the program, but then they go back to their families and they relapse and they're back out on the street. And she said this like it was like, oh, well, in America, that wouldn't happen. And Tal, who also listened to LA, was like, Haha, yeah. Um, uh, because like <laughs> you know there's still like at least like a base level acknowledgement of like people need a place to live but anyway um, next slide please hey this is what I was talking okay. about with the cool fouls and th yeah, that's, also a, that's a that's an incredible mix of uh, so you've got like AK pattern rifle 
uh, an M16 with like the old handguard, not the old old handguard, but like the the sort of uh, uh, middle one, and and the foul. That's it. amazing, incredible. So we're talking about we're talking about getting um, uh, you know so we're talking about sort of like 1960s and 1970s women. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I have 1970s women dysphoria, and then I need an assault rifle. <laughs> I oh, this. I hear you. I just needed an assault rifle. <laughs> in the notes, um, left Sandinista in Nicaragua, placed there specifically to make Alice say, I think I hove COVID. Uh, <laughs> Tango COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, creo que tengo COVID. Um, so Cuba has a second layer of economic sanctions imposed. So the first layer are sort of under the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917. Cool. Yeah. Um, which was World War One, German Empire. The naked, like, the, uh, sphere of influence stuff, yeah. Exactly. So the second round is under something called the State Sponsors of Terror List, which is the second naked sphere of influence shit. Hmm, because, um, because glorious episodes in Cuban military history, uh, sending fighters to Angola to fight yes. against the apartheid South Africans. Um, and, and also to help the MPLA, uh, mm. the left wing uh, and now ruling party of Angola fight UNITA, which was backed by the sort of by NATO and that whole establishment. Mm -hmm. um, and then so the Sandinistas as mm -hmm. well on the left, um, very critical support. Um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and the Sick top double right denim, though. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, yeah. that that woman's like she's serving cunt. Um, and the oh, it, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's I'm gay. I'm allowed to say that. Um... No, I, my mom's gonna ask me what that means, and mom, I'm not oh. gonna explain it. Look it up on Twitter. Uh, Liam's mom serving cunt is when somebody's like got a really like cool little outfit, um, and they're like owning it, and they look really like cool and and like hot. And yeah, der it derives from drag balls. Um, uh, you, you should watch Paris is Burning. Also, hi Liam's mom. I hope you're I hope you're doing well. Uh, so top right is uh, FARC, which is even more. Oh, even boy. more. Yeah, the, the support's getting more and more critical as the number of dead dogs is rising. <laughs> um, also, is the number of like cocaine trafficking. Listen, and is it incidents. illegal to to both liberate your country from capitalism and help the gringos have a little party? And the answer uh, is no. yes, extremely. It is so well, yeah. illegal for you yeah. to do that. It is also illegal to kill babies and children. So oh, that's listen, you can't thing. you can't make an international cocaine trafficking empire without <laughs> breaking a few eggs, right? So at yes. the time, FARC was not that way. So uh, it changed a little bit. So yeah. So bottom so right is Angola. As the kind of like revolutionary McKinsey. You know, I think we can optimize your processes here. <laughs> uh, somebody should hire me to do that. But um, bottom right is uh, Cuban fighters in Angola. Um, Cuba has always viewed itself in a sort of internationalist lens. Mm. Um, hence tensions with the Soviet Union, and would basically like provide financial aid and soldiers for insurgent movements uh, that aligned with Cuba's values. They did really so well at times, particularly in Angola. Battle of right. Canavale. Exactly, because they are experienced like sort of uh, jungle guerrilla fighters. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, um, and, you know, I, I think largely this is a legacy of real uh, good in a lot of ways, but it is also put Cuba on the state sponsors of terror list. So what does that mean? Okay, so you can't get weapons at all. You okay. can't get any dual use exports. So anything that could be used for a military. Uh, uh, yeah, the, so the, the ITAR stuff is fucking intense, by the way. You, there's a lot of just regular ass stuff that it turns out you can't export from the US because it's on arms control lists. Yeah, I mean, the thing about dual use where one of the uses is military is that's basically everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't have a truck because technicals. Um, you, can't, you can't have a truck. You can't have like I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can have like a bale of cardboard for recycling. I can. Oh think wait, of you know what? Throw that at someone. Yeah. You know what yeah, has military throw it at usage? You know what has military usage? Uh, ammonia fertilizer. Mm. Not mm. like you need any of uh, that for your uh, for your large scale industrial agriculture. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, Prohibition on economic assistance by the United States. Who cares? Fuck the gringos, fuck the Yankees, etc. Mm, sure, weren't getting that. But prohibition on getting World Bank loans or any international financial institutional help because Seems it requires the U.S. No, because it requires the U.S. to oppose that in any sense. So not good. 
again, fuck the Yankee, fuck the Gringo. Um, ban on financial transactions without a license, so that from the Treasury, uh, you are not allowed to have visa waivers of any kinds, and you get a revocation of diplomatic immunity. Um, so for like your leaders, which allows people to bring suits against um, various governments on that list. Mm. So it is hugely impactful to Cuba. Um, this is also true of various other countries. Hey, I think right hey, now, hear me out. Take all of those off of Cuba, put them all on Israel. Thanks for coming. I agree, 100%. Um, but also, like, currently, I think it's Cuba, Iran, and North Korea are on that list. Mm. Syria, oh, Yemen just got added to that list. Oh, cool. Um, be because of their uh, principled uh, uh, actions to stop the genocide in Gaza. So again, uh, fuck Joe Biden. Um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, man, the comments on this are going to be great. But I, um, I simply don't care. <laughs> I know, but um, so the it's immensely destabilizing. Uh, I think also Syria was on there for a little bit. It may not be anymore, but um, it's thankfully they have their friends in the Soviet Union. I've heard of uh, those guys. Next slide, please. Slide. Uh. <laughs> Ustedes, <laughs> Ustedes han oído de este nuevo videojuego trabajadores y recursos República Soviética? <laughs> um, and I have in the notes. Um, Oh no, mi economía. I just said that Italianly. Oh no, mi economía. Estoy sufriendo de locura cerebral después de como cinco horas de PowerPoint. Um, so uh, I did actually genuinely spent three hours in Workers and Resources Soviet Republic and the Steam Workshop making this shot. So I hope you all appreciate it. I do. Um, I really do. I'm just. I'm just. Uh, I'm on my first playthrough in realistic mode where I haven't had to cheat in money. Oh wow! It only, I yeah, it only took about a billion hours of gameplay to get good at the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking up on like the easiest possible mode. Like this is all for show because all of these people are unemployed. <laughs> Look, listen, they you don't. Have to you do. have to assign them jobs from their housing, and it's so unintuitive. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I, no, I, that's I, dumb. You as don't shit. always have to do that. Um, the trick, what you want to do to start out with, is everyone okay. works in a sweatshop. Build the clothing factory <laughs> first. A lot of good men died in right. those sweatshops. Like real right. life. <laughs> and then, and then, once you're making money from that, you build the fabric sweatshop where they make the fabric that goes into the clothing sweatshop. Oh, right? well, fuck. Okay. okay, and but that's going to produce extra fabric, so you export that and the clothing. Both those are pretty high value goods that run. You know, they're made from like crops and like chemicals. You're still so going to have to import chemicals, which is the expensive. first thing but. I did was build a coal power plant and a university so that I could get prefab housing for this shot, because a lot of what's in this shot is prefab housing. And then I built 30 different tourist locations, and this is a East Cuba map, uh, so thank you to the modder who made that, and also all of these beautiful Latin American buildings. Um, so, uh, Dev for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic, please um, add more options for Cuba and Slash. They, ha they have talked Caribbean. about it. That's one of the things that they want to do is like DLC oh, is like a different. Yeah, do like a, tro like a tropical map. Yeah. yeah well, um, yeah, they're gonna have one that's Cuba, Cuba and they're gonna have one that's Iran. Um, I'm so happy with that. I please, I need that <laughs> cover, immediately. Cover so. every single part of the sanctions list. I want my North yeah, Korean right. map. Yeah, actually, I need a North like, Korean cool map. Shit. I want like I would love to see like a Chinese map. Uh, Afghanistan map. Actually, mm -hmm. someone just uploaded an Afghanistan map. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's so fun. Then... It, the idea is you only have one small custom st station. That's so That's good. it. Yeah, and almost so no good. resources. Okay, <laughs> work so, is no having... <laughs> yeah. Speaking Republic. of having resources, speaking of having, speaking of having one custom station and not that many resources. Uh, Fidel has a problem, um, which is that Cuba is an economy based around sugar exports and tourism. Um, and the thing that that creates is a whole class of peasant farmers. And <coughs> Fidel went around the United States and he's like, damn, what if we have that shit? Um, and it commences what's called an import subsidized industrialization plan, where you are trying to build domestic industry. Yeah, by you, go, you go to the Soviets and you're like, make us more like you. Yeah, you go to the Soviets yes. and you're like, give me the shit that I need to make a car, uh, to make like car factories. And the Soviets are like, easy, we will teach you how to make these snow factories that we have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's largely dependent on the one, Soviet. Step one, achieve blood alcohol content of 0. <laughs> 0.999. Uh, 
This will See, be easy for what, you because you make what, incredible rum. It's called the Havana Club. It's very it's smooth. Too, costs two dollars USD for a double. It's 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 unfortunate this happened so early because now you can look on YouTube and an Indian man will teach you how to do it. Uh, <laughs> looking up the like how to balance my my country's economy tutorial. Yeah. Uh, number one, cash all those checks from the United States to give you the cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, it's dependent on the Soviet Union, as you might imagine, and the rest of the economic bloc being able to provide industrial capital, which doesn't really work in some ways. So, Cuba gets billions of dollars in subsidies from the Soviets to build, like, concrete prefab housing. Um, some of that is similar to what you will see here. Um, and also, uh, Cuba engages in things like large-scale literacy campaigns. So, Cuba actually has one of the highest literacy rates in the entire world, because it takes... Like it does strong education and it does all sorts of like it did um uh, la campaña de alfabetiz alfabetiza fucking Christ, I can't say it. Alfabetización. Tough word. Um uh the literacy campaign to like teach people out in the campo and whatnot. Um and as well as industrial development. So they're building like, you know, factories and shit uh as well as a biotech sector that even now is incredibly incredible yeah. you're, you're gonna learn to read and you're gonna work on cloning this cow and you're gonna build yes. universities you're gonna have these universities you're gonna nationalize them and you're gonna turn out like 86 doctors per hundred thousand people um, we're gonna we're, gonna we're gonna skip the food factory and go straight to ice cream factory <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean literally the ice cream factory is a really good example of doing this because the Cuban government invested in dairy farms and, you know, the, the industrial machines. Cow. Yeah. Refrigerator. <laughs> That's an IWW slogan. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I want the IWW one big cow patch very badly. Uh, yeah, I think that would be, I think it'd be really good. Um, uh, refrigerated trucks, all that. And then like the parlors themselves. So uh, they built an extremely educated middle class, a doctor corps, which they have one of the highest doctor to, person ratios of any country and they send doctors abroad i know doctor to person um, is like a, a, a thing but it implies <laughs> that they are distinct classes which i appreciate yeah. <laughs> doctors are a different species of animal yeah, i believe this to be true <laughs> you cut them up with the syringes there um Ew. instead of organs um so income inequality goes down and a thing that's really important to point out is that it goes down really strongly in favor of black cubans black cubans benefit really heavily from this revolution because they there's an active attempt to eliminate racism and to eliminate like sort of the economic situation that puts black cubans in this position um and at the same time they're still doing exports right and we'll get to that in a second but um they start providing foreign aid and military support to other countries like Angola and Nicaragua, which you talked about. Cuba joins Comic-Con, which is the not the, convention, the one that happens yeah. in San Diego, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. but <laughs> rather the council for fucking whatever. It's the Soviet economic sphere. And his class is a developing country within it, so that means that they get oil at a preferential rate. And they don't need all the oil they get, so what do they do? They refine it, and then they sell it elsewhere. Um, oh, yeah. Because they got it at such a good rate, they're able to generate a profit on that. Oh, I still got at those refineries they nationalized earlier, too. Exactly. So, yeah. And, yeah. and they're still getting sugar and rum and, you know, tobacco and minerals and all that and exporting them. Uh, and I have here, unfortunately, this is the Maoist sector of the episode. So um, next slide, please. OK. Incredible, um, incredible dudes here. I, I was about these to are say all the outfits I would wear. You got, the, um, you got the new Soviet men and women here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Cuba still like tourism is very strong, and like if you look at where this is, this is not far from where that photo is. This is in that photo. This is like in the Vedado. Um, I see, I see this the guy has out. a powerful yeah. stash on this man. Yeah, yeah. incredible you know, hairline on the guy in white pants. Oh yeah, you yeah. go to Cuba, you have rum, you have cigar, you have a good time. You go back to you see what I mean oh, about Cuba existing <laughs> in the sort of Soviet imagination. Um, sure. Um, so it's good for a lot of people. Uh, it's good for Soviet Union's tourists. Uh, it's especially good for black Cubans. It's not so good for gay Cubans at the time, um, because if you are gay or you are a sort of like this a hippie or any other sort of weird uh, no subculture, rights. no rights, uh, you literally get put in a uh, like work camp situation. Um, 
would now, do, that's, do not love they, a work camp situation. Now, no, to be clear, they, they, they send you to, to the gay steel mill. I, <laughs> well, I mean, rest. kind of. They send you to the gay sugar plantation. Um, ah, uh, not so good. I do want to. I do want to be like even handed here to be like, yeah, that fucking sucks. <laughs> but also, like, I think it's thirty thousand people total were subjected to that. Um, and it wasn't like a sort of like you know, gulag situation, like you were allowed to leave and visit your family after a certain amount of time. But like, it's not great. And Cuba recognizes this as a sort of historic error. Fidel said as much. Uh, the Constitution currently guarantees uh, gay marriage, gay rights to adoption, trans rights, etc. As a result of the work of Mariela Castro, who is Fidel's niece and Raul's daughter, who we met while we were there. Um, really, really cool stuff. And she wrote a book that I am reading at the moment about how she managed to sort of like uh, build this campaign for trans rights that led to that being included in the Constitution. Mm. Things have changed, but at the time, uh, Fidel kind of thinks that you can move straight to the communist phase because he's like, we're ready, we're there. It's based on it's vibes, you know, things are going yeah. well. We got all these guys um, with big mustaches walking around. Right, so yes. next slide, please. The bigger the mustache, the more communist it is. That's right. I agree. It's true. So, okay, so the Soviets are like, we're going to mo motivate workers through monetary means. And Cuba's like, we're going to yeah, motivate... The, the guy who wins first prize in this gets a vacation to Cuba. And yeah. Cuba's like, we're going to motivate workers with revolutionary fervor. So in 1968, the government takes steps to nationalize the remaining private businesses in Cuba, of which there are a few, and reorganize some sectors of the economy into, like, brigades. Um, and I have here in the notes a inside joke that uh, I have with Alice that I'm not going to read out on the pod. <laughs> Alice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, very good. Yep. Uh, comrades, your efforts are an inspiration. The export-related nature the, of Cuba's You received economy. the order of Lenin for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, posadism. Um, the export-related nature of Cuba's economy is important here when they start encouraging people, especially youths, to go out to the countryside, the campo, to do agricultural work. Um, and they decide that they're going to do what's called a safra de los diez millones. So the safra is like the heart, big harvest. And uh, diez millones means 10 million. Because they're going to make 10 million tons of sugar in 1970. I, I love um, the great taste of Maoism, you know? Uh, yes. Right. And again, again, like, you know, this is not necessarily unachievable, but it's a huge goal. And so they are like, we're going to bring everybody out to the campo. You're going to harvest sugar. And so students for a democratic society, oh, um, the SDS sends um, a, what's called the Venceremos Brigade um, of youths out to the countryside to help with this. So that's the left poster here. Todos a saludar a las brigadas vencedoras. Everyone will salute the, uh, the victorious brigades. Um, and uh, the middle uh, one says, where will we be on the 2nd of January? In the cane fields. And the one on the right says, everyone in the revolutionary offensive with Fidel. Um, SDS is also like very via a series of uh, sort of descending things, the precursor or to DSA. Um, so there was like a, I want to say a Maoist or a Trotskyite split or something. And then we got the normal people. But um, <laughs> they, 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 they turn into, uh, I want to say, yeah, there was a like whole bunch of other people. Precise, yeah, yeah. Liam, Liam probably knows more about this than I do because I just read the charts that tell me which caucuses to send from where. Um, so uh, they're gonna do this big safra and they're gonna export all this sugar. Um, and also like Cuba's such a big sugar producer that the embargo on Cuba did actually cause a rise in sugar prices globally. So this is not necessarily out of the realm of. Uh, you know, imagination. Um, so they make this, this does kind of sound like it sucks. It's like, all right, our it, big oh, socialist project is you're going to become a farmhand. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> and <laughs> what's that job after the revolution? Farm I'm going to be hand. real. Yep. It, no, farmhand. No, yeah. No, no. Give me coal miner. I want a coal miner. <laughs> no, you know, <laughs> it does suck. Get I'm, back I'm, in like, there. I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This does kind of suck, especially because it doesn't work. It makes 8.5 million tons of sugar, which is good. I mean, that's way more tons of sugar than I can organize a nation to produce. <laughs> but like, the all-time record is 7.2, right? So it's 
it does that, but it also causes a 20% decrease in economic activity in non-agricultural sectors. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, it's... Yeah. So, like, this is the so early... What, what if instead of Dutch disease, we gave ourselves Dutch disease too? Yeah. yeah. Sugar. <laughs> and so they're like, okay, so a bunch of people get fired. I think a guy commits suicide over this, just out oh. of shame. Um, it's sort of like a Japanese video game executive uh, route out. Um, and the state kind of like moves to something closer to the Soviet Union's Kosygin reforms, which is like decentralization and who gives a shit. But it's all fine because this will keep working forever because the Soviet Union is an adherent of Marxist Leninists, the immortal, the immortal science of Marxist science. Leninist yeah. <laughs> ideology, yes. and it's all going to be fine. And, you know, it's all going to. Uh, next slide. This mother Pizza Hut! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit! Oh, fuck! Oh, God. oh, oh, shit! Fuck! It all. Oh no! Uh, it's bad. It's all come um, tumbling down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on the twenty sixth of December, nineteen ninety one, the Soviet Union is dissolved in one of the greatest world historical crimes ever committed um putting us on the bad timeline and I, forever i still believe the bad timeline was when we didn't get the german revolution but like yeah. this is a uh, sort of close run thing too yeah mm -hmm. i'm gonna the ask timeline you this. can get worse mm. no i'm gonna ask you this seriously would you want to live in a world where the germans get to be extremely smug about having I done the revolution do live in a world where the germans get to be extremely smug it's about to say. Oh, fair. Okay. Um, also, they're, they're, uh, they're on the international stage saying that only they know how to do a genocide properly. <laughs> 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 well, Jesus and, and I mean, you know, I guess. Um, uh, also, uh, Roz, just FYI, I got an error that it can't save the local backup of my audio, but I have the local backup yeah, of my audio. Yeah, on account of the local and backup, okay, your yeah. audio is now 15,000 gigabytes, because we've well, been I've doing this for nine three, years. I've got three gigabytes free on one drive, I've got I'm 584 dying. free Master. on another, <laughs> and then 81 <laughs> on the next. Anyway, so we're on the bad timeline, um, and so... The problem with this is that the entire economy is kind of dependent on aid from the Soviet yeah. Union. You, like have, to, you have to invent one of the all-time euphemisms, right? Yes. yes. So next next slide. El periodo this is the especial. Euphemism. The special period. Yep. Uh, no, it's not just that. It's el periodo especial en tiempos de paz, which is a special period in peacetime. It's, it's um, like, hey, consider yourself <laughs> lucky. We could, there could be nukes flying around. Like He's basically doing war communism, right? Mm. So... Like, the Cubans had been prepared for something like this to happen um, because they had seen that the Soviets were pulling back. Um, while we met with Mariela, she alluded to the fact that they were basically faking military drills to keep Reagan thinking that the Soviets were going to intervene. Yeah, a bunch, a bunch of Cuban Cuba. guys yeah. running back and forth on the beach, shouting in Russian. Yes. <laughs> um, so, Cuba hyper-specializes in the export of various goods, still. And it uses that money to buy like other things that everybody can have a middle class life on. Um, but now all their buyers are dirt fucking poor because the entire Eastern Bloc was privatized thanks to, you know, the shock doctrine brigade. And they have no subsidies. And all of the country, the people that they can normally trade with are now conducting business in USD because there's not a fucking ruble that's worth anything anymore, which Cuba can't really deal in because it, it alone is under special restrictions. and. To top it all off, there's no fucking oil. Oh, you need that to run the stuff. Mm -hmm. To run so the combine harvesters and the tractors and all that other shit. And then, Roz, there's other things that you use oil for in agriculture? Oh, I, I mean fertilizer for one thing. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, Liam, there's oil things that you use for military purposes? Uh, fuel, let's see, Drive, production. Drives the tanks around. Drives the tanks, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, lubricants. Have gas. Uh, lubricants is a good one. Maintenance. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So all that goes away. Um, the and driest, have... least lubricated military <laughs> in the Western Hemisphere. Yeah. Wow. It's just like when I was in college. Should've, anyway, should have um... used uh, sealed <laughs> bearings. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah. Well, and and so like you are in the situation where you still have a little bit of oil, very tiny amount, but you have to ration it. Um, and you know, famine hits the country to a degree that you basically have only seen in one. Well, I mean, until recently, thanks to the, um, you know, the aggression of the Zionist state, you had pretty much really only seen in like the Dust Bowl or some shit like that. Like 
North Korea also gets hit really hard by a famine at the same period for the same reasons. But um, you, so there are riots, there's famine, there's starvation. Um, people try and leave on little barges. The oft quoted statement is that people were eating cats. And I don't want to repeat that. Like it's, you know, like it's completely true or it's, but like, that's the kind of level of desperation that we're at here. Mm-hmm. Um, and the sort of the, Cuba, the, the offer from the United States here is all you got to do is overthrow your government. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's what they always do. It doesn't seem to really work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right? I, mind There's you, wor- it probably doesn't help the fact that you, you see in Eastern Europe at this point, what it looks like when the U S government overthrows your government. Or, or helps to, which is you, you get shock doctrines. Um, yeah, which is that Bulgaria goes from being twelfth in the world in every leading indicator to being like eighty somethingth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so you get riots on the Malecon. They go back to horse-drawn carts, which I think I have a picture of somewhere. And do some more repression, I, you know, less rights. Uh, people get very into bikes. Um, so that's bottom left. Um, oh, yeah. They're sorry, bottom right. Well, that's that's um, that's like eco-friendly though. So. It is. It's we're doing eco socialism, Green New Deal. Um, bottom left, bottom left is uh, a a um, a raft going to Florida. Um, top left is a camel. Yes. Uh, coming. Up. So uh, I have some photos of this on the next slide, but I figured Roz would be really interested in this. Do you want to? So so this is uh, interesting. So uh, a camel here, and this is not the only place this sort of bus existed because these the Soviets actually built them. Uh, brand new uh, in a few areas, but a camel is essentially you have a semi truck and instead of a trailer on it that carries freight, you have a trailer on it that carries people. You know, it's got windows, Mm -hmm. it's got everything. Um, And this was one of these, they're they're a little bit cheaper to build than a real bus. I mean, you can see here, this is some kind of Tatra, I would assume. Uh, articulated bus here with guys hanging off the side. Uh, public transit in Havana was very, very crowded up until like the, uh, in, in up to and including the late eighties and early nineties. And one of the things about the Soviet union collapsing is that very late in the eighties, they actually sent over a delegation of Soviet engineers to build Havana, a good Soviet Metro, right? Oh. They were going to build a proper good Soviet Metro system for Havana you know, with the three lines in the Soviet triangle and everything, and the Soviet Union collapsed, and they couldn't even bring them back. Um, I'm <laughs> so upset about that. You because are the Havana metro is... exile. I yeah, genuinely... You've been, you've been that's the worst too. thing that happened as a result of the collapse of the Soviet Union. I'm going to be real. Like, I, like, Havana could so use a metro. Right now, they're having same, the same sort of fuel shortages, and people are like dozens deep waiting for the bus and the bus is incredibly crowded it's not quite the top right photo which is the other um but like it's well, that's, there. that's another thing is like uh as opposed to a lot of uh communist countries which sort of had a deep focus on electrification early like you go to the like russia or you go to ukraine or you mm-hmm. go to all these kyrgyzstan afghanistan even you know it's like we installed trolley bus systems we run on we have trams we have metros we have uh, well, the trolley bus system in Kabul is long gone, but uh, <laughs> you know this does not this does not happen in Cuba in the same way. It never electrifies. It's still dependent on fossil fuels in a way that other these other post Soviet countries are not. Well, and also like, it, 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 I mean, why would you be when you get oil at such a preferential rate and like you then sell it? You you're in a surplus, right? It's never going to come down. So you also why don't would you... have cheap electricity in the same way because it's like no hydropower. Right. There's um, you know, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to like uh you're not getting cheap electricity any which way because there's yeah. just not like the 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 sort of uh easy you are getting resources. it through nuclear. You are getting it through nuclear. I think Cuba has a couple of nuclear power plants. Um that's the like only that. way you could do it then. Yeah. <laughs> precise. Yeah. And, and so why am I saying precisely? That's... Some some <laughs> Some beautiful RMBK reactors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so like you know, the effect of this is to starve people for basically no reason other than peak from the United States. Eighty mm. percent of Cuba's trade was lost, right? And Clinton intentionally made it worse. 
to see if he could make Cuba collapse. Overthrow your government. Um, overthrow your government. And and why why don't uh, people overthrow their government when we when we sort of like starve them and stuff? A question which is still still salient today. And the answer it turns out <laughs> is mostly that they're kind of starving too much, and also maybe they don't want to because they see you starving them and go, yeah. maybe my government are not the biggest assholes here. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'm just I'll gonna go back to points. Right. I'm going to go back to points five and six from the memo for Mr. Mm, Rubottom, yeah. mm -hmm. which is that militant opposition to Castro from without Cuba would only serve his and the communist cause. And then six, the only foreseeable means of alienating internal support is through disenchantment and disaffection based on economic dissatisfaction and hardship. Ah, well, thank God we're not going to make any weird mistakes on that level. Um, I mean, you, you just, you, you, these, these sanctions ideas all seem to rely on the idea that people are as stupid as Americans in other countries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're genuinely much smarter than us. I'm going to be real. Um, uh, we'll get into it later, but I asked, like, the... Later? Uh, oh, God, there's, like, 20 more there's slides. Like, yeah. These are quick. Okay, so no, not. Uh, we'll go to the Don't next slide. Me. Yeah. Next slide. <laughs> um, this is the camel buses. Um, and on the right are other cars that we... Oops. Um, that I... Um, Photograph while you're in cool, Cuba. Cool um, I want to point out something. Yeah. It yeah. says two humps. This is a dromedary bus. <laughs> 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 cool, cool. Yeah, many of them are. Who cool, yeah. legally not a car, which I bet exists for the fact that it's not a car, and so therefore you can't yeah, this one was weird. ban it for, you know, car imports. There's a lot of yeah, like... Isn't as funny as this thing has a, a lower section? This is probably more ADA accessible than a lot of Honestly, older probably, buses in yeah. the United States. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, yeah, the top right cars, like, there's a lot of like Chinese made cars and shit. Um, it's it's wild. There, you you do not see like the kind of cars that you see in the United States. You see a bunch of really weird and cool models. Next slide, please. They just refit a bunch of the their long distance passenger trains with uh, Chinese made passenger cars. Oh, that's so funny. Um, the bus we were on was Chinese made, and it was like awesome. Um, Ooh. so um. The thing that kind of gets them out of this is that a certain Hugo Chavez I've heard um, of this guy. Mm. and Chavismo, um, one of our NPC members, is a Chavista and she's great. Um, the uh, he does a uh, revolution, um, and he's like, "We love Cuba," and then gives Cuba oil. Um, mm. oh, and then yeah. the guy on the right, um, uh, who is seen emerging from a sort of Bond villain. Yeah, the, um... the, the points at which the critical support wraps back around to it's more critical than support, and you just dislike <laughs> the guy. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's how I feel. Um, so Putin, a active genocide, there. You know, uh... well, the Russian Federation um, in this period gives them a lot of uh, like initially under Yeltsin, they're like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna um, honor any of our existing contracts with you. Fuck you, um, and hence the oil, but uh, Putin reestablishes some diplomatic relations and sends some aid and whatnot. So this is part of his like, like broader peripheral like fucking around thing, which yeah, yeah. Again, which is why like, so, so so much of, of, of Putin's ideology is just insane imperialist like Soviet boomer nostalgia. So of course Cuba, because again yeah, the like right. weird happy memories thing. So and and so. It, that actually does help significantly. This is and actually they have a, him coming out from his uh, Soviet <laughs> submarine base Cuba. goon cave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you wouldn't this say it like that. It's my goon cave. What are you gonna do? Um, <laughs> so um, it, there's a generally positive view of the Russian Federation there. So uh, next slide, please. So the economy reorients um, and has to move to tourism. Um, on the right, you will I, see some um, fucking twonk. Um, I, I have, I have, sorry, that's being generous. I mean, <laughs> listen, uh, I, I, all, all I'm saying is I have a drop that you're going to have to bleep in a second, Devin, because oh, I, oh, uh, I know. Yeah, because I see you open this, it. you open the slide Do it. Uh, and Do it. Yeah, okay. F it. <laughs> Damn, <Alice>. <laughs> si, senora. <laughs> um, so, uh, that's also I have that photo on my hinge. Anyway, um, it's a good so <laughs> that's that's me. Uh, that's the outfit that I uh, met the president of Cuba, Miguel Diaz Canel Bermudez, in because I was it switched days and I didn't have my outfit that I wanted to meet the president in, which is a full suit. But, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. On the left, top left, you will see Mintur, which is the um, the Cuban tourism ministry. They're very. Okay, they even do Soviet acronyms. Yeah, they're really into that. It's not quite an acronym because it's like just the 
beginning syllable of yeah, each that's word. What I mean. that's, that. that's the way the Soviets do stuff too, or did stuff. Oh, uh, I don't. It, it, I, I don't know about that. Yeah, so, it's the yeah, reason why in um in 1984 it's like mini true mini love is deliberately because the so really? yeah it's because the Soviet well the Russian way of doing an acronym is syllables rather than letters typically. Wow, I'm learning things, and I hope you listener are learning things too. Um. The, so, Mintur, they also have like Minidex, which is the Ministerio de Relaciones. The only one I know is 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 Minint, the uh, Interior Ministry. Yeah. Um. So they do the he, cops. They moved to. <laughs> we didn't see any cops. It's great. So they they moved to tourism. <laughs> no, I mean genuinely, like we didn't see any cops. I I I saw cops once. No cops in Havana. It felt so safe. Um, because they have the CDR, which is like a neighborhood, if the neighborhood watch was the KGB. Um, so uh, <laughs> I, I can expand on that, but I'm not going to. Um, so they legalized the dollar, um, which had previously been banned. Um, and also contact with foreigners have been banned, but they're like, oh, fuck, we need tourist money. So they open up what, they're, what they call <laughs> dollar stores. And that's when the dual economy starts happening. So the dollar stores oh, operate based e on the real dollar. East yep. German vibes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you got the, yeah gotta that's go actually, to the, I was about to recognize that. Gotta go to the inter shop, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Listener, if you uh, uh, listen to the East Ger uh, the Berlin Wall episode of, um, of Well, There's Your Problem, you will hear a description of this, and that's basically how it works. In, in my voice, in fact. That's right. So there's the and and also Roz and Liam's. Um, you will also the, hear me put an umlaut on uh, Plattenbau for some fucking reason. We'll I'm still stop embarrassed doing that. about it. I so did. the dollar <laughs> stores, the dollar stores operate based on the dollar. The peso stores operate based on the peso. And as a Cuban citizen, you're entitled to like a basket of commodities at fixed prices in the peso, right? right. The dollar store is where all the scarce goods go. So you have a, an issue there that like. People who are trading in dollars because they operate in the tourism industry or in like pounds or, you know, other weird, unuseful fake currencies, um, they have this cash that they can put back into the store. Um, this gets eventually uh, reorganized as the two currency system where there was like the kook, uh, which is the convertible peso and the regular peso, which is uh, abolished very recently. But it also causes Cuba to seek out foreign direct investment and public-private partnerships. So it does help the situation a little bit. But the thing that actually fixes things is... Next slide. Wow. Oh, let me be clear. Um, why, is, why, why, <laughs> oh, are they, why are they standing like that? <laughs> That's a great question. I have, so on the right is Raul Castro. Um, and then on the left is uh, Barack Obama. Um, noted uh betrayer of the revolution um <laughs> so next Commu slide please. community organizer uh former marxists to get laid in college yeah <laughs> uh, ironically uh barack obama and i are going to have had the same job title in about two weeks um <laughs> this is my new job this is um, this is my problem is i only became marxist after college i was God, yeah, same um it was like the last year of college so it helped a little <laughs> bit but um now, uh, let me be clear. History will uh, vindicate me. Um, <laughs> so here's Barack Obama swearing undying, undying loyalty to the principles of uh, socialism with Cuban characteristics, or fidelismo. Um, he initiates the Cuban thaw in 2014. Yeah, this is the thing. Is, as, as president, you get like one or two freebies where you can just do one thing that's kind of good. Um, it's, it's weird. Presidents like to do this, even the like really atrocious ones. It's like it's like George W. Bush and the Prison Rape Elimination Act, where it's just like, hey, or, or like uh, Nixon and the EPA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can do you can do like two good things if you want. China. <laughs> yeah, so he normalizes relations between Cuba and the United States. So the embassy in Havana gets moved back into. They, I would have had a photo of the embassy in Havana for you, but when I went up to take a photo of the embassy in Havana, the guard yelled at me, and it was like, I don't know, it was like eleven at night, and I'd had two doubles of rum it was very good and i said i yelled back i paid taxes for this shit so i better be able to take a fucking photo <laughs> and then i moved on anyway because he was still yelling at me and he had a gun so what are you gonna do um grab so... a service weapon you fucking pussy <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my taxes pay for that i would have if i weren't on the i'm kidding i wouldn't have um do but, not bleep so... that Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have to bleep that. We're so gonna do not that. bleep that. 
Yeah, please. Never please bleep. Not. Yeah, grab, 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 grab some his bleep as an organizer. Weapon, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes so, yes. um, so you, we move back into the embassy of Havana, where you can get the titular syndrome. Um, and uh, I also want to point out that I'm the only person that's ever really had Havana syndrome because my tummy hurt when I got back. Aww. Um, tummy oh, ache survivor. <laughs> it's real bad. But so this is actually largely mediated by the Pope. Okay. Again, so, you just yep. like fuck around with these things. It's fine. Woke Pope. I'm woke a big pope. fan of woke Pope, to be woke honest. Um, yeah. One Pope, one Pope, pope. two Pope. <laughs> what so, other Christian uh, leaders are doing half as much as the Pope is? Come on. Honestly, one Pope, yeah. two Pope, Chad Pope, woke Pope. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we as had a... Nazi Pope, then woke Pope. I, I was calling yeah, Benedict Chad pope. pope. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> Because uh, one pope is uh, John Paul one, John Paul two. <laughs> yeah. John Paul two, I think, qualifies two as woke pope. pope. I really don't. A lot of child sexual abuse. This, this, proves you wrong. this user is getting right. yelled at in this Polish is... in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> that, look, it's it's a big institution. It takes a long time to steer. <laughs> yeah what is the sorry what does the vatican steering committee look like is it a left <laughs> yeah, i'm in vatican ground <laughs> um, we believe the word is col it's called the college of cardinals, cardinals. Sorry, <laughs> vatican groundwork killed it. vatican mug hi again amy from mug again, um, again the priests changing a brake lights um yeah. yeah so okay so obama takes cuba off the state sponsors of terror list so Finally, they can use like they can like do shit, right? And so like hotels start to be built. The Rolling Stones come through. Um, you know, Obama makes a visit to the island. Um, you know, Cuba. I genuinely like we were when we were talking to just random Cubans. They were like, "Yeah, I love Obama so much." And I'm just like, <laughs> "Yeah." Um, <laughs> we well we, you know you, you gotta you gotta acknowledge what little good happened critical support to comrade obama um yeah we were we were in a market in havana and there was one store that was just like communist memorabilia and so the dsa delegation was cleaning this woman out i mean like <laughs> especially like insane stuff i mean genuinely like um we talked to her and we were like oh like how much do you generally make on this and she's like oh you know i mean it varies from day to day but today's a really good day. <laughs> um, Alice, the package that I'm sending you contains one thing from that store. Thank um, you. So the, the, and she was like, yeah, Obama really changed things and made things a lot better. Um, there was a spy swap. So the Cuban five who were infiltrating right-wing Cuban uh, terror groups in Miami and were eventually captured were repatriated. Uh, Carnival opened cruise lines to Havana. Um, you know, things look really good. So next slide, please. So you start legalizing sort of this public-private ownership thing. Um, this is a photo I took. PFI. I know, I know. I know. Uh, yep. Um, so this is a photo I took um, in Havana. If you look on the left, those fancy new towers. Roz, if you could circle that. That'd be great. Uh, they got diagonal windows. That means they're cool. Yeah, so that's the Grand Aston La Habana, which is where we were staying because it's the only one of the only hotels you're legally allowed to stay in now. Um, and I will say, incredible fucking hotel, uh, very cheap, nice pool. Um, so this was built. Um, you know, there were if you look in the bottom right, you will see like Kias and Hyundai's and like modern cars. Um, so like stuff starts coming back to Cuba and. Oh, you know this thing right here. Oh my God! Look at that. Mm. <laughs> oh, that prefab. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's bad about that oh, prefab? Oh, it's got actually. the weird. It's got. It's got like weird. Every third floor is a corridor. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to talk about that later, but um, on the other side of that, you can see that being right next to the to the sea has caused it because it does not paint and it doesn't have any sort of sealant has caused it to decay in large portions. So like, you know, it's it's there's portions of it that are falling apart um and that is because of the embargo but like it was gonna get better for a little bit um and things look like they're turning around because you can deal in dollars now and you can bring tourists now and it's easier to go to cuba uh next slide please this motherfucker ruins donnie, shit. donnie from queens mm. 
Donnie from Queens, whose own businesses improperly violated the embargo to give money to the Cuban government at the time when that was illegal, um, called this one of the worst deals and terrible and misguided. <laughs> I see it's Marco Cu- Rubio's ass behind him there. Oh, sure. uh, Marco okay. Rubio, um, uh, one of the worst little cunts to ever do it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And this guy, right? I always forget all what these guys look like. Yeah, little Marco. Little okay, Marco, yeah. his parents, they, they were very wealthy, very wealthy Cubans. They had slaves. Do we, do we, <laughs> and folks, do we know that he had slaves? I mean, he calls them mates, but I think the rest of us can call them slaves because they were getting paid very little, very little. <laughs> so his family comes here, and what do we do? We let them in. We let them in. And suddenly he's a senator from Florida. Fake state. Give it back to the Spanish. Um, <laughs> thank you. So Donald Trump is a horrible cunt. Um, sure, of course. And he... As we all know, and he puts Cuba back on the very funny though, puts Cuba back on the state sponsors of terror list in 2017 and reverses a lot of those gains. So he makes it very difficult to go to Cuba. Um, the way that we were able to is through the support for the Cuban people visa, which basically is like go to Cuba and spend money and talk to them about capitalism. Which, hmm. um, <laughs> wait, wait, and- wait, wait, wait. So you did a socialist fact finding trip to Cuba as. Under the auspices of a capitalist evangelical- Oh, it's not actually- It's not actually talk to them about capitalism. It's literally just like, you're supposed to go and talk to, like, average Cubans. And we did. Uh, cool. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there you go. like, we got the visas there. Uh, the fucking, you know, I got my visa done. I got pulled aside at the airport in Cuba, but then they were fine and they let me through. So, um, uh, fuck this guy. Anyway, mm. um, this would be fine if it weren't for the fact that we had El COVID-19 El COVID. sí. um, yeah. in Cuba. Um, they have three vaccines for that, by the way, and all of them you can give to children. Um, and it caused huge economic problems, uh, as it did everywhere else, because you like the aforementioned oxygen shortage, people died. Um, and imports and exports, and you had to do the lockdowns and all that shit. And the Cubans were actually on top of that. They did biotech and they did all sorts of stuff to make sure that, like, oh, okay, well, you know, this is, um, you know, this is... Uh, we're managing this. And then the 2021 protests occurred because I primarily remember of these. This. I remember yeah. photos of like five guys in the street. Uh, with SOS a... Cuba. Yeah, yeah. SOS, SOS Cuba. I remember the um, uh, like breathless foreign policy articles that's like the Cuban teens are sharing unauthorized USB drives of hip hop. Is this going to destroy the regime? No, absolutely. Listen, you know, you uh, know me. I, I I love any regime. I will always support any regime <laughs> against uh, yeah. the hated teens. Um, and so my assumption was, no, this will not collapse the regime. And it I, did not. I, mm-hmm. I, 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 it did not. No. T- to date, uh, maybe it will collapse the regime. I don't know. Maybe well, like we'll get Snapchat into that, but, or something will. Yeah. Uh, you know, the 2019 constitutional reform was. Uh, no, the teens the are all energy. addicted to TikTok, which is Chinese and therefore pro-Cuban. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, like. Uh, the CIA did participate in this agitation. Yeah, it's, um, it's nice to go back to the classics once in a while, you know? Like, yes. y- you go back to the, run the bathroom. recipe. I gotta run to the bathroom very quickly, and then we'll polish off the rest of the stuff. Please, God. I mean, there's... One second. There's, uh, slide 54. Ending Doing on great. slide Doing great. 71. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the I podcast thought of another thing. Said it. I want to be clear I was... that I have the slideshow in, in one monitor and the <laughs> NFC Championship in the other. I I give this interception. I oh give... yes, let's go Lions! I give <laughs> I give this my whole attention because I feel guilty and I don't consider it a real job, um, and I am terrified constantly that people will stop listening to podcasts overnight and I will go back to the time when I had zero money. So what I do is I work on this very intently and I stay up until uh, like five in the morning uh, working on these things. Um, uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. I, you know, there are lots worse jobs out here, but uh, I want you all to know that when I make the content, the content is suffused with like a suppurating psychic anxiety about that. Um, and I, I am willing to kind of torture myself over it. Um, so just just enjoy it on that basis. Please enjoy this comedy podcast, knowing that I am out here clawing my fingernails through the top of my thigh, thinking about how uh, my job is fake, you know? 
here's an amusing story about Cuba while I did a minimal amount of resource research for this um, podcast. Um, one of the things I did is I went to seat 61.com, which is uh, a website maintained by the man in seat 61 mm. about international train travel. It's very good. If you want to go take a train in a weird place, that's where you go. I, I liked, looked up I like Cuba. Reading it, yeah. Yeah. So I looked up Cuba. And one of the things is if you want to take the Hershey electric railway, which still runs seven trains a day. Wow. You have to take a ferry. What? From Havana, the the uh, the center city of Havana, the ferry goes across the bay, right? Oh, that and this whips. is like this is about there. um uh okay. So I'm measuring it on the map right now. It's about half a mile, but it has airport style security. Why is that? Okay, somebody the reason the is Hershey, right? mm. well. So it goes it goes half a mile across the bay, but sometime in the recent past. Some folks decided to hijack it and sail it to Florida. What? I oh, hate that God. so much. Have you been to Florida? It sucks. It's yeah, the worst exactly. Place on Earth. Exactly. So now they have security. I, I tried to figure out the specific incident um, on the news earlier. I'm not sure if it's the same one. It does seem like those guys uh, all got shot, which, oh. fine, whatever. I don't <laughs> Let me be real. It's. <laughs> Sorry, Liam, go ahead. No, 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 I just said, oh. I mean, of, of, oh, of, uh, of, all they... the, of all the ways to get shot by your government, I feel like hijacking a mode of transport is one of the least surprising. Yeah. Also, yeah, I mean, they, well, be... they ran out of gas like 30 miles offshore. Like, they, they tried to cause a Gilligan's Island situation. Re reverse take this ferry to Cuba. <laughs> yeah. Look, also, like, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real. Like, the plane hijackings, I, I think they balance it out, like, karmically. You know what I mean? Here's, here's the thing. A ferry hijacking is just funny. I agree. <laughs> it's not going to um, have I, I would I would have said, all right, don't do it again. But, yeah, that's you know, why I, I would have loved Speed 2 Cruise Control if it were about oh, a ferry. Yeah. <laughs> On the other hand, what's the what's the actually existing socialism that still exists? Cuba. So may, maybe yeah. I'm too lenient. Mm. <laughs> and may I say, uh, again, critical support. So uh, to return to um, uh, our previously scheduled... I guess. Uh, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. We're done talking about uh, Orange Man bad. Orange Man real bad. Uh, so Orange on the Man left, you'll we'll see some fucking dumbass twink that they let into the... Yeah, um, a oh, a very handsome a twink one. at that. Yeah, hit me. <laughs> 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 we got to bleep that. <laughs> but yo, yeah, that, this, is, this is the thing is, right? Sheep. This is she said it, not me. I did. Um, yeah, th this I, is going to be like a it. five and a half hour episode that's going to require a lot of editing. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do apologize for that. Um, no. So okay. So the 2019 constitutional reform uh, adds some recognition for private property. So we are doing mm. some. Uh... Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. oh. I don't. I don't. I don't like Just the government. That. Should take your toothbrush. You shouldn't have your own Doing toothbrush. A, but Alice, the also... the sideshow Bob mumble there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but also, Alice, family code, legalization of gay marriage, trans rights. So... Trans rights, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm pro-trans rights. I'm just very anti-private property. Um, okay, fair. Um, Can you so and also have to say that she's very anti-trans rights? <laughs> yeah, I'm very, I'm very pro-trans rights, but I'm very anti-trans rights. Um, <laughs> uh, so... Contain multitudes. The second, you're gonna hate. D the depends thing. what tweets I've seen most recently. I see, <laughs> I see the way some of you fuckers post, and I become very anti-trans rights. You're gonna hate the next thing, which is that it also recognized some foreign direct investment. <laughs> <laughs> so it created some marketization of what was previously kind of like more of a command economy. Um, and so Mariela talked about a moment where they kind of got rid of the ration books, the libretas. Um, and guaranteed minimum goods, uh, and then popular demand caused them to reinstate it because it's like I would love my guaranteed basket of goods. So the 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 recognition of some private property brackets betraying the revolution uh, is intended largely to bring in like the desperately needed foreign investment that you need for capital. I genuinely did not have a really good like uh, uh, photo for the section. So please enjoy me on the left explaining to the um, like deputy secretary or whatever of the Cuban National Assembly that DSA is a big tent org without a line and we all have 10 million <laughs> opinions uh, and 
how do you how do you uh, solve issues? And he goes, bueno, la primera cosa es que tenemos centralismo democrático. Um, <laughs> and then top right is another view of the National Assembly Room. And then bottom right is the hall when you walk in. This is the National Assembly of Cuba. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, you mentioned uh, some bits on on this notes about about rights, by the way, also because oh yes, I did want to mention. Do we want to go back? Yeah, I, I, I was <laughs> yeah, I was alluding back. occasionally to the to the no rights situation uh, attendant to uh, the you know these forms of communism uh, and how maybe sometimes you should have some rights, not only trans rights but also for cis people. Um, and they have rights. Um, well, uh, the oh yes, I sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, they, they also reinstate the prime minister and they add legal representation when you're accused of a crime and presumption of innocence and habeas corpus and presidential term limits, and the rework of legislative government. So, like, it's a good constitution. It's it's really good. Um, it also relies heavily on, like, consensus making because there's only one, like, actually legal party in Cuba. Mm, yeah. So a lot of it is, like, consensus about what candidate that party puts up. So it's mm. like if the whole thing was primaries. So it's like if you live in it's any city. It's like living in city, New York, yeah. It, yeah, it's like living yeah. in any city in the United States. <laughs> well, um, hold on. You could also vote for Andrew Cuomo on a working families party ticket. God awful <laughs> concept. <laughs> voting for I, Miguel I Diaz canel see... on like a working families party ticket. I would love to see the freak that voted for Andrew Cuomo on the working families. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So uh, we're on the slide where a second trip Irishman. La Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, don't don't viva la unless you want the viva la revolution. <laughs> <laughs> so a second tranked up Irish American is at the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Biden not only kept most, like Biden kept most of these restrictions in place, which he has the unilateral executive authority to remove, um, because of the 2021 protests and because he's an old racist dude with nothing better to do. Next slide, please. And, and because Democrats keep tricking themselves into thinking they can win Florida. I well, we'll get there. can't win Florida. Slide, please. Sink can't it. do it. Sink it. Don't even bother. Yeah, it's, it's going to sink itself. So this is a photo I took of Havana from the Grand Aston. Um, what is the current state? It's bad. Um, if you look at some of these buildings, you can see just general like decay yeah. and mold and some other stuff. Roz can probably kind of explain a little bit more about those. I, so I've I've been looking at uh, again. All I can do is look at you know Google Maps, and the main thing I can say is you know Cuba has an excess of doctors, but what they really need is roofers. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, because a lot of these buildings are not in great shape. I mean not just aesthetic. I mean, some of the problems are mostly aesthetic, but a lot of them it's kind of like, okay, you got these old stucco buildings, they got masonry, you know, structures, they got all this stuff, you know, they, they, they're they relatively high maintenance, especially the older ones. And, you know, you can't get the materials to really fix them. Um, yeah. Theoretically, you could locally produce them, but that is apparently not happening. Well, and a lot and of buildings, a lot of these buildings also, all they really need to be is washed. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I, know, I, I, I also the kind of internationalism where Cuba sends a sort of brigade of revolutionary roofers to assist you in your moment of crisis. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what also like, you know, they're still operating off of like imperial era plumbing. So a lot of, um, a lot of like establishments you go into when you go to the bathroom, there's a little bin next to the, next to the toilet. And that's where you put all of the your toilet paper. This is not uncommon uh, in Latin America. This is, you know, there's more modern plumbing on the more modern buildings, but this is not uncommon anywhere in Latin yeah, America. The older, older uh, Soviet cities also have that problem. Um, yeah, exactly. A lot of, so a lot of sewer systems that were not built for toilet paper. Um, that is not relatively modern, but it is. I, I mean, you know, uh, sort of that expectation is surprisingly confined to like what we call the west mm. right you know, plumbing plumbing doesn't work as good everywhere as it yeah. does today supremacy you, 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 um, you gotta institute the kind yeah, of I mean, south asian I mean, thing of just washing your asshole you know like, <laughs> no nah, the bidets are very nice bidets so, are very nice and should be standard you don't even everywhere. have to get a, a bidet you I can agree. just get a like a low tea. you just get a jug you know of water mm. and you just uh, yeah just, no i want a mug. nice spray directly yeah. on my asshole <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, so also if you look here, you will see sort of like newer buildings are kind of getting yes. built. 
uh, in little tower blocks. So uh, there's something huge happening here. Yeah, it looks like any building that you would see in Chicago and like downtown that's new. It's just, you know, I think that's supposed to be a hotel, but I don't know who can say it might be an office building. But yeah. And then also next to it, I think on the left a little bit farther. That's the I believe that's the Hotel Habana Libre. But I don't know, honestly, from this vantage point. So how's the how's the embargo going? Bad. Um, next slide. This, these slides we got through quick. So. Um, why am I here? So the DSA sent a delegation, uh, the Democratic Socialists of America uh, sent a delegation to Cuba, uh, pictured here on the left, meeting with the committees for the defense of the revolution, um, where we it was a fact finding mission and a mission to sort of in 2019, we voted to add sort of the end of the embargo to our platform. And this is part of the international committee's work is to agitate for that. So we're there to create links between us and Cuba and sort of, you know, see what was going on. We also experienced some of the effects of the embargo, like menus change daily because they can't guarantee that they have shit, right? Like the, you know, we were insulated as much as it's possible to be insulated from this because they obviously wanted us to come away with this being very like pro Cuba, but like, you know, we can see, Oh, the bus that we're all on, we all have to be on that bus because there's only so much oil or there's only so much gas to run that bus. And even though it's a high efficiency Chinese model, it's like, well, we don't want to run out of it. Right. So, you know, we, we experienced uh, many of the effects of the embargo. Um, you will see also on the right, this is kind of like the state of like rural Havana. Um, there was a building that the, the CDR or the series of buildings that the CDR built because the CDR is neighborhood watch KGB and also uh, neighborhood improvements, hmm. um, <laughs> which is a fun combination. That doesn't happen with Neighborhood Watch in the United States. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Neighborhood Watch in the United States is very normal and not at all full of weird freaks. Um, and uh, I tell you uh, what, the roof looks good. Yeah, no, actually, yeah. it was a really nice building. All the people from the CDR were really nice and really cool. Um, those three people there. Um, the guy in the middle is, I think, the chief of the CDR for this section. The guy, or the guy on the left is... I want to say the regional representative the guy on the right is the national head and also one of the Cuban five. I want to say it's Gerardo Hernandez, but I'm not mm. certain. I, I, he's I gotta, like, mm. I quite, I, that's like basically yeah. like meeting like the head of the KGB. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, right. It, 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 it could go this way or you could have the like Juve thing where that, you know, that has, it has done in China where it's designed to, that you have like a, you know, like residence committee or village committee that works along these lines. And then, betraying the revolution happens and you end up with a kind of neighborhood watch that forgets that it's supposed to be the KGB. Um, yeah. And can be the KGB when it feels like it, but mostly is just not, you know? Yeah, so that's not what this is. There's still, uh, I, they're basically like, there's two levels of law enforcement. This is the level that's like, if you have like neighbors stealing from each other or like petty disputes, they settle it as opposed to calling in the cops. Um, or hey, somebody's having a mental out. health crisis. They they settle it, huh? Yeah, because they get their they cops still out. like based on the like Soviet like militia system. You know, it's yes. quite militarized. Um. So, but the point is, they were telling us, oh, like you know, we're seeing the embargo, the effects of the embargo out here, and like, yeah, there's a government, but also it's pretty plain to see that you just can't get the materials you need. Next slide, please. So the point of this is to do um, a sort of exchange with the Cubans, agitate for an extent, and end to the embargo, and the Cuban government was like, yeah, sure. Um, so they were honestly pretty frank about a lot of the failures of the current government and the revolution. So, um, you know, this was the international committee. We're part of a big tent org. The international committee was like, okay, you're going to go and you're going to make up your mind. We don't have a line on this. Uh, so you can see all of us here. Uh, if you want to circle me, uh, in the, uh, in the Guayabera, because my mom uh, got me that, um, uh, I'm right. It, Middle middle row, yeah. so two from the left. It's left left is this side, right? White shirt, uh, right. but like oh, there you are. Okay, yeah. Are you yeah, about to explain what um, the guy about her was? Oh no, I wasn't. I, I mean, I can. It's like a. No, it's I, I, was, technically... I was making fun of you for doing that. <laughs> oh. it's, 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 well, okay, I don't know. Maybe a bunch of your listeners are fucking like I don't know, like 
San Francisco tech guys who mm. grew up in Massachusetts. You know, what are you going to do? I, I think um, I think if they've listened to three hours and 44 minutes of this, you can't tell them. I actually know that for a fact that one themselves. of our listeners is exactly that. I know I know that listener. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> well, that listener, Aguayaveta, is like a form of, uh, of, uh, of fancy shirt that you wear that's technically a dress wear. So I'm technically informal wear in that photo. Anyway, well so everyone slide, else is slobs. So to return to the hospital, from the beginning, uh, we're going to go full circle. That is the uh, oh, sorry, that is Calixto Garcia. And the current state of the embargo is that Cuba cannot access most international finance because it's difficult for them to operate in dollars. There are shortages of many things, but primarily fuel. Um, and we saw huge lines of people waiting for ration gas as well as just public transit that was extremely packed. And there are tremendous impacts on the healthcare sector, which is why this is here. This is the University Hospital in Havana. Um, we were given a tour of this hospital by its staff. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is a photo of us in the dialysis ward. Um, and when we walked through, they were very, they were like, look, we're not show we're showing you what a normal day here looks like. We you know, and it was very clear that it had not been staged and these were just random people who were there to receive dialysis. Um, and I will tell you this, the Cuban healthcare system is committed to providing healthcare free for everybody who lives in Cuba. You are guaranteed that right by the constitution. Um, and it operates very effectively in that regard as much as it can. Uh, one of our, a member of our delegation uh, was concussed as a result of a a uh, fight with a union buster, or rather a union buster attacking her and hitting her against the wall, but she um, got that concussion checked out in Cuba. And they x-rayed her. They had her bring over a photo of that x-ray on the phone. The doctor looked it over and was like, here are things that you need to do to ensure that you stop having concussion symptoms. And she did that, and she was fine. But what you're seeing in this photo is my reaction to this doctor here, whose name I unfortunately forget. I'm so sorry to that doctor, but um, telling us that they have to reuse single-use dialysis filters because the company that they used to buy them from which is swedish was bought by an american manufacturer so what that means is cuba is no longer able to access that and what that means is that there's a guy whose job it is to be in a room and clean these filters they're reused on a patient by patient basis but you know the they have no other choice than to do this despite the fact that this could cause you know, they're bloodborne diseases. That's why you don't reuse these filters, but there's literally no other way for them to obtain them. And there's people that will die if they don't get the dialysis. And then he told us that they had to reuse pacemakers because most pacemakers are manufactured in the United States. And I will leave it to your imagination how pacemakers are reused. Mm. So this is what I mean when I say that this is going to be a depressing episode in the sense that like, this is the real impact that it has on actual people who could very well receive top of the line medical care and are simply not able to because of the peak of the United States, because the United States government decides that that's not something that we want to allow for no fucking reason other than we are salty that we can't control their politics. So we allow people to starve and we allow people to die. And we'll get to another example of this later, but like it is a, there is a crime here. <laughs> Uh, that goes beyond denunciation and there's a failure here that topples all of our successes to quote Steinbeck uh, yes slide please so the oranges are having kerosene poured on them mm. <laughs> exactly and another thing is that um, you know you are um, uh, the constitution uh, and also liberalizing reforms of the 90s allowed for some degree of private businesses in the form of paladares which are like restaurants that you run out of your house. And a lot of times those restaurants are having to grow their own produce. So in the top left, you're seeing, um, uh, there's a restaurant that we went to, it's uh, El Jardín de los Milagros, which is very, very good. I had a lamb rabbi I had there that was incredible. So they grow their produce in these beds uh, on the roof. And you can see it down there uh, on the left to the entrance on the right. Um, and so they've accidentally kind of gone into doing like local organic agriculture <laughs> because they don't have the fertilizers or the you know the the ability to um do mass scale industrial agriculture like the united states does so there's a lot of um you know uh 
local organic stuff and urban farming and that sort of thing. Next slide, please. So the currencies were synchronized and put back on the dollar because that's kind of what you have to do. The exchange rate is about 110, uh, 110 pesos to the dollar. It changes based on where you're at. Some restaurants will give you a better exchange rate. Some restaurants will give you a worse exchange rate, et cetera. Uh, but it's pegged officially at that rate by the Cuban government. And the economy relies heavily on the exchange of these for dollars, as we covered, like in East Germany, because they need to be able to have liquid currency because otherwise you can't buy food. Mm. Right. Sure. So these yeah. are all, so these are all bills that I got. Um, the I was the Che bill. A guy scammed me, um, <laughs> and I was like, okay, like that's fine. Um, he was like, it's my birthday. Give me twenty dollars, and I'll give you this Che bill. And I'm like, you know what? This is not a lot of money for me, but this is a lot of money that's, for you. That's very so, funny to be like, if you give me twenty dollars, <laughs> I will give you three pesos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like he he also tried to give me a cigar, and I was like, this is the last day I'm here. I can't take it through customs because it's illegal to take tobacco or liquor products through uh, customs. But like, is, that, yeah. is, there, is the three is the three peso bill as uncommon as like the two dollar bill? No, because like three pesos is how much it costs to take public transit. So oh. it's, yeah, it's like a mm. it's like a like a five dollar oh. in one. Um, there's also just like peso. The, just like the Soviet metro it was three kopecks. Yeah, and so like there's a three peso coin that also has uh, Che on it, and if you see that I have it on a necklace, because um, I drilled a hole in it and put a chain through it. Next slide. So blackouts are very frequent. Um, the top left photo, by the way, um, taken by uh, Danny, who has an uh, my comrade Danny, who has a really good series about this. That you should check out um, the in the top right photo. We were eating lunch or eating dinner at a. Uh, it was a rooftop restaurant technically but like a big skyscraper in havana there was a blackout while we were there um because you can't get oil for the power plants um and there's significant damage to a lot of buildings because there's a lack of structural maintenance and upkeep because you cannot get paint like literally there's a paint shortage so you have to use boat paint which is why everything's in big pastel colors so boat paint and is also not appropriate for stucco Yes. Right. <laughs> um, so the United States makes this worse and by the embargo, but also by encouraging brain drain. There's something called the Cuban Adjustment Act, which makes it much easier for Cubans to immigrate to the United States than anybody else. Um, and they use it to encourage people to leave the island, uh, especially young people. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, from a civil defense standpoint, this is us in the Civil Defense uh, Bureau. That's the guy from the Civil Defense Bureau who's always on the news talking about hurricanes or whatever. Um, this is uh, this is DSA planning an invasion of Florida <laughs> to depose <laughs> the right Governor to Ron it. DeSantis and restore trans rights. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, <laughs> Christ, I wish. Um, so this is uh, this is where they like we were in the Situation Room where they do like the hurricane planning and whatnot. But they can't replace transformers if they fail, right? <laughs> so they have to basically orient their entire infrastructure around getting engineers there before the hurricane hits and make sure that they're like in place to fix anything. They have to actively relocate people. It's a huge pain in the ass. And climate change is causing problems by creating you know, the destruction of low-lying coastal settlements. So they have to rehouse those people. And they don't have resources to do that in a lot of ways. Uh, so next slide. All right. So, how does it work? That's the neat part. It doesn't. Yeah, um, it's, meant not, it's meant not to. It's yeah, meant not to be a functional the whole country. Point is that it doesn't. Well, it's not even that. It's that the embargo itself does not, uh, you know, accomplish its aims mm. because sanctions have never done that. Right? We've sanctioned yes. the Iraqis, and how did that turn out? Right? Like we've sanctioned thirty billion different things, and what that does is that. It actually makes people be like, oh, the government is uh, excused from doing X, Y, and Z. I mean, that's not the general sentiment, but like... It, it, it relies entirely on people being unable to identify the source of the economic hardship. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and also vastly overstates uh, how likely people are to overthrow their own government. Uh, right. I don't. Yes. I don't like my government. I'm not going to overthrow it because this is a lot of work. <laughs> you know. Yeah, as I'd probably, say, I'd probably I... get killed or thrown in jail. You know. And Lord my knows, I can barely get up in the morning at like eight o'clock. You know. <laughs> yeah. And like, and like, additionally, it validates everything 
that the Cuban government says about the United States. Mm -hmm. There's like a siege mentality in that sense, right? Like, and it's a siege mentality because they are literally under siege. And so politics in Cuba cannot progress while the embargo still exists. But it also, it sucks because it also causes damage to us in a lot of ways. Um, because, like, it causes about $1.5 to $4.5 billion of damage a year um, to the United States economy. And it, it has caused, since its inception, about $753 billion of damages to Cuba total. But the United States is still the fifth largest exporter to Cuba. <laughs> Because you get licenses to the treasury and you export agricultural products. So Cuba still has to buy all those things in fucking cash. Right. But there's actually more costs if we go to the next slide. You may know this, but Cuba has three COVID vaccines. I said this earlier. Three COVID vaccines. It's got a bunch of you weird shit, have. too. Uh, yeah, it's like a whole They have a lung of... cancer vaccine. You cannot have it. You, they have a treatment for melanoma that you can't have. And a diabetic ulcer treatment that regrows affected skin that you also can't have. Um, and uh, by the way, as a result of the embargo, and this this gentleman here who is um, uh, you know the head of the biotech um, uh, uh, department, um, they're like the state-owned firm, the biotech firm. He was talking to us about how he would treat people uh, who are diabetic with this um, treatment. And they would get better, and then the embargo hit, and they have to be in the hospital like three times a week. And you can't do that if you can't get to the hospital because there's no oil for the buses. Um, they have free gender affirming surgeries. They have free health care. They have all sorts of shit that you can't have. They have rum and cigars, which are you know like smaller percentage of this, but they're so good the rum. I don't care for the cigars, but all of that is illegal for you to have. Because for, for, of the United you, States government, uh, I can I can go out and buy a Shut bottle up. of Havana Club <laughs> and get my gender affirming surgery right now if I want. I welcome you to do that. I think that would be great. Um, also, uh, you know, definitely do not mail me anything. Pre Presidente Diaz Canel, uh, please tell me that you do not have a sort of BMI restriction on your gender affirming <laughs> surgeries. I am a very fat woman. Uh, <laughs> That's the, I'm not even very I'm like slightly fat whatever <laughs> That's right um, uh, No I mean like literally like American citizens can't have access to this mm. You can do whatever the fuck you want yeah. um, Although there are still restrictions I think from the UK In some regard but not nearly as bad I, I can't um, hear you over the fact that I'm smoking Two cigars at the same time Well done <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh yeah, rub it in that I had to drink Bacardi in that mojito because like <laughs> I couldn't find Donku, which is the better rum. Listen, I'm, I'm treating is... the fuck out of my diabetic ulcers right now. You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you're smearing, you're smearing your ulcers. So um, there is the lung cancer vaccine is sort of in trials in Minnesota with a I think it's in Minnesota with a um, because a private equity firm has funded it in collaboration with the Cuban government, and that's the only way you can do it in the United States. But like because of the embargo. Now the Cuban government won't see any money from that collaboration, which fucking sucks. Uh, they got a slide. lung cancer vaccine. Does that just mean you can smoke all the cigars you want? Yes. Kind of. No, um, I mean, that's that's called synergy, right? Yeah, I was about to say, you know, this is... <laughs> I buy ass up. This is the it's reverse the of Dutch disease. Yeah, it's sort of... Um, I'm not clear on the sort of biological technology aspects of it, so somebody who's smart will have to and so that's so why do we do this? Uh well, have you heard of Florida? <laughs> oh my no, god. No, unfortunately, yes, I have. <laughs> so all the exiles went to Miami and uh it's actually kind of like how do I put this? It's kind of like Zionism, uh, in that there are a lot of people who are progressive except for this one issue. Um, which completely flies in the face of the values they claim to have, uh, and which the Democrats treat as a winnable constituency, despite the fact that Democrats consistently lose florida um and the democrat the democratic party in florida is uh fucking dog shit it doesn't do its job um yeah the yeah. generally so, not something you can win anymore i think no. once they established the villages it was over <laughs> yeah it's gone well, cast it off cast it off cast so it into the fire <laughs> that's one reason and then also remember that thread about property crimes uh in the haitian revolution uh the United States still holds Cuba responsible for millions and millions of dollars in, like, property theft internationally. Right. Um, so, corporations. 
It always uh, comes down to property crimes. Exactly. And then Bob Menendez specifically is a Cuban exile. Um, or his family is Cuban exiles. So he has an insane right wing <laughs> view on Cuba and has single handedly made sure that our policy on Cuba is weird as shit with the help of uh, tranked up Irishman uh, Joe Biden. Um, cool. On the other side, you got Marco Rubio. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, by the way, yeah. um, if I remember correctly, his family actually immigrated under Batista. Like they left under Batista. That, that is for sure true of Ted Cruz. Mm. Um, <laughs> but um, his, his parents left under Batista because of repression. They faced under Batista, which is very funny. Um, okay. Uh, next slide. This is the last slide. Um, what do we do? Okay, so the conclusion. Um, this is a humanitarian disaster that is solely caused by the United States. Uh, solely, I mean, there's some mismanagement on the other side, but it wouldn't be nearly as bad without the United States. There is no reason for us to continue this embargo. Um, we need to agitate to end it. Um, it is a enormous crime that has been perpetuated for years with no benefit to us and no benefit to the Cubans, obviously. So call your senator. Um, get involved with the DSA International Committee and its work on Cuba, um, uh, as well as its other international work. But uh, do something, because genuinely there are people who are suffering who don't need to be, and it's all because of us. Hmm. Hey, what a surprise. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, Great. Cuban embargo, bad. I think we've learned this over the past four hours. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Hours to go later. again. Yeah. Yeah. 15 hours later. Tenemos una parte de este podcast que se llama. Tengo una fracción. That's Italian. Oh. Uh, de esta podcast. Uh, el, el nombre mm -hmm. de uh, Safety Tres. Donde está la biblioteca? Donde está el Safety Third? Please. Shake hands for danger. All right, I'm going to try and do this quick because I got to use the restroom. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I can read this if you want. I can just blast through it. And that way yeah, you sure. I'm going to I'm going to okay. use the restroom. I'll be right back. Best of luck. Safety third. Hello, Justin. Uh, Alice. Hi. Yay, Liam. <laughs> Fuck mm. off. And Schrodinger's <laughs> guest. No, don't say hey, hi. Hey, that's no. me. You guys seem to like my last safety third, and while I do have other prison stories, I thought I'd mix it up. Oh, it's the forklift prison guy. Okay. Hi, how are you doing? The attached image is of the worst place I ever worked at, Subway. And while not the same Subway, the external facade is almost identical. This is a story that ended well, but easily could have ended with several dead bodies. Awesome. For context, this particular Subway was run by one Indian family that owned like half the Subways in Indiana. <laughs> the previous owner had bailed after maybe, possibly, allegedly defrauding some or several three-letter agencies and forging passports for migrants from India, and the new owner was a cousin or nephew of the big boss of this massive family-run franchise. He stayed for maybe a week, and then fucked off to India to inherit some land, promptly telling none of his family stateside and all of us employees a different time as to when he'd be back. Due to all of this, and the fact that about a month before had this place been this place had been robbed at gunpoint, the day I was there, pro tip, if robbed at your job, stay calm and do exactly what they ask. Don't die over someone else's register. It's true. Staff retention was extremely low, and I often had to work the whole closing shift solo, 3 to 9 p.m. Monday to Friday. I was maybe 17 at the time, doing school from home due to being a dipshit and getting expelled, and thus had a real stupid need to be a good worker and impress my parents by sticking with this shitty job before finding a new one. Because of this, I would make deals with my friends that if they came and helped me close, I would give them like four free sandwiches. And it sounds like pretty That's clear. praxis. It, it is. With that background, let's get to the story. Now this particular subway was in a strip mall with large parking. From time to time, people would park in the lot to sober up, either from what they were already on before getting there, or from whatever they consumed in the two bars that also inhabited the strip mall. This day, there happened to be a grey Honda minivan with two people doing exactly that. They had pulled up at least an hour before I started, and had been there for about three hours by the time of the... incident. Oh no. I'm back. Welcome back. 
Uh, this guy, it, it's our prison friend again. He works in a subway. Um, yeah, yes, I know. I put it in the slides. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was making this guy a rotisserie chicken wrap on tomato basil, basically a red right tortilla, now. when suddenly a dark grey Chevy SUV screeches into the spot next to the minivan, and several guys jump out, one of whom racks a Glock and shoves it in the driver's window. The guy whose wrap I'm making asks if I can hurry up so he can leave, <laughs> to which I would say, I would stay where the cover is, as I walk <laughs> over to the wall and begin spamming the 911 button. Keep that in the back of your mind for later. At this point, I believe I'm about to watch everyone in this van get executed. Just like the movie Heat. Just like the, uh, <laughs> these guys ready to rock and roll at the drop of a hat. After doing that about 20 times, I go back, finish making the guys rap, and then we both sit there and kind of just watch what's going on. The other guys who got out of the SUV have at this point posted up around it in the minivan, while the guy who shoved the Glock through the window now has the driver by the shirt and is clearly threatening him. This goes on for another 10 to 15 minutes, with the Glock guy seemingly calming down, <laughs> before the guy who ordered the wrap decides to leave. I'm, I'm out of here, I'm done. I'm, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to Quiznos. <laughs> well, he's got his wrap, I, so like, I, yeah, you know. I just sit back and casually observe, until one of my friends who was going to help me close that night pulls up. I immediately go outside and tell him to get the fuck inside and bring him up to speed. We sit and chat for another 15 minutes or so, watching the situation, before the two gentlemen seem to come to an agreement and start walking towards my store. <laughs> I tell my friend to get in the back. The two walk in, and the guy with the Glock, now shoved loosely in a pocket, stands in front of the door with his hands in front of him. The minivan guy, who couldn't have been more than a buck ten soaking wet, asks if I have- Quink! <laughs> asks if I have change for a hundred. Preparing mentally to get robbed again, I say yes. Me filling out text. And he walks over to the cooler, grabs a blue Gatorade, pulls out a hundred, and says, "Sorry for the inconvenience." I, mostly on autopilot at this point, do the whole check to see if it's real with the light and the pen. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you oh, this is called a death wish. Um, <laughs> that is literally like me in Cuba. Here's fifty dollars. <laughs> Give me change. It is. So I punch in the Gatorade, open the register, and give him his change. He thanks me, and the two walk out. <coughs> My friend comes out from the back and asks what happened, and then we go back to just casually observing. We see some bills and a bag change hands, and then the Glock guy and his friends get back in their car and drive off, followed by the minivan a few minutes later. We both sit there and make jokes about the event and catch up. This goes on for about 30 minutes. Remember how I said, I kept spamming the 911 button in the back of your mind. As we're sitting uh, there. People are always spamming the 911 button in the back of my mind. <laughs> it's called an anxiety <laughs> disorder. Um, yeah. as, as we're sitting there, our adrenaline having gone down, suddenly a lone IMPD cop in full kit swings around the outside corner of the subway and sweeps the whole dining and food prep area with an AR. <laughs> oh yeah, this is Indiana, isn't it? <laughs> My friend and I both immediately Typical throw Indiana. our hands up, and we spend the next two minutes in a weird standoff, with this cop is loosely holding us at gunpoint, and <laughs> trying to shout questions through the window covering the dining area. Eventually he comes in and asks where the robbers are, and I explain the situation. After giving vehicle descriptions, etc., he tells me that the button is only for if we're being immediately robbed, and to just call 911 next time. Now this event did occur a few years ago, so the lengths of time between certain actions may be off, but I'd bet my bottom dollar that it was at least 10 minutes between the guys leaving and the cop showing up, not to even mention the time between that and me slamming the panic button. This, along with the actual robbery that took place there a month or so prior, started my long journey towards radicalism. Anyhow, I ended up leaving that job a few weeks later, and the subway is now a Mexican restaurant. Love the show as always, keep it up. Thank you. Wow. An incredible wow. interaction, real slice of life there. In, in, in yeah, real Indiana, Indiana moment. As a Chicagoan. C certified as a Chicagoan. Indiana moment. Indiana moment. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Should have worked for, uh, should have worked, what's the, what's the thing they got out there? Penn Station Subs, I think it is out there. Oh, God. It implies the existence of Penn Station Doms. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> this has been Safety Third. Wow. Shake hands for danger.
estrecha la mano con peligro. <laughs> The next episode will be about Chernobyl. Does anyone have commercials before we go? I think it's probably just going to be to join DSA, right? I join. I mean, that's always my commercial. Um, get involved with uh, the Democratic Socialists of America, wherever you are. Um, we yeah. want more people and right. more good, activism. Good time, good time to uh, pay more dues to DSA right now. Not going to yes. go into detail, but you know, there, you know, it's always good to have a little bit more money. Some walking <laughs> yeah, around um, money, you know. Yeah, yeah. Not going to go into detail unless you want to scroll through my Twitter and see me quote dunking on people. <laughs> um, which again, <laughs> sorry, Amy from Mug. Um, uh, yeah. Um, join DSA. Get involved. Do some activism. Uh, do some activism on Cuba. If this episode has made you angry that we're starving people, um, what if uh, you helped us not starve people? Um, that's all I've got. Uh, oh, actually, wait a minute. Um, sorry, coming up. Um, the uh, how much do we love film industry unions? Somewhat. Yeah. Um, I mean, my so okay. and I make. Yes, we. we I, 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 I watched say. a bunch of Euro spy movies for them specifically so as not to break a picket line. I wasn't subject I know. to because my coworkers are paranoid about that. Yes. So. Uh, and you know what? I'm, Thank you, Dev for um, supporting the revolution and also for having to edit this very long episode. I love you so much. Um, yes, thank you, Dev. <laughs> um, uh, platonically. Um, so the, uh, the uh, film industry is going through some contraction right now, which is why I'm changing careers. But um, there is a, an IATSE contract renegotiation that is going to be happening. Um, this may lead to another strike um, because IATSE's contract is... Very, it's a stinker. I can't say that, yeah, but, but I it can. is lacking. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, Liam. Um, thank you for saying what I can't. Uh, it is lacking in many respects versus what um, what SAG and the WGA currently have. So there may be some uh, things to plug into uh, in DSA where we are going to be doing strike support, like we did for the WGA and SAG. We raised ninety two thousand dollars. <laughs> no, 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 you won't have to watch any. No, no, no. Unlike. So SAG was the only union that had that stipulation. So I actually will probably not have that I, for a number of reasons, including that they're more of a business union. But there may be a there may be a, a campaign for people to plug into uh, through DSA. We raised ninety two thousand dollars and did five hundred drops of food and water to picket lines. We may be doing a similar thing, but nationally. Um, if I actually goes on strike, so please do get involved with that. Uh, DSA is good. That's my the end of. Um, and I'll fight you on Twitter if you think it isn't. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. We have a Patreon. Yes, thank, thank, we, have, we have a Patreon where you, that. you know, I, as many hours of content you got today, we have more on the Patreon. Yeah. I thought this was going to be a bonus episode because I was like, oh, this is going to be like a lot of stuff to get through. But um, we can, we I love can, to be on the free We can release feed. it as a bonus episode. I don't even know. Yeah, oh, but I love to be on the free feed. Fine, we'll make um, the free. We did news already. Fine, Every, a, everybody... yeah. There, there, no, there's, there's yeah. a public, there's, 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 there's a public service to knowing about the Cuban embargo. This has gone a free. Can we feed. wrap this shit, uh, please. <laughs>